Turn the sunshine into love I'll help you keep on dreaming Something like a spaceship from above
It's time for the Winter Championship, European Edition 1v1 action happening actually literally right now as players are competing. It, the tournament's already started. I'm Duke and joined with me is none other than the wonderful Sparky. How are you feeling, Sparky? I'm uh, feeling really good today until I looked at the EU bracket and then my tummy started a rumbling, not because I'm hungry for food, but because I'm hungry acid reflux? for more Brawlhalla action. No oh, acid okay. reflux this morning. Oh. Last night, yes, sir, but today we're doing all good 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 to hear but there's a lot going on in the bracket and i hope i don't really run this you run this so i <laughs> hope we get some time to talk about what has happened in the bracket because it's not even really just like one thing that you can mention in the moment in fact polymonto has been giving me in discord just regular updates of like wow. oh hey this happened oh hey this happened oh my gosh the hey details? this happened yeah he's like giving wow, me the okay. live updates because he's there's the so up. much going on if I just looked at the bracket myself, I probably wouldn't catch anything. So it's great to have that live update because uh, it's kind of been a bloodbath here in EU for the 1v1 Winter Championships this morning. Yeah, I mean, we talk about how in North America, when it gets cold outside, some players get cold feet and struggle and fall. We'll talk a little bit more about that tomorrow when we get into North America. But it's sounding similar. It's like how you don't fight the Russians in winter, but it's you don't fight anyone in winter because the Winter Championship is seeing people fall. Historically, you don't fight the Finnish in winter. They oh. are even better wow. than the Russians Thanks. in the winter. So shouts out to Finland and <laughs> shouts out to that little nugget of history. There might be some more of those later on, but let's talk about what is going on in the bracket currently. Many things have happened, not even just like in top 256. You would have to look through all the pools to see what has happened. One of the biggest things that's been going around on Twitter for EU players and people who are paying attention this morning is baby boy Daniel took out Swada when in top 64, in top 128, in top 256. No, he took him out in pools. Yeah, Swada going down that early, it's going to put a wrench in a lot of things that's going on, right? Swada coming in as the current European world champion. He's the favorite. He's the golden boy. And he is now taking the longest road possible to get into the top eight of things. Going down in pools, it, again, every time we talk about this, it's a double elimination tournament. So you can take one L, but what it does is it doubles the number of sets you have to play. So now Swada is going from what could have been a 10 set day to a 20 set day. Yep. And that is a very long day. And then to heap even more pressure on top of that, is because so many crazy things are happening in the bracket, that means a lot of the regularly top bracket players, regularly winner's bracket players, are now down inside of the loser's bracket. So let's just take a look at that right now, going into uh, the top 64 of things. Let me get over to my bracket right here. If we're looking at who is in loser's bracket right now, then I'm sure most of the people watching right now recognize, which is not a regular thing. Mm -hmm. Swada is in loser's round one. He's going to fight MJ. G, and then he gets to fight a, a no-name player? No, he gets to fight Heisen for top 32 on the loser's side. Who else is down there in the loser's bracket? Kixay is down in the loser's bracket. 720 Polyshot is down in the loser's bracket. TM is down in the loser's bracket. Chedero is down in the loser's bracket. Magimine is down in the loser's bracket. Knees is down there. Wave God is down there. Uh-oh, Pavelski is down there. Hermison is down there. It's just player after player. Solarson is down there. It's just player after player who have been knocked out so much earlier and by players you would have never expected to take them out. Yeah, and that's going to be brutal. A lot of people, of course, like these are no names. These are names we've seen make it into the top eight of tournaments, make it into the top three of tournaments. And to see them go down early, it's going to be rough, both for those players, but also for anyone who's in their path, because they're going to be just knocking people out extra early people who we've generally see make it into the top 16 maybe just shy maybe like a, a ninth place finisher they're gonna go down quick because we've got some killers in the water now it's definitely gonna be a really tough day for everybody of course that kind of goes without saying but like double for yeah. today and that's the winter championship normally eu is not quite this volatile with everything going on like you mentioned earlier normally that's kind of an na thing even in south america we saw a few crazy things happening but at least so far that may change tomorrow but eu is definitely the craziest region here in the winter championships and that's like 
it's kind of funny, like, uh, the, historically, when we talk about the region dynamics, we talk about North America and we talk about EU, for a long time, the idea was that North America was a little bit more consistent. The people who you saw on the top eight would be in the top eight, and EU was kind of a little bit more volatile. You see those people who, who made those, uh, like, double-digit placements every now and then crop up and do really well for themselves. And uh, today, it's kind of like a, a throwback to that European classic of some, some volatility in the region. All right. So let's take our macro view of the region and okay. let's kind of focus it down yeah. to the players that we want to be looking forward to seeing more of specifically this tournament who do we have up first okay so first up on deck i know we talked a lot about swada but we got to talk about the person who this is gonna be their first foray into the single space in europe for quite a while. This is a person who, again, he took a year hiatus and now he's back and we saw him do really well in doubles last week. And so the question is, how well is he gonna do in singles today? Let's talk about Godly. So with Godly specifically, since we talked about a lot of uh, relatively unknown players with really low seeds, taking out really high players with really high seeds, Godly is sort of gonna be the outlier of all that because he is coming in seed 86 to this, but Godly is no new player to Hollow whatsoever. He wasn't able to play in tournaments for a very long time, and now he's back. And the talk of the town for a while has been that Godly is one of the best, if not the best, EU player. We saw a lot of good stuff in 2v2s alongside his teammate Simple. They came in second, weren't able to take it from Act No and Plays, but still came in second. That was a solid placement. And this is sort of him getting back into the way of things. You can never really replicate that online major tournament experience, even if you go into like a really competitive community tournament, you can really never replicate that until you're actually in the online major tournament. So we'll see what he has today. I expect big things from him, but like we said, he has no PR going into this. He has seed 86, so that's gonna hurt him a little bit. He's gonna have a much tougher bracket, but at least in his pool, we know that he made it out of pools, but he kind of had, I think he kind of lucked into one of the quote unquote easier pools to have. I think like the, the strongest players in his pool were like Heisen, Solarson. Those were his two kind of main competitions and actually Heisen and Solarson have both been sent down to the loser's bracket early. So maybe he didn't even have to run up against Well, he could them. have been one of the ones to knock him in the lower bracket. Exactly. So he's on a good run right now. I think he has a lot going for him. Specifically character picks wise, I think if you look at his core Hala, it's a little bit misleading because you see his number one character is an Orion, number two is a Tori, number three is Scarlet, four is Diana. Huh. But specifically this season, you got to go down a little bit yeah. to see who's actually playing the season. It's a lot of Mordex. I don't know who exactly he's playing today. It looks like I'm checking the bracket. He has locked in that Mordex on the okay. bracket. So it's been sort of a relatively new pick if you compare the level 36 to like the Orion that's 50. So the Mordex is coming out from Godly. I mean, uh, that kind of makes some sense, right? Again, the storyline of Godly is he was a player for a while, then he took a year break, and then he's back. And so when you have someone who's like that, usually their character pool is going to be a little bit for lack of a better term, dated. It's, it's he's, vintage. He's, yeah, he's got it's his vintage, vintage character pool with things like the Orion, because that's a classic, one of the original characters in the game. So, of course, he's going to have a lot of time in something like that. And then, of course, Mordex, a little bit of a more modern pick in the time where he's gone. We've seen the crop up of the Mordexes, of course, off the back of somebody like Sandstorm, who's really uh, propagated that uh, lineage, for lack of a better term. Now, we don't have a lot of official tournaments. Like we said, he doesn't have any PR, but we do have the divisional season 1v1 invitational that came out that's a community tournament i think happened about mid-january going yep. into this one and godly came first in that one and if you look at the cast of characters that attended that tournament and played in it we have swada the ninja 729 Acno, simple blaze and heisen so like all of the usual suspects that you expect to make it really far in the online major bracket or even a land major bracket they were also present in that tournament so not only is that first place a major accomplishment it's even more contextualized and relevant to what is actually happening today and i think gives a good sort of uh possible prediction of what might happen for godly today yeah that's um you don't really get to asterisk that one and be like, oh, it's a community tournament, blah, 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 wasn't playing, because most of the big names in that were playing. So uh, interesting to see. Anything else you want to say about Godly before we move That's on? That's all I've got on him. Okay, let's talk about Swatter, right? The world champion in Europe, of course, blew up in the end of last year, has been doing very well, but today 
looking a little rough. What are some things we should know about Swata? Uh, we need to know that he went down to our king, <laughs> baby boy Daniel. And that's boy Don't forget the name. B-O-I. Ooh, that's extra special. I almost wish. I No, I, I don't almost. I definitely wish I could have seen that set because it was also a 2-0 going into that. So definitely, I don't even want to say a little bit of a shaky start. That's a very shaky start for a player like Swata. But also, you know, a player with that experience, with that history, with all of that under his belt, he can bounce back from something like that. It is going to be a grind, like you said, with all of those sets. But going into this, let's look at some numbers. PR2, even though he is the world champion, think about the track record that Akno had that sort of built up the uh, um, unbiased point system that comes from the PR. It's not just like, a, ooh, I think this guy yeah. is the number one guy. So all of that track record that Akno had really gave him a bunch of points. So that's why Akno is still PR1. Swata coming into this with uh, 21K in earnings. So definitely nothing too humble there. But you compare it to like Akno and some of the other guys around this level. Swata is sort of the new kid on the block in the top three. If we're looking at him on the ranked leaderboard, it's a little bit lower. Number 24 in EU, his peak is 2510 we're seeing high 2500 peaks from like the absolute best ranked players in eu i think a few low 2600s as well yeah i mean just like looking at the world championship last year we talk about swada and you gotta admit swada was not really on most people's minds going into the world championship the big three of eu last year were akno simple and pavelski and then we go into the world championship swada's outside of that pool of people and we start seeing him take name after name after name and then what happens he gets the world championship title he wins it off the back of that bode bar he plays an exceptional bode bar it's very different from what we've seen from simple and it's cool to see that kind of character expression from the way that he plays that bode bar but again he's relatively new he's relatively young he's not as experienced and competitive so i am concerned about this long road that he's gonna have to do you're exactly right because if you look back at his entire career in official tournaments he has only placed in the top three twice one of them wasn't even an open tournament it was an invitational that was the mammoth invitational in 2021 and then of course the world championship that he clinched the gold medal so he doesn't have that top three record not even just like a gold medal or silver medal record it's that top three record that he hasn't really built up quite yet he's gonna have to do that this year to really solidify himself as a pure top three player in eu okay anything else you want to say about swata before we move on now he does have in his twitter bio a quote that says in one-on-one -on -one fight always bet on swata D who's he quoting I don't know. Maybe himself. Maybe, yes. maybe, maybe another French player. I, it's it's a mystery. Yeah. I mean, I could I could make up a. I'll, how about you know what? We'll say it again, and then he can actually have quoted us. Okay. Okay. So it's in in one on one fight. Look, at, look into the camera. In, in one on one fight, always bet on Swada. So it has been said. So clip it. So it shall be. Put it on your. You can put the clip on your Twitter bio. You have to credit him yeah. though, even yeah. though even though I really said it yeah. First. Don't well. I, oh. It's okay. He said it into the camera, <laughs> yeah. so that's that, that's what really counts. I said the joke, and then you said it louder. Yeah. And then everyone laughed. Yeah. I yeah. heard him over there laughing. Yeah, exactly. So, so yeah, we're good. Yeah. You okay. Got it. It's sold. Um. Okay. Uh. Swada, of course, the world champion. You can't super discount him, but uh, again, the the early loss is going to be uh, a bit awkward um all right let's talk about the person who he competed against for that world championship title the person who got silver at the world championship simple simple going into this one i dm'd simple last night and told him bodvar d sig sword and, <laughs> and then good luck i didn't even say good luck i think i said just gl uh -huh. So he knows. Okay. Uh, he's he's ready to go today. Simple's been a little bit on the stream grind lately, and I do want to take this moment to say it on a public platform. Simply, you gotta fix your web camera angle, dude. <laughs> the frame of it is terrible. It's like it starts at it's like aesthetic, his, his man. neck, it's aesthetic. and then it has like 18 inches of headroom. I thought he was just. Head. I just thought he slouched really bad. Uh, if he does, he's literally slouching 24/7. So just lower the camera <laughs> angle my dude i you see him in the gym you know he's got back muscles use those back muscles to push yourself up 
come on, Simple. Your <laughs> gameplay is incredible. Fix that web camera, dude. You're killing me on that. But Simple is such a strong player in EU. PR number three right now. We were talking about the 20K from Swata. A lot of that really came from the World Championships. Looking at Simple here, he has 63K in earnings. He's number four EU on the ranked leaderboard right now. 2462 currently, but he has the third highest peak in all of EU in terms of ELO. Yeah, I mean, he's he's a grinder for sure. Uh, he's definitely been doing very well for himself. I, I loved the dynamic. Again, talking about the big three of last year, I loved that rivalry that he had alongside Pavelski and alongside uh, Akno. And I mean, towards the tail end of it, it really did seem like it was going to be Simple versus Akno going into the grand finals of the World Championship. That's not how things played out. So... Uh, things looking good for Simple. Simple's, he's just such a consistent player, right? Coming in with the Bode Bar, he's been on the Bode Bar for so long. He's been a competitor for so long, and he doesn't have to change too much. He's like a, an, an alligator, right? An apex predator that really hasn't had to evolve. You're exactly right with that. In 2021, there was only one tournament where he was not top three in terms of official tournaments. So he is that consistent rock. Even when we've seen Akno fall in the past a few times, of course, uh, how volatile Swata can be, how volatile Pavelski can be, how volatile the Ninja can be. Even though we kind of consider Pavelski as one of those top three players, he has gone in and out of that, unlike Akno and unlike Simple. Yeah, that's, I mean, uh, we can talk a little bit about Pavelski in a little bit, but mm -hmm. Simple, on the other hand, coming in, you gave some big numbers. Anything else you want to say about Simple? Go from big numbers to small numbers. He has only won two official tournaments, which still, that's a very impressive undertaking. But one of them was the Autumn Championship in 2020. And then one of them was the Mammoth Invitational in 2021. So kind of like Swata we were talking about earlier, it's one major success in an Open and then one major success in an Invitational as well. Yeah, it's kind of crazy when you look at it in, in those terms because uh, I, I almost want to make the comparison to like Boomi in North America, where it's like he always looks really good. He always looks like a threat, always looks like someone who could go home with a gold medal. But when you look at the raw numbers, doesn't have as many 1v1 gold medals as you would expect from just how much um, name pressure he has. Definitely. So Simple also tweeted a like challenge bracket that I think he himself put together about okay. his possible predictions. It even like did the bracket down to everything. And his top three predictions for winter were in third place himself, in second place was Swata, and then in first place was Pavelski. Even before the tournament and everything we saw from Pavelski going down to Swata going down, I think putting Pavelski first is an absolute crazy <laughs> thing to bet on. But, of course, Simple is the one playing against these players all the time in ranked, in customs, while he's streaming, everything mm -hmm. like that. So we'll see how his predictions stack up. Honestly, I don't, I don't actually know if it was a, a joke. Just him putting <laughs> – I don't want to say putting well, Pavelski first is a joke because, like, it's not, but – well, more so, Him if you're a competitor, I would would you really bet on yourself not going home with the gold, right? Normally, like like normally as it, a competitor, like you got to have that ego. You got to be like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be the one who's going home but with the gold. But if you're simple in EU, I mean, we we know the probabilities. There is a very high likelihood that he's not going home with the gold. But we'll see today. That's the beauty of esport competition. Every day is different. Every set is different. Every game is different. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, we talked a little bit about Pavelski, so I'm going to slip this in and uh, upset production, so I'm going to take a little bit of time to say it. But let's talk about Pavelski, because Pavelski was last year's world champion, or, well, throughout last year. So he was 2020's world champion, and he was competing all last year, and he was looking impressive at various points. But like you said, he had arguably the most volatility of any of the competitors out there, because he could at any point be a absolute diamond in the rough, go home with a gold medal, or he could ask D three times and uh, throw away a match. It was very volatile on whether or not he would do well. And that continues into today as he comes into top 32 on the loser side of the bracket. He did win his previous set in top 64 to make it into top 32. Right now, he is against Wave God in top 32. Then another name that you don't expect to be necessarily that far down in the bracket that early on in the tournament. So again, 
all of these sets, even your first set in top 32 is not going to be an easy one for one of the best players in EU. That's how crazy things are. I cannot stress that enough to the viewers at home how bonkers this bracket is today. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I think a lot of people's uh, brackets are blown up at this point. Well, not necessarily 100% blown up, but they're looking shaky. A lot of people's brackets are looking scary, um, and we'll talk about it when we get into the predictions of things, but Pavelski uh, going down that early, uh, similar story to Swada. It's very scary. Pavelski, uh, I also want to compare him to Swada in the sense that like he wasn't on anyone's, uh, he wasn't on anyone's mind going into 2020, and then he won the world championship. And then 2021, we're like, well, we got to give you credit. You're definitely a strong competitor. You, you went home with a gold medal. And he had a couple of wins in 2021 to make it like, okay, you're still in contention, but he also had some of those those big losses. He has been known to change up those character picks in the past. I don't actually know what he's doing today because he hasn't reported his characters yet. Pavelski and Waveguard are both known players who regularly get a little bit deeper in the bracket. They both follow me on Twitter, so they both know the importance of reporting your characters. If they get out of this set without reporting their characters, I am going to be very unhappy and will publicly drag them. So this is to you, Pavelski. Velsky and Wave God, I hope you see this. You better be reporting your characters because I would like to know that. And I have asked nicely several times. I really just got like war flashbacks of uh, an upset parent giving the talk to uh a sibling and I'm just stuck in the dining room like, okay. That, that, is, that is how I feel. Just do that right You're now. You're the third just, sibling while I have here. Pavelski and Wave God at the kitchen table. I wasn't the one who broke the vase, I promise. You're, you're just, good. Uh, okay. Well, on that note, let's talk about one more person in the European region. Uh, let's talk about none other than Akno, an absolute dominant force in the 2v2 space, does very, very well in the 2v2 space, win streaking in the 2v2 space, looks great in the 1v1s, has many a gold medal, but didn't go home with the gold medal in the world championship. If you're looking at him going into this one, likely coming out on top, that is not a bad idea whatsoever. He's PR1 going into this one, even after Swatter winning worlds for the reasons we already discussed. 85K in winnings, a lot of that from 1v1, a lot of that from 2v2. He's number nine on the EU leaderboard right now with a 24-22 ELO peak. And he has a winning record all time in his career against Ninja, Blaze, Swata, Simple, Heisen, Fozy, a lot of killers out there. One player he doesn't have a winning record against, Pavelski. Of all people, if you look back at the history, he does not have a winning record against Pavelski, but it's looking like that may not be a task that he has to overcome on this tournament whatsoever. No, if they run into each other, it'll have to be on the lower side of things. So we'll see if that ends up coming into fruition, but uh, things boding well for Akno. Akno, again, uh, just an absolute dominant force. He comes in with a relatively large character pool. I think he's been leaning into the Koji for 1v1s specifically, but we'll see if he switches it up. Of course, we've seen him on the Brin, we've seen him on a Terrace, we've seen him on a Bodvar. He's got all sorts of stuff he could go to. Now, there wasn't a lot that happened from kind of all of the different top professional EU players that happened in the off season, except for that one divisional winter 1v1 season tournament that we talked about earlier. Akno played in that, got fourth in it. Not only did he place lower than we might normally expect, but he lost to Godly 0-2. That was in a best of three kind of earlier on in the tournament. And then down in the loser's bracket, he lost to Ninja 1-3. That one didn't even make it to game five against a player like the Ninja, someone that we cannot really guarantee that I wouldn't put my money on to make it into top three. So a little bit of a slip up in the off season, of course, from a player like Akno, the off season is not always a guarantee of what will happen in the actual season, the professional season once it starts, because you know a professional can turn on that switch at any time we'll see if that happens or if sort of that fourth place was the the harbinger of what's to come at least for the winter championship yeah it'll be interesting to find out of course again it, it is a good indicator in the same way that like ranked is a good way to just find out more information about how things are going are they doing well are they competing are they putting in the time things like that are just all good information for when it comes to our statistics. I'm going to slip one more name in. It's okay. not something that we have to really You're lean on. You're slipping a lot of names I'm, in, I and am. it's making me really uncomfortable because I don't have paper on them. It's EU. There's so many That's true. dang good names and so many people who are strong competitors. I'm going to slip one more in, and it's one that 
I think really flies under a lot of people's radars, and it's none other than Machete, who comes in, he gets wins, does well in the 2v2s, does well in the 1v1s. He's, we've seen him go home with victories, but he still isn't someone that people look at and goes, yeah, that guy could totally take it. He made it through the top player apocalypse that happened in pools, top 256, top 64, so on and so forth. He's in top 32 on the winner's side. He's going to go up against Fozy in winner's round one. Of course, Fozy, a player that I am loving here lately, coming in with a little bit of an off-character pick from the Purple Vector this weekend. So that'll be an interesting thing. We're going to catch that one early. That one will be on the stream. That'll be fantastic. But we need to move on to yep. predictions. I went first yesterday, so, so you get turn. to go first today. Yay! I'm going to start it off. In third place, I had to slip his name in so that I could actually say it on stream. Machete, I'm giving him the bronze medal. I'm gonna be completely honest. Uh, the 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 things that happened earlier today made me nervous for a lot of picks, and so Machete, I think he's he's a little bit of a more solid pick. In second, I'm gonna give it to Simple. Simple, he's again, he's one of my favorites for the region. I I love a simple gold medal, but he just doesn't have enough gold medals to give him the confidence. But that means my gold medal is going to be going to Akno. I think Akno's going home with another one. The world championship was a bit of a misstep, but at the same time, it's Akno. And I think he is going to have that consistency, of course, PR number one for a reason. Now, my picks are going to be coming in in third place, Charles de Gaulle. Not, he's, he's, he's not, just let me go. He's on the bracket? No, he's not on the bracket. He's actually the French president from like 1959 to like 1969 or something like that. Okay. He said about his countrymen in France, how can you govern a people that has 246 varieties of cheese? That's why in third place, how can you control a player like Squata coming in, waving that French flag? You can hardly contain a player this strong. It already started to put him down into the loser's bracket, but no one can contain him. The loser's bracket cannot contain him from a country that has 246 varieties of cheese. In second place, hailing from jolly old England, uh, bruv, <laughs> it is going to be godly. Everyone thinks he's one of the best in EU. I'm inclined to agree with them, but I don't think he's taking that top spot. That's because top spot is going to someone from Germany that I can't do a German accent. You can try. Simple, I'm not gonna do it. You sure? I'm not gonna do it. Okay. I'm gonna control myself You had today. such good preambles to I the really other did. two and you just you just dropped it on the well third yeah, one. i think the people of germany might appreciate uh, a no nonsense straightforward okay. first place goes to simple hopefully he'll fix the headroom on his web camera <laughs> on his stream well those are our predictions our top three predictions for the upcoming eu winter championship that we'll watch in just a little bit if you want to put your predictions out there hashtag bh esports get involved on the twitter space and let us know what happens and of course at the end of the event you can go hey i got more right than dupe because i got zero right yesterday hey i got to do that yesterday yeah i, I took part in that congrats it feels really good it's so satisfying it's fun and all also, you get to just you get to feel good, and now you have someone that you're rooting for whenever you get to watch them play. Of course, if you want to watch some of the other matches, maybe some of those killer matches that we were talking about in the lower bracket, maybe we get to see Pavelski, maybe see you swat it. You can watch it over at twitch.tv slash pro brawl holla. But on that note, any final words before we kick it off? For the That's EU all I got. Energy. I'm looking forward to how this bracket is going to play out. I'm going to keep my eyes glued to that. Everyone at home should keep their eyes glued to that. If you're on Twitch, you can type exclamation point bracket. That'll give you a link directly to it. If you are on a different platform, go to smash.gg forward slash brawlhalla. You'll be able to find your way to it. I know you can do it. You're smart at home. You can keep up with everything that's going on. You can see which matches are streamed on this stream, which matches are streamed on twitch.tv forward slash pro brawlhalla. It's sort of your roadmap for everything that is currently happening and what is to come. Okay, so on that note, we're going to take a short little break, and when we come back, we'll be bringing you the top 32 of the European Winter Championship. You're not going to want to miss it. Stay in your seats. We'll be right back.
welcome to Brawlhalla. All right, everybody, it's time. Welcome back for the EU singles for the Winter Championship Series. It is an incredibly ridiculous bracket already. <laughs> After looking at some of this stuff, our predictions are already going up in the air, but it is going to be a fun time, not just for chat, but for us to be able to talk about some of these things, too. My name is Ajax, and I get to be joined by the incredible Duke. How oh, you doing, Oh, thank man? you. You flatter me. I'm, I'm just excited to be casting with you. I love hearing new voices, hearing different opinions. You know, uh, one of the best opportunities to kind of share opinions and things about the game is when I'm standing alongside someone and talking about the game. So it'll be fun to do this block. But man, EU, it's been crazy. Absolutely. Like, just looking at the bracket beforehand, we are talking about Swata going down. But just before this happened, too, Ninja ended up going down to Coco. So even more messing around with the bracket that's happening here today. But it's EU, so you already know what time it is, everybody. If we're talking EU... Time to duel? No, it's not. <laughs> it, it's not time to duel. I wish, but it is... Oh, snap. You got a thing. It He's got a fact, bit. It is, in fact, uh, the bracket that we're going to be seeing up and <laughs> coming here. It's Machete, Fozy, Blaze, Zyder, Godly, and to be determined, most likely that uh -huh. is going to be Machete, uh, the winner of Machete versus Fozy, actually. And then Hazer Delta, the Taros who won the LCQ, yeah. is going to be going up against Coco, who took him up. But it's Bodvar time. It's Bodvar time. It's Bodvar time. It's Bodvar if we're, time. If we're okay. in EU, we're that's talking about bit. Bodvar. Yeah. That's the big three that I had predicted that I'm a little worried about now because squad is in losers. But <laughs> uh, preemptively looking at this, you look at Godly and mm -hmm. see this incredible run that Godly's been on of late. The tear, especially with not even just 2v2s, but some of the community tournaments. Mm -hmm. I have big hopes that Godly might actually take the whole thing today. But simple as well. You can't look at this and yeah. not talk about simple. You and Sparky kind of share that mentality of both loving simple and godly, loving that Bodvar, loving uh, probably the sword down sig. You haven't said it mm -hmm. officially. But I, I think it, y there's a lot of merit to it. We've seen the Bodvars doing very well in the World Championship, so no surprise to see uh, a very real possibility of some good Bodvar action today. Absolutely. And this also, this, it's so satisfying to get the bear out. Just, it just, yeah. you, you, it's, it, there's a reason why everybody's running that. But the first match we have coming up here, though, is somebody you actually pre-predicted to be in third. We're going to be seeing Machete versus Fozy. It's a set count in favor of Machete, 10-4 to 4 right now. How are you feeling about the potential with Machete currently in the lead, which I know you'd like to see continue, but what are the chances that Fozy actually manages to pull an upset today. I mean, with how today's going, there's always that possibility. Mm -hmm. You can't sleep on Fozy by any means. Machete, a strong competitor, likely going to be coming in with the Olgrim, uh, is definitely someone who can get through many opponents. He's mm -hmm. looking good today. He's not down in the lower bracket early, so I'm happy with that. But at the same time, I, again... Like I said, it's winter championship. Who knows what's actually going to happen? Exactly. And this is going to be a duel of the lance. Like, who ends up walking out on top? Because not only do you have access to, uh, uh, well, who's, who's the other We've one? We've got Scarlet We've got, you got Scarlet and, yeah. and Orion as well that could possibly come yeah. out, too, depending on how the matchup goes. So uh, I'm very curious to see if that ends up being the big key factor, who has better spacing, who has better fundamentals to actually bait out the early side lights from those lances. Or do we see early switch offs to the orb because you feel like you're not really able to box with it. So let me get better whiff punishes with Scarlet that could take out potentially but that but it's the fear of the damage that Olgrim's going to put on that's going to make you not want to overcommit in that matchup. Yeah, I mean, having that defense as well, being able to survive, we've seen Olgrim's live for exceptionally long time. So we'll see how well that works out as we're going to get into our first match of the day. Machete versus Fozy, game number one. And Fozy switching it up, keeping the Lance, but going to be going in with the Vector for game one. So two days in a row, we get access to Vector. <laughs> this is a this is an absolute treat for everybody who's been watching. And I, I'm here for it because I absolutely love watching new stuff, but also just seeing something like Vector on screen up here against the Ogrim. It's going to be an interesting first match here. Uh, what do you think is going to be the like the idea behind going to Vector here in this? I mean, uh, Vector, of course, makes a lot of sense. Of, has the Lance. Lance looking good of late. And of course, like you said, Fozy definitely a strong Lance player. But of course, Bo has gotten a lot of love. People are loving the bow, but right now I'm loving the Axe of Machete as he hits the recovery. Weapon toss attempt. Edge guard. And Machete, he's going to back off. Yeah, I like the pressure early on from Fozy trying to establish, look, I have better stage position and edge card control on the left. I want you to get baited early on so he can get those free chase sauces later, but it does not matter because Machete finds a deep off stage going a little bit too hard for that edge guard, and that is the first KO going in favor of Machete. Yeah, that Axe right there is one reason why I think Machete has the edge in this matchup. We mm. saw Axe do really well against Bo yesterday in yes. South America. And of course, Axe historically does pretty well against Lance. So if Machete decides to lean into it, uh, could see a lot of success. But of course, he's comfortable.
comfortable on the lands. Yeah, we're talking multiple times about that whiff punish game, right? If you get access to somebody who decided to overcommit on that D light, oh, free it, and it just hurt. It hurts your mental because you don't want to push for any type of advantage. Right now, Magenta just keeps advantage to in control, even though pretty deep in the red. It looks like Fozy hasn't found that really comfortable spot to try and push for the KO yet. Yeah, he hasn't really gotten a position where he can go for something like a sidelight, maybe go for the recovery, maybe go for an end sig. Machete oh goes for the goodness. down sig, and Machete is looking good. And uh, I'm getting the feeling Fozzie's going to make a swap. Yeah, I think that we're going to be seeing a switch off pretty quickly here, potentially even a stage switch too, because I feel like uh, Machete is controlling the platform a lot better than Fozzie right now. But I think Fozzie still wants that platform, so maybe we see a switch off to something like my Miami Dome afterwards to try and get better platform pressure. But at the moment, everything is just getting baited. Okay. trying to go for a big whiff punish. Nothing there, but finally finds the recovery to get the KO. Good matchup knowledge there from Fozzy, knowing he could get underneath that down signature with the bow down light, and good reaction to follow up with that recovery for the KO, but he's still two stocks behind. Majete might be looking for another ground pound D-Sig attempt, and uh, edge guard. Ooh, no. that was almost a great play to be able to get back into it. Can you get the ground pound? No, just gets by, keeping himself safe with the nares on the way up. Being up here with a stock and slowly closing the gap, what do you want to see out of Fozzy to potentially get himself back into this? Because he's doing a pretty good job on defense here in this, uh, in this last stock. Well, he definitely needed that edge guard. That was going to be the big thing. He's not really winning out in the 1v1 on stage, so getting an edge guard would have been massive, but unfortunately, he didn't uh, get the stock on that one, and now he might be losing this one. Yeah, there's a lot of option coverage you have coming in here, too. You got the weapon toss. Nice. Oh, and you have the potential ground pound. There was not much you could do there. You were forced to go to the bottom end of the corner, and with that stock up, there's no reason not to go for the ground pound right there. Even if you give it up, you're already deep into the red on the last stock. You're going to net that KO. That was very smart, very well placed by Machete in that game one. Yeah, really intelligently done with that, too. Goes for the weapon toss to kind of cover a lot of space, as well as bonk Fozzie, put him in a pressure situation where the mental stack might have been too much. Fozzie immediately went for the recovery. And we're going to game number two. I didn't catch. Yeah, Fozzie making the swap to Hattori. Okay, so better better burst range, being, uh, being able to actually stay up close. I think that was a big problem that happened in that last game you're talking about, not really winning the 1v1s. And close to what my idea was with Miami Dome. We're going to get the Crystal Temple, so it definitely looked like you saw a lot of Fozzie trying to bait platform control, but you couldn't get it. Now having access to uh, the Hattori, it's be a lot easier to zone break and get that the way that he was looking for in the game one. Yeah, he's going to likely use those platforms to try to approach onto Machete a little bit safer than just going for a raw dodge in. But at the same time, like, it's still an axe. It's still a lance. Two weapons that are great at covering these relatively low platforms. Yeah, I think, I think mostly it's the speed is the factor here. I think there was just so much, there's so many issues trying to get in before, but that's also really easy for Machete too, because if you decide to hold forward, that is incredibly easy to get those side lights, get those free nair strings off of this lance, which you're seeing exactly what he's doing. It's like, I'm gonna stay in center stage. You have to come to me, prove that you can actually outplay me here in center stage. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta get that uh, that neutral win, right? Make sure that you can get those. Because right now, Legette is getting pretty much every single neutral win. He's getting hit after hit on Nafosi and Fozzie. Back on the right side, he bites his way back up, but again, Machete's already putting the pressure on him. He's playing so well grounded, too, because you know you're hunting for the D-Lights. There it is, finally finds a D-Light to get that damage on, but Machete just keeps staying grounded, waiting for it, does confirm out, taking out with the Sair and getting the first KO. Now he's back to the Lance for the second stock of Fozzie. Fozzie doing slightly better this time, right? Like he's gotten some damage built up on the Machete, and he also has a little bit more KO potential with something like the, uh, the Spear and the Sword, where he's got those consistent knockout tools. Yeah, now what do we do here about trying to get that KO? I mean, you're pretty much looking for D-Light Stare on the sides, but you also have the other recovery axis, but this is just Machete understands. I'm going to go trade windows here. Does get reversed on the Sarah, the uh -oh. great weapon toss. Are you going to be able to get through the, the Lance up? Temporarily almost worked out, but great coverage there from uh, uh, from Fozy to actually close it out. Yeah, that was really good coverage. I, I like the attempt there. That's something that most Lance players will do, right? Is go for that up toss because the unarmed movement can kind of just be safer uh, with that weapon to cover. But Jete immediately cleans up the stock quick and easy. And now he's one stock away from uh, putting this one in the bag. If there's something that's so important at playing at this level, it's damage mitigation. You need to be able to actually stop the bleeding, which is what you saw. Fozzy started to actually get a few hits here and there, and then Machete had a dominant stock there at the end. And now he has, once again, yet another massive lead, about to uh, pretty much lap in damage. One thing that works really, really well for Machete is that he's not struggling to get the knockouts. We've seen Axe mm -hmm. players really fish for side airs or Olgrim's fish for the downstick. 
But Machete, he's not having any problem with it. He's getting those side lights just right to get that follow-up side air. Exactly. And then worst case scenario, like the damage has been so consistent on the Lance. We haven't really seen a charge Lance recovery attempt to try and go for object coverage on the way up. But just getting caught so many times on landing. Great job trying to bait out the jump. Excellent recovery to the left-hand side, not falling for the platform bait. Yeah, that soft platform actually working out really well for Fozzy. He had a little bit more uh, directions that he could try to recover <laughs> back down. Neutral light puts him off screen. And Machete is one hit away from finishing this one. Yeah, you need. You, this is where the best are made. And D-Light Recovery still not going to take it out off the top. Fozzy has to do everything that they can. But the, it's looking very grim here already. Looking like this could be a 2-0 lead going in favor of Machete. I like the weapon toss. Trying to be safe with it. He knows he's got a big lead and doesn't have to throw it. And the neutral light will clean it up. Now Machete up 2-0. Big over Fozzy and... Bozy's got to reach deep in the character pool. Yeah, I think on paper this counter pick made sense both stage-wise and going with the Hattori. You had better burst range, you had the ability to actually get in and try and put a little bit of fear into the heart of Machete because you haven't seen it at all in that first game once. So having that ability to get in quickly with Sword, have quick poke damage. Problem was though, you actually have to win neutral in order to get that in the first place yep. and Machete barely fell for it. Even though the damage was way better this time compared to 567 in that last game uh, to about 200. A lot closer, but the thing you pointed out was the KOs were very easy for Machete to find by comparison to Fozzy. Yeah, I mean, just looking back at that graph, that second stock of Fozzy did not last long. Machete was so clean on it. And uh, at this point, I I'm curious what Fozzy's going to do. Like, I, I want to see the character swap. I don't think Hattori was necessarily it. Um, having something like a Brin, which generally does pretty well against the Ogrim, right? Still has that movement speed, will still have the spear. And I also want to see kind of a playstyle swap, a little mm -hmm. bit more weapon tosses to open up Machete, because Machete, like you've been pointing out, has been sitting relatively center on the stage, playing very grounded, and he's forcing the opponent to try to make an action. Yeah, and it's, uh, we're going to be seeing the switch up here to the Orion. So what we're going to do is try and get exactly what you're looking for, but be comfortable with both picks. So you still have that spear you're trying to get out of the Hattori, but you have access to the Lance for those Lance duels once again. I don't know if it's going to work out. I like the surprise factor potentially from the SIGs that you have with the switch up. It's just you have to actually get those baits you need out of uh, Ogrim. The switch to Apocalypse can work. A little bit less range, a little bit more uh, easier to control the edge guards. Maybe that's the plan here, but it all depends on if you can actually push Majete off stage in the first place. Yeah, we'll find out as we get into game number three and a nice start from Machete already has him off stage. Goes for the end sig read. More sigs than we've seen from Fozzy so far. And uh, Machete finally finds some ground and has a weapon. All right, I think we've reached like, like caged animal points here because <laughs> off of that first attempt to try and get the sig off stage, Fozzy is uh, just going in oh. and just trying to catch him off stage wow. again. Like, go ahead, come to me. Please come to me. I want to take this out. Machete luckily didn't bite the bullet and go off there, but eventually one of those is going to land. Yeah, this is such a different Fozzy. He's bringing out much more of the signature kit. He's playing a little bit more aggressive, trying to just attack Machete at any opportunity. Goes in with a side light, unfortunately whiffs, and Machete's gonna get a nice punish behind it. Yeah, now can you keep that damage consistency up? You have a very small damage lead here, but you're currently facing offstage control. Once again, Machete's option coverage at the platform has been so good, but he does get by. You need a good neutral win. Starts off with the dare, not much else afterwards, and Machete luckily didn't string off of that, so Fozzy still gets a chance to keep fighting. Yeah, good reaction from Fozzy. He hadn't burned his dodge. The down sig, and Machete immediately recovers real high. The weapon's coming down, but it doesn't matter as Fozzy gets the first stock. That is so important for your mentality to continue this matchup. Close it out on the first stock after missing the first attempt, still takes it out and continues the pressure. Not even trying to back off, give a second for Machete to try and run for the weapon. I'm really liking this changeup so far from Fozzy's playstyle. Yeah, but this is that opportunity for Machete. Like you said, the damage mitigation, so crucial here. He needs to get this stock from Fozzy ASAP but he's not over-aggressing into the offstage for it. And one thing, we, uh, the ledge tapping we we're seeing before from Machete is not has been as strong here in this game three. Because before, it just kind of waited, well, one out the jump war. But Fozzy's kind of walking his way on the stage now by comparison. Might end up losing their stock here. It's going to be pretty rough to get back. Does dodge! dodge. Nice. However, not enough. The recovery's going to end up closing it out. Yeah, that's one thing that's tough about going up against the Axe and the Edge Guard is like, of course, you miss the down and you miss the ground pound, but you've always got that big swing and recovery from behind. But still, Fozzy got a lot of damage on the second stock. Machete's going to need mm -hmm. to bring out some big neutral wins. Yeah, that extra kind of damage was so important. Deep in the red here, especially if you want to go into trade mode, if you want to actually box up close and personal, because everything works in your favor. Granted, multiple side light nares are slowly working his way back into this damage. 
Yeah, you gotta get two hits for each one of Fozzie. Nice punish there from Machete. He was missing some punishes earlier, but it seems like he's hitting them now as he gets the three piece. Damage is almost even. Machete. And now, good. now you're in fear mode too because you got caught multiple times and he finally decided to pull out the three piece. Now you have to worry about the chase dodge afterwards. Does he look for it? He did inside the back off. He knew the dodge was coming, so he got the free switch off. Yeah, really smart from Machete. Hasn't really been KOing with the Lance, so he takes the opportunity to go for the Axe Swap. He needs his stock, and he's going to get it. The Haymaker from below, punishing the GC uh, downsig from Fozy. Yeah, incredible job. This is pretty much what we saw out of those first couple games, whereas by comparison to this start, Fozy had that nice lead, but Machete understands you see red often. I know you like to swing and try to hunt down this stock, so I'm going to bait you out in neutral, but there we go, closing it out. There's still potential for Fozy's winner side life to keep going. Really good game of chicken there from Fozzy, waiting out the options for Machete. And once Machete burned that recovery, Fozzy knew this is it. This is my opportunity to go in, get that pogo, clean up the stock. Now, fresh stocks for each one. This is going to determine if Machete continues on into the top 16 or if uh, Fozzy earns a game four. And so far, Machete getting good starts here, is getting a few pokes here and there, but not trying to overcommit to anything. You do not want to give up a free edge guard, especially with spear in hand. You do not want to take that ground pound. But Fozzy just looking for one big string. It almost looks like he's not even trying to commit to a D-Light, but he might not get the chance. Good dodge by the weapon toss. Are you going to make it back, though? The ground oh, pound man. not off stage. That could cost him. Not sure if that was uh, supposed to be like a mind bait or like make him think or maybe just slightly misinputted. But man, Fosi's living for a little while longer. He's got a lot of horizontal movement here. Can get the wall touch. To keep himself covered with weapon toss and that nair. Great job. This is actually incredibly close here on this last game. Fosi fighting for everything, fighting for their life. Can they get themselves into another game? We'd love to see it. Best of fives on the best when you get to that game five, but we will not be seeing that. Instead, we'll be seeing a, a quick 3-0 and a handshake coming in from Machete, keeping that set count in his favor over Fosi. Yeah, not overly surprised to see, considering uh, Machete was was the favorite. Higher PR has a better set count, but at the same time, Fozzy on the swap to the Orion was looking pretty solid. Mm -hmm. And if he made that swap early and had the right read, I think we could have seen that one go a little longer. I think so too. Yeah, the early like I, I like in a nutshell the idea behind the Hatori counter pick in the second uh, game. It's just. It was established pretty early on from Machete is that I don't care if you hold forward. I don't care if you try to rush me down. I'm not going to fall for that. And my punish game is way better than yours. So if I could keep that going, you're going to struggle because the more you try to get in, the lighter you are. And I'm going to find those KOs way easier. So the switch up at the end kind of worked out. Unfortunately, it was a little bit too late for Fozzy, and they're going to be taking a trip over to the lower side. Yeah, really well done on both sides. Fozzy, he's not out yet. Of course, again, yep. double elimination. You get to make that lower bracket run. Uh, but as we've established, lots of killers in that lower bracket. Yeah, Swada, please, please, Swada. <laughs> <laughs> I, I need you. Come People, on, get uh, back. People crossing that, their fingers for that. that. Like I said, that's my second place right now. So you got a long way to go. <laughs> but <laughs> luckily, at least on the other side of things, Godly and... Um, uh, Sipo are still in the winner's side. Those are mm -hmm. two people we kind of predicted to be up there for a while. But also, this could be the return run of Akno after the recent performances. You can only keep PR number one down for so long. So that's somebody else people are going to have to look forward to seeing here today. Uh, but the next match we have coming up next is going to be Blaze versus Zyder. Yeah, Blaze is another interesting one. Of course, longtime teammate of Akno. Mm -hmm. Looks really, really good. It's crazy. If you put Blaze in a 1v1, where Akno was with him and just died three times. <laughs> he would, I, I have full I, confidence in Blaze. He's so good, but like for some reason when it's like a legitimate singles tournament, mm -hmm. he doesn't look as strong. He's coming in here. I think he was like seed 80 something from what I was seeing, or maybe that was just when Smash GG was having issues. Mm -hmm. But like, he doesn't have the 1v1 consistency that his 2v2 play style would suggest. So uh, something that I heard in the pre-show, I believe it was Sparky mentioned, or it was one of the two of you, that you need that ego to be able to perform at the highest level. I think that Blaze has that access because he understands that he can perform well with Akno and those 2v2s. But when you get to that singles portion, sometimes you end up kind of caving to your own pressure. It's like, I, I'm a 2v2 god but i can't replicate that success in singles and you put too much pressure on yourself so if you could finally see that go away from blaze we will see some incredible top eight runs from him just right now might not be so much but this is a pretty even set that could happen between these two they are two and two at the moment so there's no in favor from either one of them uh, we might end up seeing replication of that game two before because it's mostly going to be old Grim versus the hattori how do you feel about that going into game one here well we've seen it 
play out in favor of the Olgrim. Mm -hmm. I think it's definitely possible for the Hattori, but for now, we don't have to worry about that matchup as a whole because it looks like it's going to be the Mordex versus the Asuri. Man, for game look, one. I. <laughs> I take these notes for a reason, and all y'all want to just keep messing me with this. But actually, I'm actually really hyped about this because this is going to be Mordex versus Sori. We're going to be seeing some incredibly ridiculous Scythe Chase reads. Uh, we're starting off on Demon, so a lot of room to work with, plenty of bait potential, and a Sori just being able to get those ridiculous guitar strings. I love it. Oh, Everybody pops okay. off for it. This first better 10 be a button check. It's first 10 seconds. We're good. Let's talk about these characters a little bit more. Uh, Blaze coming in with the Mordex. This is interesting. I, I, I've seen a lot of Blaze uh, gameplay. Generally, it's a lot more Axe. Generally, we'll see the Ogrim, we'll see the Brin. We'll we'll see, uh, I think we've even seen a Taros in competitive come out from Blaze. Uh, coming in with a Mordex, it's a different mentality. You don't yep. see too many people going in, uh, going making the jump from Axe to Scythe play. Yep, I, I can't remember who it was yesterday, but uh, I think it was News who decided to change up their character entirely as well. I believe they went with the Hattori to finally beat Rusho. It, yeah, actually, that's what, what the set was. So sometimes I guess you gotta like change up things like drastically to get that W. It's not like Mordex is a bad pick in that regard to be able to get that. Maybe we see a big change. Maybe it's like, you know what? I don't wanna go with the slower play style. I wanna go for big strings because I can get those reads and see if we get those cash outs. Now we're gonna get the actual game one here. Started things off with Blaze versus Zyder. Okay, and then on the other side, Zyder also coming in with the string weapon, right? Like a lot of people, if you're playing the Asuri, it's likely for those Katars. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll see if he's able to get those strings. Uh, but what's fun about this matchup is that it's one that goes the distance. And as the set progresses, you see those reads get bigger and bigger, right? Like the whole game one is about getting that early information. Yeah, we're seeing incredibly early uh, good spacing from Blaze getting multiple D-lights and just keeping them stuck away. But every time Zyder gets in, he's gotten at least a three-piece or, so, or follow-up. Good chase right there just to go for the neutral lights. So this has been incredibly close so far. Immediate closeout though. Blaze getting a really good early kill. I like the way that he kind of covered it so far this Mordex looking good. Yeah, that was really clean. Just kind of slip off the stage. Immediate ground pound on top of Zyder. Zyder had a very interesting follow-up there. He had a GC downlight, and then he went for a falling, uh, I think, side air or landing neutral light. It was very awkward to watch. Yeah, and like it's th that's gonna be bad when you're whipping directly in front of Scythe like that. That's yeah. just free chases afterwards. We've already seen these D lights finally gets a dodge on one to avoid. Uh, oh, got the read. So good. There we go. Does close it out. Yeah, really smart from Zyder there. Uh, saw the dodge down read, got the end light, able to follow up with the recovery. Uh, and that pretty much evened it up. Yeah, now what, so far, like with Blaze playing pretty well, we've been talking about a lot about Blaze. What is it you want to see out of Zyder to potentially just kind of cruise with this W so far? Because we know the burst range that Katars have, but you cannot overcommit too much, especially in front of Mordex. I mean, one of the big things here is like just that, that standardized, right? Like you have Blaze, a long time competitor, Zyder, kind of uh, under in terms of seeding. Like, so you want to see that burst out early. You want to see Zyder walk away with game one. And with the way that he's getting these Katara strings, I think he's very capable of taking it. Yeah, and Zyder running in hot too, did get top eight at BCX. So this is somebody who is trying to put their name out there and like tell people like, hey, oh. I'm here to stay at the bottom of the blast zone instead because Blaze is the one saying, absolutely not. You will not be getting that new time on the block in front of me today. Love the matchup knowledge there. Of course, we've, we've seen so many Asuri's utilize that gravity cancel neutral signature to reverse the situation and Blaze is like, I've got the range advantage. A good weapon toss from Zyder though, and we're back to even. Sometimes simplicity is key. D-Light Sarah, just to get that stage position, you get that early jump because they panicked and then all of a sudden we're back to an even game. Yeah, this is what we usually see from the Asuri's and the Sentinels out there is like, great damage build on the Katars and then swap to the other weapon for that clean KO tool. Yeah, and I'm the Blaze is not pumping the brakes whatsoever. Going for multiple big jump reads, trying to get recovery hits just to push Zyder back off stage because I think that's okay. where the most comfortable, but great Sig gets that stage position. Yeah, went for the recovery there, trying to catch the movement. Zyder had just enough to get above it, but damage being done, the icicles connect, and Blaze takes game number one. Uh, you always have to fear it. We all been hit by it. Just like just waiting for that one big read and uh, Blaze. I think Blaze kind of let it be known on that last stock after losing that stock to Zyder. Like I'm not going to let you get momentum here. I'm going to swing big. We saw multiple uh, six actually connect. That one closing it out there at the end. Incredible positioning for it too. Because right in that spot, you're not taking a big uh, punish there. If you yeah. do happen to whip, you're most likely taking a dare, and then you have to re uh, take the guess after. Yeah, really smart from Blaze. Kind of threw it out raw, but had the footsies right before it, and Zyder was not ready to react. 
There we go, game number two, same map. Not too surprised to see again, Zyder had some great moments in the mm -hmm. last one. Yeah, I don't think that stage switch needed to be the thing here. They're both, they both had good back and forth between neutral exchange wins. It went to last stock, uh, near uh, KO percent for both. It's just that Blaze just overwhelmed you at the end. We're seeing very good stage control here and good movement bait so far from Zyder, almost catching him on the jump. Taking the swap over to the guitars. Wants to get some more damage built up. All right. I like the two-piece and a good jump out or a dodge out from Blaze. And Zyder wasn't ready for it. He was expecting the dodge down. Oh, that's a big whip punish. Do you get anything out of this here? Trying to back off, but Zyder aggressive off stage. I like it. Not going to take the ground pound like what happened in game one. Yeah, doesn't want to hang on the wall too long. It is a short wall, so it's harder to react to those instant ground pounds. The down sig connects. Needs to get one more hit. Oh, just misses the Sarah, but just look at the way Zyder is spacing out on Blaze. He's consistently movement baited away from him. D-Light Recovery will take it off the top, and that is going to be Zyder striking first. Yeah, much better footsies coming out from Zyder here in game number two. Uh, I like the utilization of the sword, right? Like, we always talk about how these stories want to lean into the Katars, but you got to have some great sword fundamentals, and that's what we're seeing from Zyder. Exactly, especially against something like the Scythe. Once you see that big opener, you see that D-Light whiff, like, go in, get in as quick as possible, and oh, that is not going to be able to happen here because, once again, Blaze finds that edge guard. He's been so consistent with that so far in the set. Yeah, just shutting down that stock immediately, getting side air after side air, going into the second stocks. Blaze with the Scythe again. Haven't seen those big extended Scythe strings, but... Able to get damage. I think that's the one thing that he's kind of been lacking so far because his neutral game has been good. His like his simple punish game has been good, but we haven't seen those big nair chases. We haven't seen anything out of that. I think it's mostly because he realizes if he puts himself directly above Zyder and that Asuri potential pressure, it's going to be a bad time. So maybe he's not a, like a little afraid to commit to it right now. Yeah, hasn't Ooh. been uh, pulling the trigger on those reads. Side stick thrown out. Zyder throughout the neutral signature would have been scary if if it connected. Good down air from Blaze, but he can't follow up. And it's going to be a KO off the top there, coming in from Zyder. Once again, striking first on the next stock. That is so crucial because when it came to that last game, Blaze was always the one who found it, and then they went to the end. So it's the way that this is being played out, this is incredibly close. I understand why the set count between no! these two is 2-2. Two, two. Oh, and that is going to be something. Uh, age old saying, we take those, especially when money's on the line. And for Zyder, you're happy about that because that puts you up one game apiece. That was so good from Zyder because Blaze, you saw the sweat beads. Like, when we get to that final stock replay, the sweat beads were so early, and he didn't get to touch back down. When he whiffed that down air, it was done. Yeah, that's one of those moments where, like, greed kind of seems like a good idea here because you could, because you, you know they're thinking you want to get back immediately. Problem was, though, just misspaced it. No more Mordex, though. We're done with that. The real business has showed up. We're going to see the old Grim show uh, here in game number three. I like the swap, not just because I like the classics, uh, but more so because he wasn't getting the big side strings that we wanted. He wasn't getting the big gauntlet reads that we would want from something like a Mordex. So going to something a little bit more simple, getting the hit after hit should work out well for him. Exactly, especially in these positions like this. You're talking before about the range that Axe has. You decide to chase me off stage too much because I know you want it. You are going to get reverse edge guarded quite a few times, so Zyder's got to be careful. Nice down signature. Blaze. A little bit behind in the damage department, but you're seeing him. He's able to trade out a little bit more effectively. But man, Zyder already knowing the matchup. He is getting more hits, oh, more aggression. Goodness. One hit away from it, and he's going to help Blaze out, but he got damage. Consistently whip punishing over and over again. That was such a well-placed GCD light Sarah from before, and then taking it out with the unarmed recovery off the top. This, 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 I think just the way that Zyder's been spacing so far between game two and three now, he kind of understands when Blaze wants to go in. Yeah, really good footsies coming out from Zyder, being able to kind of backdash the approaches from Blaze, and he's got a pretty nice stock here. He's got some room to play with against this uh, this Lance from Blaze. Yeah, this is where you need to get that big damage on. You're uh, like having access to this Lance. It's going to be easier to like zone break a bit with those side lights, but we do see an immediate bait on that. Doesn't really get too much, just neutral lights, but it's a mentality thing. And now back to the sword. It's just looking so good for Zyder. Okay, a nice punish from Blaze on the whiffed end sig. But like you said, things looking really good for Zyder. And finally, Blaze has got his weapons in order, right? Like, you want to do the Lance early and then make the swap to the X. That's what we saw work out very well for Machete. Yeah, now one thing that can be a factor here is that Blaze has been into position a few more times by comparison to Zyder. One thing that does come to factor is the consistency of being able to hold yourself together in high portions of bracket. Blaze may be behind right now, only a little bit in damage, 
but Zyder's mix-ups are only going to work for so long against them. Granted, D-Light Recovery does take it off the top. Zyder's got to make sure he keeps this going. Once Blaze figures it out, it's going to be a problem. Yeah, I mean, if Zyder ends up closing out this one, he only has to win one more game, so Blaze really needs to find the adjustment quick. At the Lance again, needs to get this stock. Good job, Light there. Reed. Oh, Zyder gets outside of the Ensig. That was so close. The, 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 the confidence in Blaze right now. There it is. Look at him. He's spacing out away from all this. He knows he wants to commit first, trying to catch him with the GC Sig off the top, but Zyder not falling for it. Okay, turn around. The down air not really going to work out for him. Ground pound misses. See if that comes back to bite him because Blaze, Blaze has had prior to that moment had a bit hit in so long, but gave up stage position. This has allowed Zyder to do what Sword does best. Keep that spacing out. There's another GCD light Sair just the, oh, but gives up stage position now too. Unarmed. That's gonna come through and that's gonna find the KO. No, oh, but Zyder got so much damage off of that. The second Blaze was stuck on the corner, unarmed. Zyder had so much that he got off of it. Yeah, Zyder is a swing in right now, too. And I'm finally gets access to guitars. We've seen that these, uh, like, Zyder has been consistent in finding that recovery KO read over and over again. So, uh, excuse me, uh, Blaze is pretty much forced to play grounded right now. Yeah, Blaze, he's got to be careful about this one. But the down sig and Blaze is out of there. Zyder up 2-1. Zyder doing incredible here in these last two games. By comparison to game one, it was all Blaze who was the one who was staying just out of the comfort zone. Here, even with the switch to the Ogrim though, albeit very close, you saw once stage position was given up, when Blaze had like a solid 30 seconds of not being hit, it went right back to Zyder. Zyder yeah. was so consistent with the damage on that. And now we're gonna see the switch up to the Koji. This is an interesting one. Koji, uh, we've seen Blaze play a little bit of Koji. I think generally it ends up being against Akno when he pulls it out. Um, we'll see how well it works out. But more importantly, I like the map swap. He's just not winning on Demon Island anymore, so he's got to change it to something different. Yeah, I think having access to two different landing platforms are going to help you a lot here because the amount of times that he got caught repeatedly by the landings from Zyder were so good. But the spacing game now, that you, you want to space me out about a character length? Now I have access to Bow, so this is going to be a lot better here, potentially for Blaze in game number four. Yeah, unfortunately for Blaze, like the the predominant way to approach with Bow is for that dash in downlight, right? But uh, Zyda can kind of sit on these soft platforms if he wants to, kind of uh, bait them out and just be high above it. Yeah, I'm curious to see like how how this game moves forward. What is it about this counter pick on this stage in particular that you think Blaze needs to make happen to get this W here up against Zyder, who's just been so good at just consistently punishing any time he tries to approach? Well, I can tell you what I think Blaze wants to happen, which is a lot more neutral wins. That's what he's playing for with the swap to the Koji, is get those neutral wins. You've got a lot of safety with that high dexterity that Koji brings to the table, and nice recovery from underneath. Blaze able to go up over Zyder, but he needs to get that extra credit. Yeah, that's a confidence reversal right there. Getting that recovery off the top, you need to get that damage on. Sword is exactly what you need for it. Already keeping him stuck. There you go. Get that consistent damage. Getting another Sair follow-up after the recovery, too. This is working really well. It's getting to the point where it's even getting close where he might lap him for set. Zyder's got to work for this KO. Yeah, I really like the decision off that soft platform to go, the, to go for the D-Light recovery. Uh, generally, the Dare is my favorite follow-up off of it, but that's only if you're grounded. So you can get that bounce off-stage opportunity. Blaze goes in. He can't get the wall touch but he needs to get the stock Zyder gets around it recognize the situation good movement to make sure that he doesn't get caught that could have been such a different story being told right now we could have seen three stocks up to one if Zyder found it but even after losing that stock it was deep in the red so it's one of those things like okay I was gonna eventually lose this anyways but now how do you rebound from here Zyder got stage position back got access to the guitars need to make sure you don't do anything ridiculous because you could get that damage on okay the recovery in the center of the stage coming out from Blaze. Again, throwing out these recoveries. The recoveries from the sword have been working pretty well for him. Do you like Dare? Nice follow-up. Getting extra the side Ooh. sig. Blaze looking good. Absolutely beautiful plays there from Blaze. Just closing it up, looking on fire right now. This is this Koji switch is absolutely making the uh this matchup work right now. Yeah, the sword really playing into it. Usually when you see someone swap to the Koji, it's like, okay, now I have this bow, I have this long range thing. That's what we started talking off, uh, talking about at the start of this game. But really, it's the sword coming out from Blaze. But Zyder's about to even this one up. One more hit, could have done it, but Blaze able to avoid it. Yeah, that was so close right there. Zyder consistently just looking for the one early aggressive approach to get that sick KO. And he's just throwing him out repeatedly, just kind of haphazardly at this point. And that can get a little obvious, but Blaze not falling for it so far. Tried to get that chase dodge read there with the recovery, not going to get it. 
Cider really taken into that mentality of missing 100% of the shots you don't take. So all he's doing is shooting with the heavy button. Finally finds a hit, and that's enough. It hit early enough that Blaze didn't get a big lead. If you believe hard enough in your buttons, they will hit every <laughs> yeah. single time. So then he finally finds it there. And this is an incredibly scary position for Blaze because now you have access to the bow, but that is Katars on the other side. Once you commit with that D-Light, you're going to have to deal with a really quick burst in from a story. But has some control at the ledge. Can he get him? No, he does get the center oh, stage. What? D-Light Siders the other direction. Blaze maybe not having confidence that the D-Light was going to hit, but still... Finding connections, doesn't have him quite in KO percent. Zyder can fight back into this. I think Blaze needs to get back to Sword as quick as possible. I like, we're, we're seeing some decent spacing, but we're not seeing that same confidence in Punish game. There it is, get, there you go, immediate access. Now you are boxing so well. Yeah, I, I mean, I absolutely agree with that. Uh, you could see he was kind of stuck on the bow, no weapon spawns, and he didn't want to be left unarmed, but the second a weapon spawned, threw away the bow, went over to the sword, doesn't quite have him in D-Light recovery range. Zyder knows it, and so he's playing around these facts, getting that damage added up. Oh, did he touch? Blaze gonna take game number four. We saw the sweat beads and we knew it was it. And now we got a game five. I'm so happy for it. I love when we get these game five moments. And all that came on the fact that at the very end, Zyder broke on that last stock, decided instead of trying to fight center stage, get a couple of like quick strings in, you have it, you have access to like very easy damage with sword, instead decided to go for big recovery reads. That gave up way too many resources in the moment Blaze saw those sweat drops, it's GG. Yep, the second he got that, that single hit that denied the touch, that was all Blaze needed. And uh, really a lot of that came off of like the situation, right? It, it started off even in those final stocks and then Blaze got just enough of a damage lead that it put the pressure on Zyder and Zyder's like, I have to get back into this. I got to make sure that I'm staying even with my opponent. And that pressure was a little too much. He started getting a little over aggressive, started making a, a couple of wrong decisions and Blaze took full advantage. Yeah, and once you see that over, over aggressive play, the better players are going to understand how to properly control that. But these two very even so far. We're seeing this game five. We're taking a second to even figure out where we're going to commit to on the character here uh, when it comes to this final game but I think that this last one is going to go down to the last stock last hit that was so close throughout the entirety of that and although we saw a lot of really good sword strings coming in from blaze at the end he had access to platforms to be able to do a lot of that pressure to keep it up now no longer access to crystal temple i believe i saw it. yep so we're gonna get you have platform only momentarily here but that flat stage is exactly where we saw zyder dominating on demons earlier absolutely and and one thing i wanted to point out about the numbers of that last one is that you saw a lot more sword damage coming out from zyder mm -hmm. he was not able to get those guitar strings on the blaze but might not need oh man what a fight back from blaze the nsig as well and Zyder's still keeping the pressure going. These hands are ready to eat for everybody. They are fighting everyone off stage right now, almost oh, catching snap. up. Oh, the guess the gate does get the wall touch, and Zyder just barely misses the ground pound, trying to go for early KO. I am loving the fact these two are scrapping already. Now, sword duel. What an explosive start to game number five. They know how valuable it is to stay in the winner's side of the bracket. Blaze, sword in hand. This is the thing that worked so well for him in game number four to get it to game number five, but Zyder's got a sword of his own. Yeah, nobody wants to be going down there when you have the names like Swada, Ninja, I believe Pavelski might be down nope. there potentially too. It's like, I gotta nice. take a look at that bracket, but we're gonna be looking at the first stock going in favor here for Zyder. Yeah, really good spacing there from Zyder. You saw the backdash down Sig as Blaze was coming up over the corner, and now, Zyder, opportunity to get that extra credit. Katars against unarmed. It works pretty well most of the time, but Blaze finds a bow spawn. Yeah, luckily, bow spawn getting over. That's the first attempt we've seen at the D-Sig trying to catch a jump in, but because it's been a bit of a reserve thing. You know what? First one didn't work. Try, try again. We talked about it before. Believe in those buttons. Yeah, you just got to press it harder on the second time. But <laughs> Blaze, he's still taking the brunt of the damage. Going to deny the weapon. You don't see him even taking it away. Instead, he's trying to cover it, trying to trap Zyder. But Zyder, he has the sword. And Zyder is scrapping at that, too. Every time we've seen him get pushed into the corner, it hasn't worked. But one thing that has been very obvious is how often Blaze tries to move Zyder over to that platform. Now that it's gone, he realizes he hasn't been able to beat him in neutral as much. That was a great dodge. That was about to be a big problem there for Blaze. Yeah, Blaze is lucky Zyder opted for the side sig instead of the down sig. Side sig reaches further um, and has more of a dead space close to him, whereas the down sig hits close and Blaze got through it. Zyder still finding hits, though. Another signature, and Blaze could be going down to his final stock here. 
There we go. Going for Weapon Toss, forcing him low. Does get back to Axis. So now you have the KO consistency. You have Delight Sierra. Delight Recovery. Straight up recovery is going to do it, though. Blaze sitting on his last stock here. Seeing Zyder commit to the sword. I like it. I think it's worked a lot better so far in game uh, here in game five because you said it early. Katars haven't worked nearly as much since the Koji swap. Yeah, Blaze just has an answer to the Katars for now, but still, Zyder doesn't have to worry about that answer because he's got such a lead mounting. Blaze needs to find the KO. And, and you already sick. pulled out the like the hat trick before too with the D-Sig. You hadn't done yeah. that all prior, so now that's gonna be in the back of Zyder's mind. You okay. have to get it, and there we go. Gets the KO. We're going to last stock a piece here in game number five. Couldn't ask for a closer match for this one. Game five, final stocks, Blaze versus Zyder. Blaze can't deny the weapons. He's not, he's not covering them hard enough. Absolutely not, and that's gonna be so crucial here. You see Blaze just trying to find that big opener. There we go, but get boxing right back at Zyder. Big punish on the dodge, nice. though. In that slight lead over Zyder. I'm actually kind of surprised I decided to switch off on there. I thought he was just going to stick with the sword the entire way through, but to believing harder in the Katars right now, and nice. it's working. Got one dodge read, end light into the recovery, and Sig misses, and Blaze has the punish. That's a lot of resources going in aggressive there to avoid oh, a recovery snap. attempt off the top. Ooh. Didn't utilize the soft platform there. Didn't expect the bounce the way that it did. Blaze, ooh. Delight recovery and, and Blaze takes it. Game number five over Zyder. Incredible swap here to the Koji. It worked out the characters they had before. I think the big thing was the speed and the like the, the end lag from Ogrim was just too easy for a story to punish. But the switch up here to the uh to the Koji, and this it wasn't even the bow, it was just the sword. The sword being able to actually box and show I could contest with you too worked incredibly well there for Blaze to take it out. But that was moments away from potentially being um, a W in favor of Zyder, who continues to prove himself time and time again. I think uh, one thing that that Koji did, which is something that uh, we don't see often, is that it, it showed the power of dexterity, right? Mm -hmm. Going in from from uh, Olgrim, which is coming in base, I think like three decks, to Koji coming in at base eight decks. Like he, he is so much safer. He got away with so many more options. So he's able to throw out those nares, those dares, and kind of box outsider, like you said, mm -hmm. a lot safer. And it worked out for him as he, he was able to close it out. Yeah, incredibly well played there. I, I enjoyed watching that set a lot. We saw the like the character pool death that uh, he had, and just the incredible play from Zyder once again. Not only like showing that BCX wasn't a fluke. Like yeah. even though you end up losing here, this is one of those uh, like losses that you take and look back on. It's like I could have won that, and you take that and ride with that through lowers. But it is a stacked lowers nonetheless. That's going on down there. Uh, it has been. It has been brutal, but yeah. it is winners, and everybody's coming out trying to set the like, kind of set the tone for the year. It's definitely a very competitive region. That's what we see from EU and NA. Is like the, there's so many names that you're like, you know what? I, I I'm not that surprised that that person yeah. was able to win. Like there's just so many strong competitors. But on that note, Blaze is going to continue on, and now we go into the matches that are going to find out who's going into the top eight. Yes, and this matchup coming up next, I, I went to go pull up the stat pool on it, and I forgot. You can't even do it because Godly has returned, and he's going to be facing up against... I believe uh, Machete? It, I, it was the winner of uh, Machete Fose. So yeah, yeah it would be Machete. Okay. Uh, that one, we, we've seen, like, Godly has been showing up. Yeah. with that bold bar and just like it's going to be very dangerous for Machete, uh, excuse me, uh, Machete to deal with because at the community tournaments recently, we saw W's over Swata, I believe Akno as well. That is really good to support. It is a different territory now with it being the official big event. But how are you feeling about this potentially for Godly to move forward in this? I am admittedly nervous for my pick of Machete. Godly's oh, right. a, I mean, that's right. This is a battle of predictions. Yeah, a little right bit, here. a little bit. Uh, Godly's a very strong competitor. The biggest thing is like he, he's he's untested in terms of competitive in yep. the past year. Like nobody really knows. There's a lot of hearsay. There's a lot of like I have confidence in Godly, but when it comes down to push or pull. We don't officially know, but we're exactly. going to find out as we're getting into game number one. Godly on the Koji versus Machete's Olgrim. So this is definitely not ex what I expected to see coming in here, but let's see if it works out. We saw the uh, incredible Koji play a second ago, but it was mostly sword play. It was more just like a straight up counter play to Zyder's play style. However, with Machete on the other Ooh. side, just saying, you cannot box with me because I'm going to consistently punish you with these side lights. Machete getting hit after hit after hit. The way that he was continuing the pressure on Godly was immaculate. It. And now over to the axe, likely looking for the sideline. No, he's going to go for the down signature. Likely will want to stick with the axe. Yeah, that's been his big KO tool. 
I'm like, like Machete starting off was sending a message. It's like, you, I, I know you may be like the, the, the hot pick right now, but I have been here before <laughs> and I'm going to show you exactly why I am going to take you out in winner's side. That is, that was an incredibly solid stock for the first game, uh, first one in the game. Yeah, a nice explosive start for Machete. We'll see if he can maintain that pressure as he's stuck on the axe against Godly's bow. Axe has some good things in the toolkit, right? Downlight, neutralite, both moves that actually jump over that bow downlight, but Godly's starting to find those hits. Yeah, here we go. It's all oh. about damage mitigation once again. Barely hit. I don't think we saw maybe more than two hits on the return on that stock. And it just the incredible presence of mind of Godly. And now he's controlling his landings incredibly well here, Duke. Yeah, good on Godly to not get mentally broken after the start of that one and just immediately clap back against Machete. I'm loving it. These two are scrapping through oh, and through. Snap. Oh, looking okay. for the early KO. And even after missing out on trying to keep that damage down, staying, get, uh, keeping him in a bad spot. Machete is actually kind of reeling a bit here. Yeah, Machete is struggling. He's very much on the back foot. And Godly is the one keeping the pressure on top of Machete. Machete, this is the sideline. He's going to hit. Uh, he's going to hit with the axe, but he couldn't get the recovery. Yeah, trying to just control the airspace. I think Godly's just been playing airspace for free, except yep. now okay. Godly is playing grounded very well. It's like, okay, you keep looking for jump reads, but if I don't give it to you, Ooh. but the three piece and a biscuit taking him out off the top, that is just such, <laughs> it was so important in that moment because yeah. he was getting cooked. Uh-oh, 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 okay. A free two piece there, or actually three piece there for Machete. He took full advantage of that. That he That's very much a we take those moment. Yeah, every single time, like, especially with the money on the line. Like, you, you can shake hands afterwards, but yeah. I will take it every time. No K off the top still. Godly is putting on the pressure, though, to try and take it back, because we saw that very uh, very similar situation with stock one, and we're going to see a close out here on stock number two. Very close game. Yeah, definitely real possibility. And uh, again, just looking at, like, raw PR numbers, this should have favored Machete, but everybody knows Godly is still a strong competitor. If your light connects, Machete swinging back. He's got the damage advantage. Will likely start looking for the KO tool after his next big string. They're trying to get some, some dodge reads there in center stage. Not going to get it, though. Looking for the jump there with Sarah. Keeping that damage on. Having a bit of a struggle, but the reversal does come through in the end. Machete seeing that you committed a little bit too far off stage. I'm going to just sneak by you real quick and take game number one. Yeah, a little bit of a sigh of relief there for Machete. With how explosive that start was, it looked like Machete was going to run away with it. But we saw Godly able to bring it back. Stay even with such a strong competitor like Machete. Yeah, now let's see where the counter pick goes here between these two because Ooh. we saw incredible uh, incredible neutral play from both. It looks like we might end up running it back. Yeah, we're going to run it right back to Mammoth. But uh, it's a Rayman coming out from Godly. Oh. All right, so just... I'm just going to once again throw the notes in the <laughs> trash. <laughs> but, uh, it, like... It, even with that damage difference there too, like you saw, like five, to, uh, five to four, it didn't matter because it was still really close at the end. But now, what is your opinion behind the switch here up with the Rayman? Uh, I get it in the sense that, like again, Axe generally does pretty well in this matchup, and so of course you're either gonna win out against the Lance or go even against the Axe of Machete. But at the same time, coming in with the Gauntlets, it can be really good staying stacked on the opponent. But the hard part is getting that stack up. Yeah, I think, oh, okay, all right, can we get, oh, you can we catch low. him? Oh, you went low, you went low. Oh, you made a mistake, my friend. That is exactly what he was looking for, and that is an incredibly early stock there from Godly, who can put, could now kind of cruise a little bit and afford to go for some reckless plays. Yeah, I mean, Godly's got such a massive lead built up off of that gauntlet edge guard, and Machete's, oh. okay, finish it, finish it. And he's gonna get it. Machete immediately brings it back. Anything you can do, I could do better. Like, that was just so well played by Machete because he got cooked on the first stock. There's just no other way to put it. But immediately answering right back with one of his own, This, these two are scrapping. There is no camping. There's none of that. They're kind of spacing each other out right now. But I am really enjoying this so far. <laughs> really good plays on both sides, but now... It's, uh, well, actually, I was going to say it was evened up, but uh, Godly's still getting a little bit of the better of Machete. Some great damage built up onto the second stock. Machete with the edge guard. Godly fights his way back up. Yeah, not wasting a single second there. Just immediately recovering out of that situation. Not trying to let Machete control him the way he did in that last stock. But Godly has been able to get some decent damage in with the gauntlets. But do you feel like the gauntlets need to be the play continuing forward? Because we haven't seen too much of the axe so far. 
I, I, I'm i curious to see what the gauntlets will do. The gauntlets have a little bit of a ramp up, whereas the axe will just kind of come out swinging Ooh. and it's going to work out as he hits the weapon toss. I want to see him stick with the gauntlets for now, right? It's going to be a fresh stock for Machete and he's got time to learn, but instead he's going back to the axe. He wants to close this one out. I love when players immediately answer right back, like, oh, you haven't seen the axe? Yeah. Give me a second. Hold on. And now it's it's putting in work. Ooh. Just controlling that weapon spawn so well. Oh. In a, wow. You are in fact godly oh. because he god, he he is taking him out on that last stock. Godly sealing the deal there and putting himself on the board. Really good edge guards coming out from Godly. I mean, the, the two of those three stocks were just impressive edge guards and Machete just falling too far. And now Machete, he's going to make the swap. And I 100% expected this and respect it. It's going to be the Mordex for game number three. And yeah, we're going to see the switch up here to Demons as well. So you don't get to hide on the side of the stage and control the edge guard the way we saw a second ago. Because we, you have learned, don't give Golly that much room for wall touches. You are probably going to lose that sock. Way less room here on the sides. And now let's switch up to the Mordex. How are you feeling about the counter pick of the Mordex here? Uh, I love the Mordex. It's, it's definitely something that's been in Machete's uh, pocket for a long time. We've seen the Mordex do really, really well. The Demon Island has me a little bit nervous because of those down six from Rayman. But at the same time, like you said, less wall touch ability here. So Godly can't maintain that pressure in the offstage as easily. Now let's see if he can keep it going here. The Axe has just pretty much been putting in the work ever since I wondered where it's been. <laughs> so just keeping it going. But now the Gauntlet duos, the, I think Godly has done better nice. at controlling center. But this is the first time we've seen Machete kind of be able to fight up close. And it's working pretty well. Not huge whiff punishes so far, but... I, 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 don't, I don't feel too fearful. It looks pretty confident. Like, the movement is very confident for Machete to start. Yeah, Machete, he, he doesn't have the warm-up time on this Mordex. Uh, he's definitely just coming out swinging, looking good. It's relatively even between the two, but the th one thing that Machete is going to struggle with is finding those knockouts. He doesn't have the consistent knockout tool that he had with the Axe. Yeah, you have to go for those big reads, too. Does get the D-Light, gets the positioning. Do you get the KO? Nope, just kind of goes for weapon toss. It gets reversed there on the stairs. So coming back through is Godly and really just been consistent at avoiding that offstage pressure. Yeah. Uh, Machete looking better, though, in game number three. He's uh, not immediately losing his stock. He needs to finish this, Ooh. and he's going to do it again. The ground pound comes out from Machete. He has his pick of the weapons, and it looks like... He's going to be forced over to the gauntlets. No, forced to nothing. God godly. So good at denying. That was so good because, he, like you said, he had a second to kind of pick and choose, and Godly denied that and got back to the gauntlets pretty quickly. But now you have to box those gauntlets up against the axe, which has done incredible jobs of keeping you out. I do like Machete's positioning, though. You see he's putting himself in disadvantage, or excuse me, controlling disadvantage better. Not too many hits. Ooh, he didn't touch. Okay, still has the horizontal movement. That was scary. Godly finds the hit. Sidelight into the recovery. Godly looking good. Bro, never mind about that dis disadvantage control, man. It is all <laughs> Godly who's been controlling the landings over and over again. Trying to find something to give some hype here to Machete, but he's got a lot of work to do. He needs a big chase string right now. Yeah, so much control for Godly. He's doing such a good job. Didn't hit the down air. Okay. Avoided the down signature, side stick thrown out. Machete doesn't even have him in KO percent. Yeah, he's gonna have to look for a big play really soon. He's gonna need to try and maybe reverse edge guard here. Goes off stage. Yep, there you okay, go. Nice. And that's gonna be the seal of the deal. Gets himself back in, and you can definitely get this damage on quick to even this back up. Yeah, utilizing what little wall was there for the dare into the Ooh. ground pound. Also gets the punish. Machete finding momentum here. Okay, even after that D-Light whip, he still had him in perfect position to get the follow-up Nair. Machete getting all the reads he needs right now. Godly kind of committing hard. Does find an opening finally, though, here, Duke. Oh, no, Machete. He's been floating for a while. Does touch down, but he burns his weapon away. Gets the nice neutral light. Will deny the weapon pickup. Godly immediately goes over to the left side. Machete was just trying to pressure him. I don't agree with that whatsoever oh. because you just gave Godly access to that. You should, like, in, in, in a nutshell, you think, okay, they automatically think I'm definitely going for the weapon, right? So I can maybe snipe something up here. Problem is, though, that Godly has outplayed you in those positions every time. He had that, he had the denial before, and then he realized, I see through what you're doing. And that just gave him free access to the axe to close it out. He had stage position, even if he got by that. And such good stage awareness there from, uh, from Godly. And we're seeing, once again, another switch up, but this time to the Asuri. I don't know how I feel about this Asuri. Uh, the Mordex, I think there was potential. And right now, Machete, I, it, it, it's more of the emotional issue of like, 
it feels like he's swapping up to things to hope that it'll find something that works mm -hmm. against Godly's Rayman, more so than like, I know what exactly will work well here. I think like, I think you're, you hit the nail so like hard on the head there because we're now on Raw Haven too. So it's, I just want to fight. Yeah. I don't like, I'm going to switch up to the story. I'm going to have access to something that's going to get quick damage on you. And I want you to feel uncomfortable. Problem is though, Godly is usually the one that wins in the scrambles. Yeah, Godly's been winning out in the neutral. The Rayman working so well for him. All right, over to the Qatar is likely what he was looking for with the swap, but again, he's not getting those big strings, and Godly gets the first dot quick. And the, I think that was about three times in a row we saw Machete swing at a disadvantage, and Godly just positioned himself directly under it as soon as the end lag came through. Quick punish. You have to watch out for when you're mashing buttons on landing because they will get capitalized on. Even though you want to get this game back, you got to slow it down a bit. Oh my goodness, Godly getting hit after hit with the axe. Machete not able to answer back just yet. Needs to get this stock off of Godly. Waiting, doesn't go in for the ground pound immediately. Uh, the weapon toss away now too. All right, there you go. Gets back on, get access quick. Yes, oh. you need those big reads, but not gonna get it. Godly's just not falling for him so far. Some good footsies from Godly and Machete is falling further and further behind. So much extra credit given to Godly. Down sick finally. Damn to finish off the first stock, but he's so far behind. Absolutely, that is a big deficit, but Machete just has to believe hard enough in some good reads that, oh my goodness, that was about to make it so much more difficult to make that comeback right there. Godly does have him so deep in the red, and there it is, pretty much a fresh stock here, up two to one in the set. It's not looking too good for your boy at the moment. Yeah, Godly just looking dominant, of course. Uh, coming in with this Rayman. The swap to the Rayman just immediately understood the matchup, understood the situation, and he's been running forward with it. Machete over to the Qatar, is falling there, gets the three-piece, but Godly immediately swinging back onto him. Yeah, as soon as he caught through, got through with that dodge, not falling for the follow-up. He's, oh, wait a minute. I actually still, just not much he can do off of that. That's the problem, like, at, even though you get quick damage with Katars, you don't really have access to those true strings you need to get that consistent KO damage. And Godly's just taking advantage of that so far. Godly, really just having this one. Goes for the optimal, and Godly with the punish, the recovery, and Machete is going down. Read that jump immediately. You dodged about three times in a row, the, uh, excuse me, no, you dodged about two times in a row last time. I know you're gonna be looking a little scared here. Also in that second stock, you swung a bunch out of disadvantage, so you're probably gonna wanna jump. I'm up a stock, there's no reason not to go for this recovery right here. Godly perfectly executed, especially after the fact that he tried to commit with the GC there to get some damage. You're scared at that spot, and Godly recognized that immediately. Look at the damage difference there too. It, I, I, I agree with you on the fact that I don't think the Surrey should have showed up at the end. Like, I get it in a nutshell, but it, it just wasn't enough to really overwhelm Godly, I think, the way that Machete was looking for. Uh, there's so much I want to say, but I, I'll, I'll condense it down to that game three looked like, or game four, it looked like panic from Machete. It did. He was throwing out panic nares on approaches, just hoping something will hit, as opposed to just being like, okay, this is the actual counter. It's like, I'm just, I'm going to hope that a Surrey works. I'm going to mm -hmm. hope that Brawl Haven is fast enough. I'm going to hope that the Qatar nair will work out. And unfortunately, it just, it wasn't enough. And uh, just like that, Machete is going down. Godly continuing on in the upper side, the first one into the top eight of this. Yeah, small quick lesson for everybody. Okay, you see these, you see the attack lines on here? Don't mash them. At a no. disadvantage every time you're trying to land, especially when you have somebody with access to axe. So don't press the don't press the big button that you think is gonna work every time you want to get out. I know we wanna we all wanna press it. We don't wanna actually play defense, but it's not like Machete wasn't playing good defense. It's just that Godly was just seeing through it. Yeah. Um, I think against many other people in those positions, Godly uh, Machete probably adapts, but I think Godly was just that counter pick to Rayman worked out so well. I was kind of surprised by it because like the axe made sense, but the gauntlets were a little confusing to me at first with the matchups. It did not matter. Yeah. It, it was it was interesting in terms of like raw weapon matchups is it was like okay i'm not sure how this is going to work out but once you started seeing him get those hits he was so good at just finding those side light recoveries consistently to get those big hits get those knockouts and it just worked out for him godly was able to run away with it and he's uh he's continuing on absolutely and now we're going to be going into the situation all right so i'll just talk about not pressing buttons <laughs> we're, we got hazer delta coming up next year with the taros this is the winner of the lcq for bcx for eu so this is somebody who's coming in to try and make a statement but i don't We've made too far past the early rounds in BCX, if I remember correctly. But this is going to be big boys scrapping it out. We got yeah. we got the the potential of Ogrim slash Thor coming through with Coco versus uh, the uh, the Taros. Coco did knock the Ninja into losers. 
I don't even know where to guess on this one, actually. How are I, you feeling about it? <laughs> I'm so uh, surprised to see uh, all these names here, right? Like, again, just, like, l talking about, like, the, the name power, the high PR players, like, so many of them are, are in the lower bracket early, and now we have, like, Hazer, Delta versus Coco, two strong competitors. We've seen them do very well, but, like, it's just... That this was supposed to be Pavelski versus Swat. Yeah. Like that, that's <laughs> yeah. <what we're laughs> this is a very, very different situation we have here. Like, uh, if anybody was wondering why I didn't talk about it, because there's no set count history between these two. Uh, this is a completely fresh set that's coming up between them. So the first one to get that dub in the set and uh, the life history. But what a ridiculous bracket we have because we were talking before about the history that Pavelski has had and also the, the clip generator for EU, whether it be the person that he took out or himself in the attempt you never know but uh then swata going down who was just on fire at the end of last year yeah. i i thought was going to be one of the king of consistencies going in the beginning but winners just changes everything up and people want to make a statement yeah it, uh, it, it's definitely something different coming into this year of course the start of esports 2022 uh so uh, what a way to start. We've got Coco versus Hazer Delta. No surprises on the character picks, right? We've got the Terrace, we've got the Thor. Mm -hmm. These have kind of been their namesakes since they started blowing up on the scene. Yeah, and with the like with access to the or being able to get decent whip punishes there on the Taros when they decide to go a little bit too heavy because we know Taros is not the fastest. That does not mean we don't have to nerf him, but still, uh, having access to quick, easy punish game on Taros could work, except for the fact that Hazer Delta has very big damage anytime he does get in. And already stomping on the toes of the god himself. It's going to be a whole lot of that throughout the set. We're going to see some big hitting characters right now. High defense on the Thor, high strength on the Taros and Hazer Delta opting not to go for the hammer v hammer despite the fact that honestly it was looking pretty decent for him. Yeah and here on Demon so we're gonna see a whole lot of close calls potentially on KOs if they nice. decide to reach but that is an incredible attempt Touched. there off stage does not get he does get the touch at the end that was an incredible attempt though from Coco. Yeah I really like the way that he punished that one uh ended up getting the uh the recovery there and just couldn't quite conclude the stock but still good threats put out onto Hazer Delta. Ooh, I like the attempt, knowing immediately that he's going to try and get out of disadvantage, try and dodge right off the bat. But Coco does get the jump read there, going for the weapon. Now do you control the ledge, trying to catch him on the side? I'm really liking the start here, and there's Stomp there. Not enough yet, though. Yeah, just rotating through the weapons, trying to deny. Bait out with the weapon toss. Hazer Delta picks up the hammer and will punish, but who's going to get this initial stock? This is so ridiculous. I think this is one of those matchups where first stock matters so much because every single hit afterwards just is such a pain. But it's going to be the Sarah that takes it off to the side. Coco does get it. You need a weapon starf and keep it as long as possible before Hazer gets back to Axis, whether it be Axe or the Hammer. All right, he's got the Axe in hand. Has yet to throw out like a D Sig or any sort of like big swing to try to take this one out. But Coco with the double Whoa. end light and follows up with extra, Whoa. continues it. His orb is popping off onto Hazer Delta, almost has him in the red. And, but, uh, okay, still an okay off the side here. You talk about the survivability of Thor. Does nice. try to go for the ground pot to get back in. It does end up getting called out for it from Hazer. He's trying to see if he'd go low for it first. But Coco. That orb, we were wondering if that was going to put in work at the beginning. It is so far doing exactly that. Yeah, really big orb play coming out from Coco. Got the double end light and just converted that into so much extra. Oh my goodness. So now, th this is kind of, this has been shifting quick though. Hazer Delta put him in a spot where th nobody wants to be directly above Taros. Uh, it's been working well, but now you got to watch out for this edge guard. There it is. He's going to get him on his way back in. He caught the immediate dodge. Duke, how are you, wh what is it about Coco's play so far that's just been so solid in keeping Hazer in these uncomfortable spots? He's so quick on that dodge punish, right? Like he, he'll get one dodge read, and again, he, he just converts it into three, four hits immediately, just collapsing onto Hazer Delta. He's just got to be careful about how he's dodging out of basically everything Coco throws out. Yeah, we see finally one big anti-air sig there to try and catch him on his landing, but Coco not falling for it. Granted, you're in Sarah range at this point, so you need to fight in center stage. Run and hide as quickly as possible, but Coco just likes the scrap. Yeah, he's, he's just keeping that pressure going, dodges through the end sig. Hazer finds the side air, but it's going to take a lot. Hazer has not really had the momentum. He's been able to trade back and forth, but Coco's had so much momentum play. Now, luckily for Hazer, one thing you could always be happy with is a Taros on last stock, because no matter what, you're going to find the KO relatively early as long as you get these neutral wins, which he's starting to do, getting him slowly up there. It's going to be harder to get the KO on Thor, but Coco can't get... All right. Oh, never mind. Decides to come into the... Uh, stay with the hammer instead of going to the orb. 
Yeah, I mean, side airs could clean this up pretty quick. He knows it. All he needs is a stomp side air. A Nair almost does it. Hazer Delta trying to find a landing here. He does get back down onto the ground, but he needs to find a hit. And Coco gets in down light side air, and he's going to take game number one. Everybody's favorite two piece combo. Stomp Sarah coming through. You were uh, diluting to it, and it's just all you need is that big whip punish. The, yeah. the, the thing with Taros is that he's got to commit at some point. And no matter what, you could burst range that and get that as long as you have good neutral game and good spacing, which is exactly what you see it right here. Just played just within range. Baited the idea that he might jump because he just slid in and backed out while keeping grounded position in center stage. So if you do happen to get caught from Hazer reading that, you're only getting sent to just about the ledge. It's not too bad of a punish. Three, and two, great one, plays come out. And now we're going to uh, Crystal Temple for game number two. Hazer Delta, of course, sticking with the Taros. I, I don't I don't know too much of the character pools, but I don't feel like they have the biggest character pools. I've, uh, from what I've seen, I've only really seen the Taros out of Hazer. So it kind of just like, not so much a one-trick pony, just like a character specialist in that regard with the Taros. And I, I think that the switch up here helps in terms of- Punish? Oh, wait, wait. Okay, okay gets back in. Uh, I think he's trying to just find different landing options away from the orb here with these platforms. Yeah, I like the idea of that end sig just a moment ago because, oh man, oh, oh so many nairs. three, four nairs. <laughs> what he's, landing options? He's hitting so many nairs. Uh, there are no landing options at all. I am a liar. I'm sorry. Coco just keeping him stuck in the air. Just complete control from Coco. He's so good on this orb. Oh, snap. What a bait. What a bait. Oh, my goodness. Coco went repeatedly for uh, run-ups on that point to try and find Sidelight Sarah. So what did he do? He knew Hazer was going to swing out of panic and just punish him so hard, trying to get more damage. Duke, please please calm this man down. He's going crazy. Uh, he's just, he's got everything. He knows it. this is a fully confident Coco against Hazer Delta, and he's just continuing the pressure. Hazer Delta tries to go for uh, just a quick option there with the D-Light recovery, but it's not even enough. The high defense working out for Coco. He Finally, gets a downlight side air, but look at his health bar. So much damage has been done. And if that sick actually connected there too, that would have been mental damage to collapse on that as well. Like Coco is just not taking too much. And you can see Hazrick has been hunting for the opener and can't <laughs> find it. Go ahead, hide in the corner. Where where are you going? Why are you running? You can't get away from me so far. I, I, I don't know what I need to see out of Hazer. I, I think we need to see some really good axe coverage on platform trying to get some damage. Okay. It's not working. That's okay. gonna be easier though. Okay, he needs this. It's a Thor. Okay. Almost a little more. <laughs> he got the touch though. It out. He doesn't have the orb though. Less movement here. Okay, good weapon toss. Finally, Hazer gets it. But look how much effort he had to put into that. Just denying touch after touch. Still asking you shall receive. I was, um, I, needed I, I needed to see something out of Hazer to give me confidence in the, uh, that he can move forward. And that was an absolutely dominant stock there. The one unfortunate thing about that entire sequence is that it started off with just a raw end sig, and that means Hazer's probably going to throw out more of those raw end sigs, mm -hmm. and we know Coco's able to punish those. Yeah, we've seen quite a few times already where Hazer, uh, excuse me, Coco's just been standing in position to bait that, then he's just walked away with it. But it, you could kind of feel like that. You, you could feel like the shift in the air. You could see that Hazer is moving with more bravado. Like it's it's definitely feeling a lot more comfortable here as we see an attempt oh, off the stage, but stage gets reversed. Spike. Hazer Delta is going to go down, and Coco's up 2-0. It's not that surprising. Again, just like looking at the raw PRs, they haven't played against each other, but Coco's in the 20s versus Hazer's in the like around 33, if I'm not mistaken. So it would favor Coco, but I would not have expected it to be this much in favor of Coco. Yeah, and at the end of all this, too, the counter pick that Hazer decided to go to worked against him. He was the one who decided to go here to Crystal Temple, and not enough room there because of that small bit of room you have to work with to get that wall touch just out of range. Coco goes up 2-0, but I really liked a lot of what we saw out of the end. Now, instead of going with Crystal, you have a slightly wider range here, but the same game plan here at Miami Dome. Yeah, utilizing those double platforms will likely uh, try to stay a little bit more aerial, but we saw how well that worked out for Coco, right? Those Nairs being able to juggle Hazer Delta. Mm -hmm. Yeah, true. They had the, the, the game plan of avoiding Orb because you can't beat him on the ground did not work too well, especially in that first stock. Uh, let's oh. see what Hazer could do potentially get back in. I'm loving the way that Coco is just keeping him controlled on the side, though. Coco is looking like he's trying to just take a quick 3-0 and a handshake. I mean, Hazer Delta is definitely on the back foot. A nice side signature. Needs to finish it. 
Back up onto the stage. Coco's living. He's taking damage, though. This is the best Hazer has looked in their matchup so far, but Coco keeps oh. surviving these moments. A good evasive move okay, underneath, but yeah, resources were out. You had to hide under, which made it very obvious that you might try to jump away, and Hazer capitalizing big there. A really well played from Hazer. Didn't take the bait on that. You saw the spot dodge in the air. I'm surprised Hazer didn't go for the end sync. Oh, man. Wow, He's just right back into it. <laughs> no, it. Completely untouched, too. Like, did not get hit after losing that stock. So after the edge guard, just pointing, just pointing out there. That did nothing to me, by the way. I am still I am still doing just fine. Yeah, he threw that Etch-A-Sketch in the washer and made sure <laughs> that that thing was clean. Oh, my goodness. Hazer trying to look just as clean right now. Tied things up a bit. But what can you do to get this orb controlled? Once, Co I, I, once Coco gets one hit, it hasn't been just a quick two-piece string. He's almost always walking away with three and a read. Yeah, he's getting some big extensions off of these orb hits. Hazer Delta, though, got some big swings. Doesn't get the weapon toss. Again, has Coco in the offstage. And this time, opts for the hammer. No, he's going back to the axe. I thought he would have stuck with the hammer for sure for the D-Light side air potential. Yeah, I feel like it was just a momentary thing of like, I don't feel like I can anti-air him quick enough here, so let me make sure I don't let Coco get access to a weapon. That might have just been like one of those really fast adjustments, which he's doing incredibly oh, well so far. Just misses out and Coco finally gets access to a weapon, but deep in the red before he did. Yeah, you can definitely tell with this game that Hazer's Delta, uh, Hazer Delta's game plan has definitely been try to deny weapons as much as he can. He's going to get the scoop up, his opportunity to decide what weapon he wants, and will likely juggle to try to delay this next weapon spot. Yeah, if we could see another similar situation to what happened last time, if we could keep Coco unarmed for as long as possible, uh, it's not going to happen, but it worked so well previously. I think the main thing is just keep him away from Orb, because yeah. the hammer's been good, but it has not been nearly as good as the Orb so far. It's definitely Orb for the damage build, maybe get the KO with the recovery read, but predominantly Orb for the damage build, Hammer for the KO. And both of them trying to stomp on each other's toes, trying to send a message early on, but like, Hazer has a pretty solid lead right now. Coco did do a really good job that first stock not getting hit to get back in, and I think that's what, he's trying to go with the same plan here, which could potentially happen here if he could get a good edge guard. No, just lets him oh. back on and just dodges by that. Great dodge from Hazer, but immediately the recovery from Coco. He's looking to clean up this stock quick. Hazer Delta is trying to get that extra credit down sick, not going to connect. That was so close. And that's all, that was also frames off of a stop stare over on the right hand side, too. So oh. Hazer does end up getting KO'd, though. Last stock here. Currently, Coco up two games. Hazer fighting for his life to hold on to winner's side of this bracket. He needs to stay on this upper side of things. Just continue. The, uh, the upsets that he can get, but right now Coco's looking to shut him down. Ensig thrown out raw, and Coco's got the punish. Yeah, I think it's one of those, but like, I gotta pull out a last trick option here at the end. Does have a good position, but does get reversed there from the stair. Coco getting back on, looking for a read. Doesn't get anything afterwards. And Hazer Delta keeps swinging for the fences. Back to the hammer. Coco not quite in KO Ooh. percent, but it's enough. They were far enough to the right. The D-Light side air does it. He's on the board. He is cooking some ramen indeed here on Miami Dome. Does find himself the stop there that he needed at the end. And Hazard Delta had really good control of the early game. It's just that Coco was able to shut down most of those leads quickly. But there in game number three, we saw Hazard Delta able to shut down, stop the bleeding, uh, and get back into the game. I love it. I don't really want to see three L's. We talked about it before. Yeah. We get to go into game four here. No character swaps. I don't think there should be one at all. They're, they've been piloting both these characters extremely well. The big thing I want from Hazer Delta is to stop throwing out these n sigs <laughs> raw. He's done so many hammer n sigs on the corner, and it works great against many an opponent, but Coco, again, he knows exactly what you want to do, and he's been able to shut it down. Other than that, some good defense from Hazer Delta, and I think we could see this going to game five. I think Hazer just needs to believe hard enough. Yeah. He just needs to believe a little he's bit harder believe. that it's going to hit. But like, I think Coco just believes harder that my defense is better than you. So I don't, I'm not going to fall for that. And that is big whip punish opportunities Ooh. because that just leaves free open times to get in. No, but Hazer Delta getting some great damage built up. Backed away a little bit of indecision here from Hazer Delta, but he finds the side air, and Hazer Delta is suddenly looking really good. We've got the potential for a game number five. I love it, what we saw. Like, he went for the initial stare, and then knew that Coco was going to be scared. So he just kind of jumped with them, stayed directly in front, didn't press a single button. And as soon as you realize, oh, you are stuck in the corner now, you might have to swing, close it out once again. Ha the Hazer had really good stage presence there, where most people would probably panic in that spot to try and keep him back off stage. 
Light down light coming out from Coco. Going in for, again, those big orb strings, but he's not finding the extensions that we saw earlier. And suddenly, Hazer Delta getting more and more. He's getting so much damage built up. The raw end sig works out for him. He's now three stocks up over Coco. With nine other times, but when it finally hits, you look like a genius, and he gets the KO. Now, for this match, this is not looking very good for Coco to move out of this, potentially with a 3-1. What is the difference? What are you seeing out of Hazer that looks so much better here in game four? He's doing so such a good job of maintaining the pressure. It's He's not falling for all of those big orb strings. And honestly, Coco hasn't had a lot of opportunities to play the orb game. This might be one of his first ones as he gets the side light side air. If he finishes off this stock, we could see him clean up another one, but he needs to get this one first. Yeah, here you go. Just exactly. Don't oh. get too committed. Oh, well. They're working now. <laughs> Ground pound again. Yeah, he is. he's hitting those N sigs. And that's going to be a three stock for Hazer Delta. What a reversal. Wow, um, I don't. Wow is the only word I have. Like yeah. <laughs> this, the, the 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 dominant play we saw early on from Coco, and then going into that game four, you could have fooled me that those first games went the way they did. Uh, going into game five, number uh, right here, they picked too quickly. I think I saw Mammoth. Yeah, yep. we're gonna go back to Mammoth. Mammoth. Um, I don't know who to pick. That game four looks so dominant, but I think Coco has been playing so well that he's going to adapt here and already started things off getting first access and trying to get the bait on the weapon spawn, but does not get it. Let's see if this orb can actually, like, awaken back up here in game number five. This is definitely the, uh, the best potential start for Coco, getting that orb early so that he can try to get those swings. But man, the juggles from Hazer Delta, he's suddenly looking so good. Yeah, you may not have, like, big consistent strings but the oh, the reads over and over again are going to annoy coco over time does get the follow-up gets the uh, gets the satellite into sarah keeping that damage on like we need to see a big read coming in from coco i i need to see a dominant stock like uh, it's just hazer has been with punishing better than coco so far in the last two games yeah i mean the, the dominant stock of course will give him a lot of momentum in the game but more importantly it'll give him that emotional momentum mm -hmm. coco right now is behind in the emotional battle hazer delta looking so good but throws away the weapon he's going for the denial throws away the axe again doesn't Ooh. hit the side air coco's got the opportunity to pick up a weapon spawn but it spawns in favor of hazer wow wow when, when, oh, when you when you needed it most God was there. They tried to go and get the weapon and just could not get it. Mjolnir needed to show up, but does finally get the K off the top. I am very surprised that Coco's the one who got the first stock out of this, but that is huge for, like you said, the emotional department, which is now shattered once again <laughs> because the emergency glass break of getting access to Hammer. He got a momentary sigh of relief, but immediately, Hazer Delta, he's got so much weapon advantage now because he spawned in second, and Coco again has to try to find the weapon spawn and hazer's just covering it i believe it was game three on miami dome where we saw hazer had an incredible weapon star that showed a real weakness in coco unarmed and that has kind of been shining through here in this game five as well yeah that's definitely been like like that's where he made that mental swap going for a lot more of the weapon denials we're seeing a lot more weapon tosses to try to deny coco off to the weapon toss up maybe just a bait on the hazer delta but if hazer delta gets those uh, those weapon spawns in his favor he he can run away with this yeah it's evil. that's pretty much oh. like just the key to victory right now but does get access to the orb has him controlled on the right hand side however does get back to the axe i like the immediate retreat from coco not trying to box with him felt like it was a little bit too uncomfortable there but does have him directly on the platform to get those juggles nice two piece for coco suddenly starting to build a little bit of momentum hazer delta it's been a while since anyone's gotten a big neutral win like they've gotten taps here and there but coco's starting to get more side light side air puts hazer delta off stage gets the turnaround yeah see if we can close it out here on the oh! side there we go he's got the end sig not enough. Not enough to get that touch you were talking about. It took a while for that neutral win. And this this game actually slowed down quite a bit because this is a, this is getting knocked into Lower's territory. So both of them try not to commit too much. But that's where Taro shines. When you're the one who's trying, like, all you need is quick hits. Taro's is going to get way more out of that by comparison. Game five situation. The pressure has mounted onto Coco. He's on his potential winner's stock here. And Hazer Delta. Might be able to get another upset. He's already adding up more, getting that extra credit. Got a two-piece. Yeah, don't let it be you. Oh, don't snap. let the reverse 3-0 oh, happen. Hazer chasing him down, trying to get a dodge read there with the sick, but does not get it. The Hazer Delta has just been going to town up a stock right now, so you can afford to go deep off stage. 
He's just feeling so confident, getting hit after hit. Again, the two-piece onto Coco. Stomp, scoop up, and Hazer Delta closes it out. Three, two over Coco. The reverse three games in a row. Amazing, incredible, solid play from Hazer Delta from the first two games. You could have absolutely tricked me into believing that Coco was playing so dominant in those first two games, but it is about the long game. You have five games to play. Yep. You have to keep your mentality in check. And once Hazer finally found out the weakness for one, how to keep him weapon start, but two, how to properly avoid that pressure from Orb. That made such a difference there. And just also, the punish game, the landings yeah. just over and over again. It was really well done from Hazer Delta. And that's one of the reasons why I love a character specialist, right? Like both of them being character specialists. You saw no swaps and being able to make those micro adjustments, mm -hmm. those just those tiny things in the play style, right? Being able to hit those neutral sigs more consistency. I, I, I know I hated it. I know I said I didn't <laughs> want to see him, but the fact that he was starting to hit it more consistently, I was like, all right, you know what? It's working. You figured out the timing. You get to run with that ball now. And so you love to see those those micro adjustments. Hazer Delta going on uh, in the bracket. Yeah, moving forward in an incredibly stacked bracket at that and putting Coco down there in lowers who already put Ninja in there earlier. So even though he took the L in the reverse 3-0, a lot of people are not going to be very happy to be running into Coco down there. But Hazer Delta has things to prove. We talked about it before, the LCQ winner, but didn't really get too much after that. But here starting off in winners, trying to make a statement. Yeah, I mean, he's already upsetting the bracket, right? Coming in PR number 33. Uh, generally, PR is a good estimate of what you're expected to place in a tournament. And so coming in here, he's got a guaranteed top uh, six, I think, as far as finish goes. I don't remember the, uh, the math exactly. But man, uh, really good run for Hazer Delta. But that's going to do it for now as far as our block for the EU Winter Championship. We still got a whole lot more action. You can get interacted with us over at Twitter, hashtag BH Esports. You can watch more on Twitch at uh, twitch.tv slash pro Brahala. Any, uh, any final words, Ajax, before we close out? Not much. It's just been an incredible tournament so far. It's winners and everybody is coming out here swinging early on. I am hoping that my predictions hold up because <laughs> we I need Swatter to continue to make the run through, but I can't wait to see a set like Godly versus Simple later, potentially, if Simple does take it over Akno. A lot more still to go. Yeah, definitely a lot more Brawlhalla action. You don't want to miss it. Stay in your seat. Make sure you got that other tab open for Pro Brawlhalla. But for now, we're going to take a short little break. And when we come back, we'll be bringing you more EU Winter Championship singles action. Stick around.
Hello and welcome back to the 2022 Winter Championship. Today we've got EU and we're continuing with the top 12. It's been a wild morning. We've seen some upsets. Things, things are going crazy today. Some stuff that we haven't expected at all. We're seeing some new faces. I think Europe is hungry. Rain, how are the predictions going? Um, they're going. I think that's <laughs> definitely the best explanation to put in this. And, you know, again, it's kind of the, the first tournament of the entire 1v1 season that we've had thus far. And a big thing that obviously coming off the most previous set that is definitely shaking things up oh, is amazing. Hazard Delta. Amazing. You know what I'm saying? LCQ yeah. winner, right, but then came into BCX, lost the very first round. Yeah. But now coming into the first 1v1, we're already seeing, you know, Hazer move on into, I believe, into the top 12, top 8 yeah. realm right now, which is already much better than what we saw in BCX. Worth mentioning, it was a reverse. Yeah. He was down 0-2 yeah. on that and then just came back and took it. I mean, it was a close match throughout. Yeah. So, did you have him up there, top 5, top 10 maybe? <laughs> Um, no, I, 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 I will, I will proudly say no, I did not. Yeah. And I will own my L. I will own my L. So shout out to Hazer Delta for proving everyone wrong and coming in here, not only with the momentum ending in LCQ, but putting in the work during the off season to then come out and absolutely pop off within this tournament thus far as well. So I'm super excited with what we do have coming up for the rest of our match today. Yeah. Because obviously now rotating into this winter side top 12, this is where stuff really starts to get hot and heavy. This is where you have definitely names that are much more familiar to not right. only, you know, yourselves, but the general mm. community too. And a lot of grudges per se for people who have fought mm -hmm. multiple times against each other. So there's all sorts of different action that does develop. You know, it is that. worth mentioning though, those names that we're talking about, the big ones, Akno, Pavelski, a lot of them have been sent to losers and yeah. you know, they've got to prove it, right? Yep. You take an L early on and you've got to fight back in a double elimination. Yep, absolutely. So enough of all that though, talking about the past, it's time for us to move on to the future. And it yeah. does look like match number one is underway for our first best of five for the day. We have Simple facing off against Blaze. Ooh. Now, if you look at the stat line here, sir, I mean, PR3, PR8, what are your expectations heading in this matchup? Uh, I mean, historically, we see 5-2 to Simple as well. PR is a lot higher. And remember, Simple has got the experience in tournament as well. He's got a lot more gold, a lot more silver to Blaze's zero. Now, Blaze has placed, he's got the bronze, but again, you know, Simple's coming in with a lot more experience. Mm -hmm. He's one of those big names that we were talking about. Yep. So it's going to be tough for him, but honestly, Blaze has been doing great. Yeah. And I think he's good. he can he can do it. Yeah. Yeah. It's possible. I, is it Blaze's time? Man, honestly, this weekend, all my predictions out the window. I think anything's possible <laughs> at this point. You know. <laughs> I absolutely love it. Yeah. Obviously, Blaze being so well known for you know their two v two game of course, play of course, throughout yeah. all of Europe, being one of the greatest two v two players of all time exactly. in EU. Yeah, definitely. But that one v one, you know, we just saw at PR eight. That's still extremely good. Yeah. But just 
a little bit more of a hurdle that if Blaze can just get up over that, right. it's going to lead to such an amazing future for them in this European scene as well. So Definitely. I'm very excited. Let's see how hungry Blaze is as we now move on into match number one. Simple going against Blaze. Simple on the Bodvar and Blaze pulling out the Mordex. Interesting pick right there. Yeah. I like that. Now Simple, of course, has been on that Bodvar for a while. So we're expecting to see some really good sword play there. Obviously the hammer as well. Blaze, I want to see what he does. I think he's going to lean towards the gauntlets early on. Yeah, definitely for sure. Um, a big thing that we're going to be noticing too is, you know, what is Simple's strategy kind of going into this? Obviously we see Simple utilizing the hammer in the very beginning here, but will Simple be able to find a way to keep Blaze out of the comfort zone? Because that's a big thing with Mordex. Obviously with Scythe and with Gauntlets, it's all about hitting the reeds and right. then punishing your opponent over and over and over again. So yeah, keep that stage control, keep that dominance. Yep. But Simple coming out real strong. He's got that sword and he's showing the stage oh. control. Beautiful down light. Down nice. Down right there. Nice, 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 nice. So Simple getting first stock here. Uh, definitely seeing a solid rotation between both the sword and the hammer so far. But Blaze now finally getting back in the scythe. And I think this is definitely what's going to decide if this matchup, you know, is going to give Blaze a chance to really compete here. Right. Or if this might just be a bit of a, a runaway train for Simple. Right. So you want to see Blaze on that scythe a yes. little more. Yes. Hold on to it. Kind of build up those strings. But will Simple give him the space to do that? I don't think so. No, because Simple knows, right? So Scythe is one of those weapons that's all about directional inputs. So yeah. what you can do with Scythe is you can grab your opponent and throw him off edge like that. Nice recovery oh, though on the edge guard. Hold on, hold on. Mm. Ah, GCD light, kick him out of the screen. Beautiful. Down goes Simple, but still a huge damage advantage for Simple in this game, number one in our best of five. Right, Blaze is just almost in the red right now. So, you know, even though the stocks are even, Simple has got a couple big side airs before he's He's uh, equalized it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I feel it, man. And it, it's something about Blaze right now is, is Blaze is definitely seeming, like, look at that right there, missing the mm -hmm. down here on the wrong input. We're right. definitely seeing a little bit of nerves here, which is not something I expect for Blaze, who's played at a very high level for a very long time here. But, you know, it's 1v1s. It is the first major 1v1 tournament of the entire season for Brawl right. Esports. So, you know, you got to shake off those jitters. But I think we're definitely going to see Blaze start to come more alive here. It's all about that experience, Rain, right? Simple has a little more top experience yeah. when it comes to tournaments. And I think that may be what you're seeing right now. Nice air, great rotation. Okay, does Simple get the edge guard though? Looking for it. Okay, good recovery. Still not enough to confirm the KO though over here on Small Mammoth Fortress. Okay, okay, this is actually so big for Blaze. And Simple is not able to confirm the KO. Still, the stair doesn't either. Oh my gosh. Okay, sir, Blaze has to find a way to not lose the stock, so. <laughs> Caster's uh, cursed. Yep, so I'm so sorry. But you know, just going back to what you were saying, Rain, you know, Blaze has, he cannot afford to drop anything right yeah. now. Because when you're up against someone like Simple, he is gonna punish you regardless of what it is. Yep. And you just cannot afford, especially a stock down. Yeah. And, you know, Blaze has definitely made a pretty good comeback here, but, you know, Blaze just has to find a way to confirm this guy. Oh my gosh, mm. the double sidelight. See, now Blaze, you can tell Blaze is like, wait, uh, I don't know if I want to engage. I don't know what Simple's going to do. And that's yeah. what makes Simple so good. I mean, he's got to keep up the confidence right now. That's what it's about. He's playing a little too carefully, and he's got to stick with that aggressive play right now. Take control. Just constant mix-ups. Constant mix-ups. Blaze has no opportunity to find out what Simple's going to do. Nice stomp side air. a massive stomp side air. Ooh, unable to connect off stage. Big nair. Wow. Nice big nair to send him. Game one to Simple. And if you look at just the damage difference alone with that yeah. matchup, I mean, that was... I, that was pretty much domination, mm -hmm. straight yeah. up, man. I mean, Simple simple Ooh. had stage control, Simple had the damage advantage the entire time, and Simple felt comfortable not only on the sword, but also the hammer. I think this one's on me, Rain. I think I hit him with the caster's curse. Oh, I yeah. said he's got it, but you know what? I still think he does. Game one, right? We're playing best of fives right now. He's got potentially four more games to claw it back. Yeah. Blaze can do it. We've seen it before in tournament. We've seen how he plays. But as we saw near the end of that last match, it does seem like he's losing a little bit of confidence. Yep. We need to see more of that, yep. right? He needs to hold it, keep that mental, and start keeping that pressure on, not get punished. And even, even look at this right there, 209 damage on unarmed, yeah. just for wow. simple. He literally did more damage unarmed than he did with hammer. Yeah. That is that is insane, that is I insane. I don't, I don't know what that says about his unarmed do. or his hammer. <laughs> 
Mm. All right, we're going on to small great hall, and we are getting the legend swap now. Mm -hmm. Blaze will now be on the Sidra, which will give the utilization of both cannon right. and the sword. So I guess, sirs, if you are Blaze here, right, you just used a legend Ooh. that uses gauntlets and scythe. Why yeah. are you immediately switching now to Sidra know. that uses, you know, sword and cannon? You know, he just, I, I think a lot of it is, it's a decent counter pick. He's, we know Blaze is confident on that cannon. The sword is going to play well against Bodvar as well, yep. just a little bit. But a lot of it could also be switching it up, not giving Simple the reads anymore. Yeah, okay, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. I get that. Trying to, basically, what you're saying is Blaze is trying to mix things up yeah. on Simple to try yeah. to, like, find a weakness to exploit. But, Rain, yeah. I, I feel like it's just a little too early, right? Game two, yeah. is this when you want to switch your character? Because you want to be able to get in the groove as well oh. against your opponent. Big hits coming out there from Blaze. Great little combo two piece. Oh, and ooh, man, he's evening just, up the damage. That one hurts so much too. I know, and right? Anytime a cannonball comes out from either Sidra or Thatch and it hits you, it just <sighs> infuriates you instantaneously, oh, no matter what the situation is. And may I be. always just hear in the background someone's like, you thought. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, ooh, oh. nice little punish. Another one doesn't connect. Simple kind of letting him wow. back on stage here. I cannot believe Simple did not punish that. That, yeah. was, that was an easy yeah. KO confirmed there. But uh, Blaze definitely putting up a much better fight in this matchup here. And we are seeing a lot more consistency, at least, from Blaze's Ooh, opportunities. Nice clean but little side air. That was you know, I think these platforms are going to play to his yeah. advantage, too, yeah. right now. It's just a big thing to note. Watch Simple's rotation, mm -hmm. right? Always staying in the middle, but then we'll, if, if you're going to see Simple rotate to the right, it's always with a Nair or it's with a Sayer every single time, no matter what. Right. And Good Simple point. understands that, okay, Blaze has not shown any confidence, really, with unarmed, so Blaze right. is going to go for that weapon. And then every time Blaze does that, Simple gets a punish. Punishing but, with those neutral wow. yeah. Wow. I mean, Blaze is in this. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. look like it, but... <laughs> it, I mean, he's holding is. on. He's holding on. I think it's been a great pick. I take back what I said earlier. It's uh, <laughs> it's looking good so far, and I want to see that stage control. Yeah. Right? We see he's taking it back from Simple. Yeah. Right? Simple was maintaining the center presence in the stage, but now Blaze has taken over, forcing Simple to the outside of the map. Absolutely. That's going to play to an advantage with the cannon. Yeah. Huge. Huge. So a little bit of sword on sword action right now. Those Simple still winning most of these neutral engagements now, rotating onto the hammer. Goes for the scoop. Ooh, ground pound. Connect. Right. I cannot believe Sarah just connected mm. the two, though. Oh, Blaze. Okay, this is what Blaze has done really well. Blaze kind of just gets beat up a ton and yeah. then comes alive at the very end of the stop. Right, waiting for the right moment. Yeah. I feel like he's spacing great right now with Cannon, and then he's just punishing properly, which is what was happening to him in the first game. Yeah, absolutely. Looking for it. Definitely. Uh, you can just tell Simple is just trying to just... Right. So calm, cool, and collect to finish off the stock in Ooh. there. Oh, that was nasty. Oh, nasty. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. And I mean, if you're simple right now, you have no reason not to be calm, cool, yeah. and collected. Yeah. You're up a game. You're a little bit the favorite right now. You know, Blaze is doing great. But if you stay cool, it's possible you've got this match, right? Yeah, for no sure. No need to panic right now for simple. For sure. But Blaze has got to prove himself. Okay, and something I definitely want to see, I want to see Blaze start using the end sig a lot, because you're going to notice that Simple is loving to jump a lot and is catching mm. Blaze consistently with these stairs and these, uh-oh, uh-oh. GC so side sig, unable to connect. Oh, oh he makes nice it back. recovery. Patience is a oh, virtue. Oh, no punish. Still not the KO, oh my goodness, this map is massive. Over here on the gray, oh. And there it is, the recovery, and it's even. It is even, it is even, but does Blaze have what it takes? I'm, I'm just, I'm not sold yet, sirs. I'm I think he sold. does. I think he does rain, and I don't think you're giving him enough credit. I mean, look at his play right now. He's kept it neck and neck That's after true. taking a pretty big loss in the first That's game. That's true. You know, I mean, if anything, that shows he's got some great mental right now. He's keeping that confidence, exactly what we wanted to see. It is only game two. Hopefully, he'll build it up and continue over the series. Yeah, they're neck and neck. They're, oh, big D-Light into recovery, then following up with the Nair. Now, that is a huge amount of damage input. And something that was, you know, very noticeable in the last matchup, too, is that Simple's damage per engagement was almost double blazes. Yeah. And that's something that we're seeing is a huge difference in this matchup once again in this game. Ooh, big hit with uh -oh. the hammer. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. You don't want to be in this situation for Blaze yeah, right now. Yeah, definitely. The counter. Wait. Oh, wait, wait. Oh, step. oh not unable to get Ooh. the scoop. Big recovery, it's not though. enough. Oh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. They're waiting for it. Both players know. They're like, okay, whoever it's makes just a mistake. <laughs> whoever makes a mistake is definitely gonna nice lose this matchup. Throw. Oh, beautiful there. Alright, the edge guard. D-Sig. D-Sig. 
Anchor up? Maybe? No? Does it need oh, it? Oh, it's wow. enough to send. Wow. Blaze taking game two. Dude. Beautiful. And there it is. <laughs> All you had to do was believe, right? You're right. All you had to you're do right. was believe. If you're a Blaze fan, you're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome. I finally believed. That was insane. I mean, yeah. if you just look at simple throughout all this matchup, something that I'm loving about Blaze right there is that Blaze wasn't afraid to mix it up. Look at this very last play here. Going for the rotation out of the area for the Sayer, but then falling back into the hitbox region to where then the recovery would confirm the KO. And knowing it would confirm the KO there, because if that doesn't KO there, then you have Simple back on stage, yeah. and that could literally end And we're seeing the stats look a lot more even this game, too. Yeah. I yeah. also want to point out, Blaze was doing great on punishing Simple's floating play style, right? Yep, Every time yep. he was jumping, he's getting punished with that nair. He's getting punished with the down air if he's below. Simple was kind of taking a lot of damage yep. just on that alone. So I want to see Blaze continue with that. This map is going to be a little bit different because of this moving soft platform, but I think he can still maintain it if possible. Now, if he sticks with that sword, Simple's got a sword too, and I think Simple might edge him out. Ooh. Okay, this is so big right now. If Blaze could just hold his edge guard, oh. goes for the desync, but Simple is like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Not in I my house. Played against Sidra a little too much. Yeah. I know how deadly that can be. And just like that, see, that's just, that's the crazy thing about players that are this good. If you go for something that's so risky like that, but so rewarding, if you fail, it literally turns the tides. And just yeah. like this now, Simple has literally taken over and got the damage oh, advantage. Oh, what a and read. the first KO. Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> Read that signature choice by Blaze and then just sent him down to his second stock. Rain, you know, I want to see more of Blaze on the cannon. I think if he's going to pick up that sword and you're going to mirror match Simple with the sword, yeah. I think Blaze is going to come out a little bit lesser in that matchup. Oh, I mean, most definitely. I mean, Simple has just been an absolute animal with sword yeah. since the beginning of time, I'd say. <laughs> so, I mean, it's definitely going to be very hard to compete in that aspect. But again, Simple is so good at not losing their stocks. Nice weapon throw. That's, I mean, that's just, that's the biggest thing for Simple. Simple right. refuses to lose that stock no matter what until you finally are able to catch a true KO confirm option. Right. It's, it's what makes him a great twos player as well. Yep. Oh. Unable to connect there. Simple and really now spacing around this cannon. I think it's frustrating Blaze just a little bit, yep. which is forcing him to pick up that sword. And then the weapon throws are starting to come out from Simple too. Like, see, this is what makes Simple so smart is that Simple knows that every bit of damage that Simple gets right now is just mm -hmm. complete extra credit. Right. So Simple just keeps rotating and will either weapon throw and then go into an unarmed and then move off there. Blaze, though, does finally get the stock, though, with that end light. But here we are once again. Simple you're, has a you're very right, good damage You're advantage. right, Rain. It's, it's just that build it up slowly, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, a lot of players, a lot of playstyles will go for that bigger damage, bigger hits. Simple knows what he's about. He's going to get the small two pieces, the weapon yeah. throws. Build it up, interrupt your movement, blow a dodge out, and then punish you for it. And something that's so interesting, sir, is it, this is now game number three. We have not seen a single signature move come out from Simple yet. Yeah, yeah. Not a single signature move. And it's worked oh, well. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Just as you say it. Wow. A nice little slide. Simple's neutral slide from Simple. Simple's, Simple has to be listening. There's yeah. no way, right? <laughs> we we got to play the lottery. Maybe win, a, maybe win a, some more Mammoth coins. <laughs> Who knows, man? Finally right. get that forearm skin. <laughs> yeah, right, dude. <laughs> I'm fiending. I'm fiending. All right, so here we go. Two to one, game number three. It is a best of five, so no matter what the outcome of this matchup is, we will be moving into the minimum of a game number four. Simple is currently in a very strong lead here. Yeah, Sirs, he's what building is it up take? that damage. What is it going to take for Blaze I don't Blaze know, Ray. Blaze has picked up that cannon, and he is punishing okay, but we're seeing Simple rotate a lot better. Again, bring Whoa. back that stage control we've seen Still from game enough. one. Not enough to send him back wow. to his final stock. Simple oh, makes no. it back on stage. The weapon oh. throw to punish. I thought we were about to get a, a yeah. scoop. A real scoop down oh, to the depths oh. of Valhalla, man. Big weapon throws, and there it is. You know, simple, very nice recovery. Simple just throwing those weapons again and again, just building up the damage. That's so interesting. Not a lot of players do that. They, they usually go for that D-Light in a recovery KO, but what, what Blaze does is Blaze just builds up a ton of damage and then just goes for a read into that falling recovery once again. Right. And we've seen like three or four KOs from that. But Simple does look like they may be able to cut this one out right here right now with a 2-1 lead but blaze is still hanging on here Anything it's close could happen it's close i mean all anyone needs is one big side air right now mainly simple dude blaze, blaze, blaze holding is on going, trying no to rack way. up the Ooh. damage Ooh, oh this sick connecting would have been great for him. oh my gosh simple. no nice tidy little recovery no. taking game three
Dude, that had to be like the most perfect dodge of all time to, yeah. to avoid that D6. If yeah. that would have hit, that would have confirmed the KO. Heartbreaking. Oh, man. Looking at the replays here. Oh, Simple that's pulling out that big too. Sig. And right here. Right, oh, oh, just perfect. Ow. Perfect. That's the difference. Yeah. That's yeah. the difference between that and us. You know, I, I we did see Blaze throw out that Sig a lot a couple times, and mm -hmm. I feel like maybe that played against him on that one. But as we see here, two to seven right now. Simple with two signatures. Connecting one of them, and Blaze with seven. Only hitting one at that point, but wow. the damage numbers are pretty even right now. Wow. And a big thing for Blaze, too, is Blaze is not getting hit in those combos. You see yeah. the average damage per engagement? Mm -hmm. Blaze is actually now up two in that, whereas before, Simple is only at 27. Before the last two games, Simple was averaging around 50 to 55, right? which is huge. Definitely playing better. I want to see him carry on that confidence mm -hmm. in the next couple games, maybe even take it to game five. Yep. So... This is on winner's side, so no matter what the result of this matchup will be, the loser will still have an opportunity right. to make a tournament run in loser's Lorraine, side. Lorraine, that loser's side is tough. Oh, dude, it's There insane. is blood in the water it right is now. It is absolutely. You got Pavelski running through there. I know. You got Swata running through there. Oof, oof, you got Heisen running through there. It is. That is the last place I'd want to be in the entire virtual world of Brawl. <laughs> Hands yeah. down. Man, I think Europe is hungry. This year. Oh! And Beautiful! Oh! Is he gonna make it back? Yes, oh! he does. Deleted the first stock in less than 15 seconds. Simple. Ooh. Ooh. Game four, <laughs> a, in an entire stock down. Well, that's exactly what Blaze that. needed. Yeah. Blaze is back. What did I say, man? They are hungry this year. Dude. I'm expecting great things from this region in 2022. And that was the first time that Blaze finally went for that read with Cannon, mm -hmm. and it worked out. It worked out. So you know, Blaze understands right now, okay, down 2-1. Everything that I've kind of been keeping in my back pocket, I have to pull it out here <laughs> because going to that loser side is is, <laughs> it is right. a death sentence. It right. is an absolute death sentence. you got to play as well, if not better, than you're playing right now. 100%. 100%. But, yeah, this is great from Blaze. I'm seeing a lot more confidence. I'm seeing a lot more assertive behavior. Look, at he's taking stage control. He's answering back very well. And he's nice. kind of working around simple spacing. A great example right there. Ooh. About one more nair should do it. Okay, on the hammer though. Simple is looking oh, for opportunity beautiful to confirm little it. Little piece. Dude, He's building up that damage deficit Dude. slowly. Oh! Do it to him. Nice do it to him. Throw, maybe? Do it to him. Oh, I thought we were gonna get the yeah, end thing, Simple's man. Simple smarter than that. Ah, uh, nice uh, little side air. Tough Both stare. players on tough stare. stock two. All right, Blaze still in a, I mean, pretty much still in the exact same lead, but getting that zero to that KO early on. And then there getting a whole stock lead. Even up, a little break dance. You smell, you smell that, sir? Whoo, I'm smelling the game five. I, I smell it too. Yeah. It smells a little bit like uh, a little bit of rosemary. Yeah, a little bit of garlic. Yeah, a little bit of garlic. A little <laughs> bit of garlic. <laughs> Leftover from yesterday. Maybe. Oh, yeah. This one doesn't stink, though. <laughs> this one smells pretty good. It's fresh. <laughs> it's a fresh game five coming in hot here. All right. It's coming in hot. Can Simple find an opportunity to close this one out and end it all in game for forcing blaze to the forgotten realm of the loser side or is blaze going to continue to clutch up and send this to game five? you know that's what simple wants he wants to close it and in this position it is very tempting to kind of get a little excited and, and get overtaken with it yep. but simple we have seen him keep his calm and cool and that's what i want to see from him if he wants to take this game four absolutely right? he just cannot afford to get too into it and then take some risky moves like that because Blaze is going to punish. Dude, and Blaze, Blaze's reads are so good right now. Just yeah. the ability to backdash, rotating back in the end line. Oh, what a weapon thought over simple. He's going to make it back. Oh, no. That's no. Not okay, this is this is not good. It still seems like Blaze has a very strong advantage. Yeah. But Bodvar in orange can beat anybody. This is true, especially with that hammer. Oh, anyone's game right now. Oh, no. Exhaust Beautiful little recoveries. recoveries, but Blaze Ooh. answers back. That, that was huge. If Blaze did not hit that, Blaze would have just lost this match. Right. But remember, Simple can afford to lose this match right now, being mm -hmm. up a, a game. Blaze, this is it for him. If he wants to stay oh, in winners man. and make that climb to the top a little easier, oh, he's going to want to pick up this match. It's, it's getting a little too it's getting a little too dangerous. Blaze, if you want to move on in winners, you have to clutch up this match in order to force the game oh, five. And there, there you go. It is. A recovery again? I know. And it's just like you said. He doesn't set it up. He just waits for the right moment and gets the pick. No D-Light. Yeah. D-Light does not exist. Doesn't doesn't need it. Doesn't want it. Nope. Hmm. That was crazy. That was crazy. Look at our reactions. <laughs> the best to ever do it, sir. Can you do that? Zero to death KO off of the cannon. And then just Blaze. Just, you know what? You know what, Blaze? What's making Blaze do so well? The spacing and the rotation. Wow. Right. Break those stats on Sarah. That is incredible. Well, so, again, we're seeing a very low signature match right now. Only Blaze 
shooting out one and connecting damage again pretty much even but we see both players are mainly favoring the sword which yeah. is interesting we saw blaze play great with the cannon and he's got a little bit more damage there again i want him to focus on that i don't think the matchup against simple Game sword five. is always going to play in his favor yeah i'm 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 a little intrigued here because now we're in game five. Maybe yeah. Blaze has been holding on to finally going all in with the cannon until this time. Do you think so? Because, well, because if you think about it, Simple really hasn't had an opportunity to even get a feel for Blaze's gameplay besides one zero to death read, okay. right? So Blaze is going to definitely have the opportunity to really start to mix things up, maybe go for a couple side sig, spot dodge, D sig with that cannon, mm -hmm. and even weapon throws into spot dodge for the end legs. There's a whole lot of opportunities with it. I just really hope Blaze does make the most opportunities to pull that off. I also just want to shout out Blaze's ability to pick up on Simple's gameplay mm -hmm. has been so great. And again, this is that benefit of a, a best of five, right? Yep. We saw Blaze lose in the first match. We thought it was gonna, we thought it was looking kind of grim, yep. but he came back and he's been doing great since then. Oh, and, and I that's love all it this. takes. I love Great this. pressure from Simple. You see this right now too, Sirius? I mean, they are just, they, I mean, they're going all in. Yeah, they're sharks. I, they're treating this like this is like the end of their run in their tournament, which it's not. Right, yeah. If, if you lose this, you are still in this tournament, but they understand what awaits them. So everyone right. that's watching right now, you need to understand, both these players, if they have any hope of winning this tournament, really, really, really need to win this match right yeah. now. Listen, you never want to have to go for a loser's run, but yep. especially today. Yep. yep. I mean, that loser's bracket is just savage. It's deadly. Yeah. It's very, very deadly. Okay, Blaze in a situation now where we've seen Blaze struggle both in game one and game two. Initially, where Simple had that, you know, 2 0 lead mm -hmm. in yeah. the very beginning. And this is where Blaze has not been able to confirm the chaos. But again, look at that. No D light. Again, I don't believe recovery. in D light. Do yeah. you? Mm -mm. Me not either. anymore. I never it's heard of it. It's changed the way I look at it. <laughs> <laughs> Play sword, don't use D light. Just rotate and use recovery. There it is. It one works. more time. It apparently works. I like it, Blaze. Yeah, maybe. I mean, look, at both players just dancing around each other, keeping a neck and neck all game. Hey, there's the D-Light. D-Light recovery. Yeah, dude, and it paid off. Yeah. See, Blaze starting to mix up right now. I mean, we see Blaze at a pretty pretty solid advantage now, damage-wise. Oh, oh, and finally the D-Sync connected. Out. Do it, do it, finish it. Oh, oh no. Simple able to make it back. I think he was just a little oh. late on that. Oh, no. And if you're Blaze right now, your mental has to stay strong. Because you just hit a wonderful combo. Right. You almost gave yourself a huge stock advantage within this game five. Now he finished the stock. He still got oh. it. He still got that advantage. But you know what? Leave it up to a player like Simple to delete Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Right? Simple you cannot is so rest. Good. Simple is so good. Anytime we've seen Simple fall somewhat behind in this matchup, yeah. Simple comes back and just begins to dominate. It's, oh, no. Watch the edge guard. Oh, Watch beautiful edge, guard. edge guarding. Is it going to be enough? Can he make it back? <laughs> Barely makes it back. But Simple's got that big oh. hammer punish from Blaze. Oh. And a side air sends My. Simple to his last stock. Dude, what? In winter side, possibly. Dude, I don't know if you saw it there, but Simple held on to that ground pound. If literally Simple would have just held on to that ground pound for like half a millisecond longer, mm -hmm. Simple wins that trade. Yeah. He lets yeah. go in that aspect, and then Blaze able to confirm the KO with the stare. I think this is where that mind oh. games come in, right? Oh, like, you just have to be able to kind of out RPS yep. your uh, your opponent. Yep. All right, so here we go, sir. I Blaze mean, this punishing is, this heavy. Is Simple does not have a weapon, and Blaze is capitalizing on that. Remember, Simple's on his last stock dude, right now. Dude, what, is, what does Simple need to do? I mean, this is basically a whole stock behind, sirs. What do you need to see from Simple here to have an opportunity to bring this Ooh, one back? It's going to be <gasps> tough. We need clean uh -oh. stage control. Blaze is right uh -oh. there. Uh-oh. Is he going to hit that down sig? Uh-oh. Upset season. Oh, not yet. Simple's not going down without a fight. Oh, big one uppercut. It's not enough. Oh, that's going to do Downlight recovery. Oh! Blaze takes the set. Sends Simple down to the loser's bracket. Flexing the flag. Whew. 2v2 hero no more 1v1 yeah. he's here, here to, to stay. prove himself he is here to prove himself and he's doing it man blazes blazes you know trailblazing a path and making a way you know yeah. what i'm saying he's hungry man? he's hungry oh my goodness and you know taking down a, a someone like simple not easy not, not easy, easy at, at all. all i mean i mean some people's predictions had simple winning at all and right. it's still possible for simple to win it yeah. right but just blaze who finally and i think what made the difference that matchup is and you got to give credit where credit's due. Yeah. Blaze did not give up on that D-Sig. No, we not at Blaze all. We saw Blaze use that D-Sig probably seven times. I even called him out on it. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, why do you keep using that D-Sig? Yeah. Oh, serious? The seventh time was the charm, and it finally confirmed Sometimes that's early. all you need. Take a look at the damage difference here. Blaze absolutely dominating this game five. Almost double the damage difference right now. Again, Blaze with most of the signatures. We're seeing a lot less Sig play from both these players, but... They're connecting pretty decently, right? 
What what does that tell us? That tells us these players are playing calm, cool, collected. Yep. And they know exactly how to read and outplay their opponents. Yep. Absolutely. And I'll tell you what, man. Blaze on the Sidra, I love it. Yeah. I was not sold in the yeah. very beginning. But as we saw Blaze start to get more comfortable and really start to get a bit more of a feel in that matchup, we saw right. Blaze really start to come alive. You know, like Blaze, Blaze was in Super Saiyan 1. By the end of that matchup, <laughs> full form. Full, full form. form. Okay. Locked in. So you think we're going to see off. more of that cannon? Dude, I, Blaze cannon run? I'll tell you what. If if there were like, you know, in the, uh, a bit of a mulligan in my predictions, okay. if I could throw Blaze down in my top three, I'd feel pretty good. Where where was Blaze in your uh, in your predictions before then? Uh, Not existed. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'll own it. I'll own it. Hey, same I'll here. Same here. I didn't, see, I didn't see it coming, but I did say just a little bit. Oh, what did you say? He had, he you had say? the possibility of taking the set, and he did. That's true. He did. Credit credit where credit's due. Credit where credit is due. GG's from both players. Now, Simple's got to do a loser's bracket yep. run, and it is spicy down there. It is super spicy. Again, everybody's been talking about it. We just have to reiterate because so much craziness has happened in this right. tournament thus far. You have Pavelski in loser side. You have Swada in yeah. loser side. Yeah. You have Heisen in loser side. They're right. in, in just so, and now you have Simple in loser side. You got one or two of those, it's already dangerous enough. But you get three or four now, it's anybody's it's game. It's insane. You know yeah. what's crazy? Two of those players now, Simple and Pavelski, were in my top three predictions. Yeah, yeah, same here. Same here. <laughs> <laughs> That's insane. That's absolutely crazy. But you know what? As I, as as you know, as as we all like to say here, as long as Sparky is wrong, it's all good. True. Yeah. So True. I'm holding on to that True. right now. I like it. <laughs> I, I absolutely love it. Um, and, you know, that matchup was amazing. And now, you know, if you're thinking, Sirius, you're probably like, man, there's no way any match could be better than that. We get a game five coming in the first set. Ooh, that's what you thought. That's what you thought. Up. It's oh, getting oh, yeah. better. It's getting spicier. Who do we have next? We have the one and the only Akno, who so <clears throat> many people have winning this matchup at PR number one, facing off yep. against Blue. You have PR1 going against PR26, but a big thing to note here, look at that lifetime score. Mm -hmm. If you saw PR1 go against PR26, you're like, dude, Akno has definitely beat this person every time. There's no chance Akno can lose. No. But seven into two, I'm Blue's not been doing math. Great. He's held on, and Blue is an experienced tournament player. Yep. Take a look at his placements. He's on the board pretty consistently. Yep. So we're going to expect some good things from him this year. Although, you know, we saw Akno play already, so we've seen him come out strong. But it wasn't the Akno we were expecting, uh -huh. right? So will Blue be able to take advantage of that in this set? I'll That's what, what I want to know. I'll tell you what. With all the upsets we've seen thus far, anything's possible. I think anything, 100% yeah. anything's possible here. Most definitely. I think it's, right. it's definitely going to come down to which player has the most confidence. In, and I don't know if people were able to see it in the loading screen or not, but Blue was actually rocking the 1v1 Win yeah. a champion yeah, yeah, yeah. for the 2019, title. Mm -hmm. which yes, that's three years ago, but still, you were there, you did it, and you won. Right. So don't sleep on Blue. All right, Blue on the Koji and Akno on the Mordex right now. We see Blue uh, throw away that bow, favoring the sword a little bit. Yeah, Akno I think it's, with the gauntlets. If, if you're going against a really good gauntlets player, bow is bow's really good for creating damage mm -hmm. by utilizing your space. Oh, beautiful oh, game. Oh. Akino just with that ground pound off the stage, turkey, taking oh an early my. stock. We haven't even seen a minute into this game. Akino taking that first stock. Okay. Dude. He's got to put in oh some work. I, I'm, I'm, okay, this one makes Akno so good. Watch Akno's play style immediately change. We saw the ultimate aggro gauntlets in the very beginning. Mm. Oh, oh! Beautiful, my beautiful little piece by Blue right there. That what was such a, a fire combo. But that's, oh no, oh no! If Agno spot dodges right here and gets oh! oh, unable to make it back. Agno wow. down on his second stock. And Rain, what you were talking about earlier cool. is completely correct. And it's more so true in best of five. Yep. You have to adapt. You have to overcome. Right? Yep. You need to be able to read your opponent, see what they're doing, whether it's in a game or a stock, if you want to be successful. Absolutely. Agno, okay, Agno's back on the gauntlets. Will Blue have an answer for these gauntlets? Because in that first stock, it was pretty one-sided. Mm -hmm. Blue, though... Okay, I love this. See how Blue's rotating back to the middle of the stage? Yeah. And so Blue can set up anything with a D-Light to then move into any other combo and create space. Right, that's now, what you want to do with both. Exactly. Create exactly. that space a little bit, especially when you have uh, Akno's potential D-Light as well. Oh, oh, what a read. Ooh, nice what a read. Uh, nice little answer back. Dude, Blue, uh, Blue's looking good. Mm -hmm. Neck yeah, and neck right I, now. I cannot believe Blue's only PR26. I mean, it makes sense for recent placements. Right. But Blue's not playing like a PR26 right hey, now. You know, they've had a pretty big gap since the last major. Yeah. Right? 
BCX ended in November, yep. and we are in February right now. <laughs> That's a lot of training, a lot of practice, and that was a lot of damage. And a D-Light Zare putting Blue in the lead over Agno. Excuse me? Mm -hmm. Two stock to one stocks, but It's Agno. close. Oh, beautiful little uppercut to so send nasty. him to his final stock. Hey, they're still neck and neck, though. All right, so if, if you're Agno right now, sirs, how are you feeling? Uh, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good, and I'm feeling like I need to step it up just a little okay. bit more, right? If I'm Akno, if I'm defending, yeah, right, I, I don't, this is not how I want the game to go, right? Yep. Now. I need Ooh. a little more dominance. I need oh a little more control. My. He's able to make it back. Oh. Oh no. Oh no. No recovery oh, left. Oh, beautiful it. piece. That's it. It's not enough. That's but it. Blue can't make it back. Oh, Ooh, the Nair would have saved him. Unable to make it back. It, dude, that's that's just that's that's what comes with when you're playing against some Mordex. The yeah. Gauntlets and the Scythe. Every time you play against a really, really good player, you know, arguably the best player in Europe, yeah. they just wait for an opportunity to strike every time. Look at back at these replays. All of Akno's reads, they either pay off or they don't. You see there? Right Akno's there, read yeah. didn't pay off. You just cannot overextend yourself against a player of this caliber, right? It is yeah. too wow. risky. And you know what? You were asking, what do we want to see from Akno? That's exactly what I want to see from Akno. All right, now what do you want to see from Blue? Because Blue came out real strong there. But yeah. just the reads ultimately made Akno win Luke that matchup. cannot overextend in. himself repeatedly okay. like that. All right, I can't. We don't. I don't want to see any drops from him. He's got to get those two pieces, three pieces. Maybe even reset to neutral, disengage okay. a little bit, use that bow, pick up spacing. Yep. Don't let Akno in there. Don't let him punish you. Stay, stay off the edge of the stage. Yeah, I think definitely. That's, that's a big one too. Definitely looking a lot more oh. even right now. Blues looking very comfortable and. I was playing with a little bit of I don't I don't know if you can really people can say you can sense emotion in a, in a in a game, but I'm sensing a little bit of anger. Yeah. I think blue blue feels a little bit Ooh. cheated on that last stock and that you last think match. So? I mean, just look at this right now. Blue, look at blue is not oh, dropping. Oh yeah, you're thing. right. You're right. Blue's yeah. locked in. He's hungry. Oh, oh nice little break dance. Doesn't connect. Blue, he's out of it. Blue's doing great with that bow. I want to yeah. see more of that. Something that's very interesting, too, is uh, most Koji mains, when they pull out the bow, a, a big utilization for their KO confirm options. It's going to be a decent, Ooh, but Blue barely able stock. to stop, spot dodge out of that combo and finish off with a recovery to counter that. Does give Blue the stock lead once again. But, sir, it's, <laughs> it's like a replay. That yeah, is pretty much. Replay. We saw that, what, game one? Uh, yeah, or was it the last one. stock? Yeah. Literally game one. That's that just Akno's second stock. That's how he takes it from yeah, now every on. Time. Yeah, every time. And Akno's back on spear. Or on, on Scythe, I mean. This, I feel like we're in a, you know, we're in a, we're in a time loop. Deja vu. <laughs> okay, big nair right there. You know, blue. Yeah, blue looks like blue's getting bodied, but blue still has no. the damage advantage. Yeah, he's holding it. He's holding on, and he's got. I think, I think you're right. He's he's showing just a little bit of aggression. Maybe that anger is coming yeah. out, and it's keeping him in the game. Absolutely. I feel like he's making less mistakes. And Agno, Agno is not getting any reads whatsoever mm -hmm. with this scythe. Blue is just punishing every opportunity that Agno tries to go for a read. Right. And, oh, okay. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Okay, so Blue refused to go off the edge there, which was so smart. Yeah. As you can tell, Agno is baiting it. Oh, nice down sig. Oh, the neutral wow. connect, though. Wow. Did through, not see that one coming. The soft stage? Yeah. That's high tech. Yeah. That's I pretty mean, high I, tech. I was, I, I was wondering where he was going. Yep. All right, Agno looking for the KO confirm option. Are we going to see the same one we've seen like five times in a row yeah. in this situation unarmed? Okay, no. We have gauntlets now. GC Haymaker. Okay. Oh, going blue. off stage again. Remember, we don't want to see that from Blue because we, he ends up getting punished. Every time. Every right. single time. Every single time. If Blue stays on the stage the entire time this matchup, it does not chase Agno off stage, mm -hmm. Blue wins this. Yeah, yeah. Straight up. But but see, look again. Agno is so good at punishing. Oh, no. Oh, beautiful oh, no. little pickup right there. The reads are coming out. The reads are coming out. Oh, Agno just sh Oh, Blue's off stage. Oh, great off stage control. You can't be off stage, oh, Blue. no. Unable oh, to make chase it back. Up. Chase dodge up. Chase dodge up. Blue's still alive. Overcut. Oh, oh, no. Oh, amazing off stage play by Agno right there. <laughs> GG. Bro, do, 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 do you know how good you have to be to deny? He denied options for blue two full times. I mean, I love how Akino just went straight into it, right? Just fast fell all the way down and then went for it, right? It was that enough. It got blue back, but Akino still had dominance and control. And then look at this. Look at this. The so. weapon throw and then just the coverage here. That is two. So that is basically six moves Akino hit in one span of about four. Four, Four seconds, seconds yeah, off stage ridiculous. and did not drop a single one to confirm mm -hmm. the KO. That is, that is insane. Yeah, top tier, top tier. I mean, this is why he is the defender, right? There's no way around it. And if you're blue, 
you cannot put yourself in that situation anymore. Yeah, you cannot. You cannot. Yeah. So actually, 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 I believe Agno's not the defending. BCX was Swata. Swata right. was the upset king. Right, PR1. But exactly. PR1, PR1, though. PR1, though. Yeah. But Agno is definitely playing like an absolute monster. Right. And pop it off here. 2v2 champion, though. There you go. Last year. That counts. Yeah. I take it. Hey, it's a title. It is. And it's a gold. It is a gold. All right, That's now true. we're seeing a little change up here. That's interesting. Blue switching to the Ember. Yeah, and then Akno switching over to Koji, too. Mm -hmm. Dude, I, my brain is totally so foggy. Yeah. How it's everything's been. Who was Akno just on? Uh, Akno was on Mordex. Mordex. Okay, right. I was so like, wait, Scythe what Scythe is gone. Happened? Gauntlets yeah. are gone. Doing That's great with both of those weapons. That's very interesting. Yeah. So, I think Akno is switching over to Koji, obviously, because Akno is very comfortable with Koji, mm -hmm. and um, obviously has had a lot of success on the Koji as well. But using the Katars for the Ember here for Blue, that's pretty much the only reason you would see Blue rotate now into an Ember after having success in the bow. Is definitely why Agno is going to be on Koji to have bow themselves. Because it's a very good counter to go against. Oh, great little off stage again. Blue's getting punished off stage. Agno just not letting him back. Oh Another one of those beautiful ground pound series on the side of the stage. We, we need a new title. Yeah. The, Agno the off stage king. I mean, yeah. this is getting unreal. Just, don't, just, just stay on stage, Blue, please. Because, I mean, I'd say Blue is winning the neutral yeah, every definitely. time. Definitely. But Agno is just playing mind games and forces Blue to overextend like you talk about. So it's just a little too much. Then Agno punishes it every time with pure excellency. Now, Blue's got those guitars, so I do want to see those string damage come out. And there it is, Blue evening it up. You know, it might even give him the advantage off stage, but Blue, please don't take that risk. <laughs> and right now we are at 2-0 currently. So if Blue does lose this, Blue will in fact Yeah, be out he's got to reverse the series if he wants to stay in the winner's side. There we go. There's the read though. Ooh, dude, that dare is so good with both. Nice. Agno looking for opportunity. Oh, that, that oh, might be it. That might be it. Guard. That might be it. Oh wow. Agno going for the double read. Unable oh, he's gonna out. get no. punished hard. You can't do that. Ooh, no. You can't do that. No, no, not Especially at this Agno. level. Yeah, you can't do that. That's tough. That's wow. tough. But Blue, okay, Blue still has a good chance here. If mm -hmm. Blue can get a nice weapon yeah. and just find a way to confirm this KO, maybe spot dodge into an end sig pull out the Raven. Okay, you're listening, Blue. Thank you. Right. I but just you wish need it strong worked. mental. Ooh, oh, the no. offstage, you're oh, going to no. get punished, Blue. Every Ooh. time. 2 0. Akno taking game three. I can't believe that. And the series 3 0. I'm upset. I'm mad. <laughs> I am upset, sirs. Yeah. That game was so much closer. <laughs> it does not do than justice. A yeah. It does not do justice to how Blue played. Oh, man. He right, just played back great. Three plays. Man, just time and time again getting punished offstage. The offstage king. Yeah. Akno. Yeah. That, Blue, I don't mean, go offstage, please. Now, wonder, remember, Blue's not out yet. I wonder if we can get it. Yeah, you're right. You're right. If you're a Blue fan, don't worry. Blue is still in the tournament. Right. Just in a very, very tough spot now being in that loser side. Yeah. Now, something to look at here, though, especially on the stat sheet against Cirrus, is just Akno's ability to punish offstage yeah. makes it such a big difference. Because if right. you look at the damage dealt difference in each matchup, it hasn't been more than 100 at right. all. What he's doing is he's ending those stocks quicker, yep. right? Because he's getting those offstage games. He's getting just blue to put himself in bad positions yep. and then capitalize on that. Yep. And his stock early, despite the damage difference, especially with the guitars. You yep. know? I'm, I'm impressed. Yeah. I'm too. extremely impressed right now yeah. with what we saw with Akno. And you know what I think you're talking about, defending world champion? I think what you're doing is you're looking into the future. Because right oh, now, you Agno, think so? Agno is looking <laughs> nuts. He was my number one. Dude. Oh, yeah? I think so. Yeah. No favoritism, though. No favoritism. Oh, like, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we've got an interesting upcoming. Uh, we've got an oh, interesting one yes. coming up next. Now, this is yes. one that is going to be good, right? We've got Godly and Hazer Delta coming up. Now, Godly doesn't have a PR next to his name because he did take a hiatus yep. last year. Hazer Delta, 33. But, man. Like we're talking about, that number does not do justice. Absolutely. Hazer Delta has played amazing so far and has knocked out some big games onto the loser side. Yep, yep. What's the prediction here? Man, dude, so both players currently right now are on an absolute upset streak throughout the tournament. Yeah. Both are still on Love winner's side. It. Hazer Delta, for those who don't know, was the LCQ last chance qualifier winner yep. last year going into BCX. But what happened with that is when Hazer Delta won that matchup, then Hazer Delta had to come in and face off against Akno, game number one. Which is going to be tough no matter tough. what. It was yeah. tough. It was a good showing, but was not able to get nearly the results that, right. you know, 
they were probably looking for. Yeah. Now coming into winners, all that time to prepare, Hazer Delta is an absolute mad lad. I'm oh, talking man. about tearing up the competition, coming in like a raging bull in the time to stop with right. that Taros. Heavy hitting Taros, and he's done some great Taros game. Play. Oh, And I'm sure. excited to see more, and I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to play well against uh, Godly's Koji. Oh, for sure, because Godly, too, again, you know, doesn't have a PR because yeah. the hiatus. So a lot of people didn't know what to expect. You know, if you have not competitively played Pro Olive for a year, actually any game whatsoever, yeah. it is very hard to come back in. But clearly, Godly is not missing a beat and is actually playing with a little bit of a chip on their shoulder because they mm -hmm. look like they're here to prove something. Yeah, and he's had a great run so far, and I'm excited to see how far he can go on the winner's side right now. Mm -hmm. But it looks like they're locking in right now. Godly on the Koji, and it's we're at map select. Huh, what's the play here? Honestly, so I, it depends. So the play for who? Who do you who do you want me to set the stage oh, for? Oh, this is so turn? tough. This no is so tough. No favoritism. Yep, yep, yep. I want to see. I want to see what Hazer Delta. Can okay, do. All right. I want to see it. If you're a Hazer Delta, you do not want to go to a map with a lot of platforms. Yeah. And Hazer Delta bans maps with only platforms. So we mm -hmm. are going to Miami Dome, probably the best option out of those platforms. Right, especially for both of them. Mm -hmm. Because if you and the good thing about this match, rather than going into like Small Enigma or any of those other maps with those soft platforms is that, you know, bow and light actually will not hit you through the bottom of that right, platform. Right, it's just out of range yep, on that one. Yep. And this is one of the few maps where that's true, right? So it's yep. an interesting pick. So I think this is gonna work out a little bit better, but again, see Godly? Godly was able to go into two-piece combo, but then recover all jumps for the reset by hitting that soft platform right. and almost went to another combo again. Godly so, coming out strong and yeah, like a monster with tough. that bow right now. He just hasn't been able to have an answer just yet, but trying to fish for those stomp side ears, Gets a stomp, stomp Nair instead. It's not enough, though. Hazer building up that damage, though. Remember how heavy that hammer hits. And, you know, I'll tell you what, too. No matter who wins this matchup, everyone in Europe should be happy because technically this is the best Cinderella story you could ask for so oh, far. Definitely. Because you got two definitely. sides. Someone right. that's not PR, and then you got another person that's PR 33. So both players have already played well way above where their prediction has them at. Yeah. So no matter how this ends, a I winner's mean, a winner. Rain, we are in the winner's semifinal right now, and yeah. I did not expect to see both of these players. No. Right, And they're doing great, and they completely deserve to be here. Absolutely. Godly, though, does take first stock with a nice sideline into Sarah. But um, a good thing for Hazer, though, Hazer was finally able to build up a little bit of damage after a huge damage, damage deficit early on in that matchup. So we just got to see if Hazer, though, is able to confirm these KOs because it does look like Godly is feeling quite confident building up this damage consistently. I think says. Hazer can do it. I mean, he's got the hammer. He's got the axe. You know, a couple big hits, and he's going to send Godly out. Oh! Ooh, nice just little like neutral that. sick. Just like that? And that one always feels nice. You know, you catch him, and you throw him. Yeah, you, you grab him by the toes. You whip him off the stage. <laughs> Almost as good as, like, a Zol, a, a Zol side sick yeah. with axe. Yep. Oh, that connects great. Mm -hmm. Now, Godly oh, just man. always building up that damage first. And, you know, it's, it's a lot closer than it looks like because I feel like Hazer is letting him build up the damage and then just kind of evens it up. But if you want to win, you can't You can't have that happening stock after stock, right? You want to build up a definite lead. You don't want to always be catching up. Yeah, yeah. And so Hazer, though, is down an entire stock right now, Suris. And again, look look how Godly util utilizes those platforms, right? Yeah. Consistently rotating under them, building up damage, but then falling back to the middle of the stage, forcing Azure Delta with a very slow character on Taros yeah. to have to commit to one of the moves. Completely so shutting him down vertically. Yeah. yeah. Godly's just punishing nonstop, and it's, it's working out so well. So what do we need to see from Hazer Delta right now, just to, to, to tie it off? In uh, we need a new map. I'm going to be honest. Yeah. This one, I, I'm not going to chop it up. You know, nothing's impossible. But Godly is just way too confident on this map specifically right now. And Hazer Delta, look at that. It's oh, just rotating just... back, swinging nares. That wouldn't even have connected if it hit. But, um, you know, definitely the big thing for Hazer here is you, you want to make sure you keep your mental, right? Yeah. Even now, if you don't win this matchup, you still got two more games, no matter what. Come back strong. Right. You got this. Winner semifinal, it is best of five. Yep. So there's plenty of time as long as you can hold on to learn the reads on your opponent. Godly taking a 2-0 in game one, though. Yeah, and that was, that was nice. And again, resetting on that soft platform, falling under to then hit the D-Light recovery. We saw it so many times. Saw it yeah. so many times. Looking back at the replays, just every single time, Godly confirming all KOs with the sword and just... Hazer Delta did not have an answer for that. Right. And I'm, you know, I, I was going to say I want to see them on something like Mammoth Fortress right now, and that looks 
exactly like where they're heading. But look at that oh damage my. difference. 305. 601 to almost just under 300. 305 total difference. Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. That's 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 that's, that's double, actually. Yeah, your math is way better than mine, dude. Oh, stop, stop. <laughs> you know, actually, uh, you know, funny story. I actually failed Algebra 2 twice in high school. Can you believe that? <laughs> no. Yeah, me either. That was, uh, that was, that was pretty good. Though. Yeah, my mom couldn't believe it either. <laughs> <laughs> All right, coming into the match now, Hazer Delta. Ooh, early stock so from Godly. Much damage. What just 20 happened? seconds, 20 seconds. He got a little Why bit. Why does this happen? Every time we look at each other and talk, we look back and it's it, there's yeah. a stock. There's a stock gun. It was a nice little uh, bow combo from Godly, and then he just punished off stage. Now these mammoth fortress walls. Dude, oh. Just sent them flying. Ha Hazer Delta just Big looks deficit. a little bit lost right now. Godly yeah. is playing so confident, so close. I mean, look at that oh, spot dodging beautiful after the side light to read with the D light end of the recovery again he's got the read on Hazel. Dude, this is looking like a three stock i'm yeah. gonna i'm gonna keep it real right here i think so i mean this is oh, oh no. there it is the second stop oh, falls no godly looking in a good position to get that three stock hazer's got to keep it together all right because this is still game two best of five he's got one more to go you know i'm actually curious are there are there a lot of like like english England, English, it's English, right? That's what you would say, English? Yeah. Okay. People from England, are there a yeah. lot of, yeah, yeah. Are there a lot of English players in EU at the competitive level? Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. That, dude, Godly, God, I mean, Godly's putting on. Yeah. I mean, right now, I mean, I guess I haven't really paid attention to a lot of them, but I mean, Godly is looking, I thought Agnos looked like they were going to win it all. I mean, Godly right now looks like they're about to take over the whole tournament. I think we've got Zyder as well from England. Ah, Ooh, yes. Oh, beautiful okay. little scoop over there. And the Ooh, UFO comes the out. the taunt? I like that. You know what? That, that's a good mental game mm -hmm. because right now you're down and out so bad here. You want to build up your own confidence. Yeah, you got to build your confidence. Yeah. You have to find a way to break the focus of your opponent right now, too. And it seems to be working a little bit. Big damage buildups coming up there with the hammer combos. But uh, it's definitely going to take nothing short of Oh, the six back. don't connect. Oh, oh the drops. recovery drop, drops. too. Godly in a good position, though. An entire stock ahead. Hazer is struggling. Oh, that's it. That's it. Beautiful. Yep, Beautiful. It. Game two to Godly. Ooh. Yeah, Godly doing great representing England right now. I mean, wow, wow. Yeah, nobody. Hmm. I I didn't have him. Oh, man, I regret not putting him up there in my <laughs> predictions. Game three though. Yeah, I think Duke had him. I think Duke had him. Yeah. The Sparky Sparky didn't have him though. Twenty twenty two England's time. It Europe. might be. Shout out Magic Mind as well. Another top player. It's coming home from England. Yeah. Is it coming home? It's <laughs> is it coming home, sir? I think that might be a little too be. soon after the. It might be. <laughs> All right, here we go. Hazer Delta going against Godly here. Hazer it's Delta now on <laughs> Hazer uh. Delta. Uh, go big or go home here. Although if Hazer Delta does lose this matchup, they will be in the loser side. Oh, so Hazer Delta not in a terrible position right here, but definitely going to have to hit the three game reversal to remain on this winner side. And I just got to, you know, respect to Godly. He is just coming in so strong mm -hmm. from the get go. He's being aggressive, stage control, dominance, and just going for it. Just yeah. time after time. And Hazer, unfortunately, hasn't been able to work around that. Yeah, no, not at all. Oh, Beautiful my. little recovery. It's not enough to send, though. Oh, there it is. Dude, what? Godly with a double. What? I don't, I don't know if you saw it there, sirs, but the, the level of timing that had to come out for the dare, then into the GC, D-Light, to then the recovery, the timing that had to come out to perfectly catch that thing for Hazer to then set up the final recovery KO, I mean, that, that's top tier. That is, that is top, that's at no level tier. Yeah. I mean, listen, just because we haven't seen Godly doesn't mean we're not going to be seeing yep. a lot more of him. I think this is a message he's sending. He's saying, I'm here and I'm ready to play. I'm back. Yeah. I'm back. I mean, in all all games Another so far. Another emo? Ooh. <laughs> Take a cruise in the UFO. Tell me how you feel. I like it, Hazer Delta. You're down two games. You just evened up the stocks. Let's go. Throw out some more UFOs. Check out the Brawl of Battle Pass. You can get that emo too. <laughs> Fly around your UFO. <laughs> I like that swimming one. No, that one's pretty good. Yeah, so, uh, what in the moonwalk? Yeah, moonwalk, moonwalk goes too, crazy. Man. All right, so now if Godly takes this, he will advance, and Hazer Delta will be sent to the losers bracket. Ooh, watch, watch for the GC sig. No, wow, wait, what? Oh, oh absolute no. dominance there. Ooh, okay, nice little scoop. That was good. That was really good rotation, actually. Set up for the Russian there. Not able to get it though. Dude, Godly, Godly plays Just like 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 a robot like yeah. a very technically sound genius robot like you input an equation look at it, it, it just Amazing. executes yeah. look at what what a weapon throw across the stage he's a ge he's a geometry genius do you see that weapon throw yeah from deep downtown oh Kobe. my gosh godly hazer's got a lot of work to do right now 
but he is connecting. It's just not on, enough. Hazer. No 3-0, Hazer. No 3-0. You've come this far. Come on. What do you got, Hazer? Apparently, just might not be enough. I mean, look no. at just the rotation. From I mean, Godly. Godly just punishing him time and time again. Godly might not be able to make it back on this one, but is it going to be enough? I don't think Dude, so. I, I don't think so. I didn't so. even know that you could punish Hammer that much with Sword. Yeah. He, it's crazy because Godly's playing Sword as if it was a Hammer and is actually like outranging Hazer Delta in every situation per engagement here. Welcome to Europe. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Holy cow. All right. So. Again, Hazer Delta does still have a chance. This is your oh, last man. stock on Winter's I wanted Winter's to side. see the weapon starving. I want to see Hazer punish him. Yep. But he's just letting Godly get away with so much. Godly looking uh -oh. to close right now. You hear that? Hazer's tough right now on the edge, and he makes it back on stage. Sir, so you hear that? Beep, boop, bop, bop, beep, beep. You hear that? That's the code execute for the dub. Godly <laughs> inputted it. Here it comes. The Godly I have Tech. no idea where the that was godly going. Godly Tech. It's going to the top of the map. What a read. 3-0 to Godly. What a read. Beautiful, beautiful little series. Godly playing great. Dude. Godly playing great. Man, I just want to say we had this happen in the last set. I can't believe it. What is happening? The three O's. The three O's. They look so close. Now, this one was not as close. No. This one definitely, like, like little the final bit of a result. Rift. Yeah. A little bit of a yeah. rift between the two players. But, you know, <sighs> hey, we've seen some great performance from Hazer. Maybe he's just not well suited against Godly's play style. That's true. That's very he true. He's still got a run left in loser's bracket. Yep. And I still am expecting a lot of good things to come from him. Godly, of course, advancing. This was the winner semifinal. So he doesn't have too far to go. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty impressive. One year hiatus PR, now advancing from winner semifinal. Yeah. Could we see a Godly top three placement reign? I mean, honestly, I mean, now basically advancing now into the next round. I mean, it's pretty much basically certain unless yeah. Godly goes 0-2 <laughs> against the next opponents that, you know, they play. But... I think Godly has a very, very, very good shot to not only place top three, but maybe but even win the whole thing at this take point. Take it all? I mean, dude, based Ooh, off that, upset. Yeah, based off, that was a semifinal game, sirs. So who's coming up? Who's coming up from losers? Okay, so. It's oh, tough, man. I, I honestly yeah, had Hazer. like what? I had Hazer coming up. Out of, out of the loser side? Yeah. Dude, I feel like it'd have to be, if I had to say anyone, I mean, maybe, I, I don't even know where the bracket's at currently in that aspect, but maybe Swata? Right? Yeah. If SWAT yeah, is still alive? Things. Yeah, I think so. I hope so. Maybe not. Maybe Pavelski. If Pavelski's still alive, Pavelski we don't know. Pavelski, too. Right? Everybody's uh, getting slain. Let's not forget about Akno. There's a bunch of demons. Yeah. Big names are still in it, both winners and losers' side. Who? Spectre qualifies for, for losers' top eight over Coco as well. So Coco's out. Coco's gone? Yep. Coco's gone. <sighs> and, Coco, and that was another 3 0 as well. And Coco did so good because Coco actually upset Ninja, right? Yeah. 7 2 9. And Which, you know, I thought Ninja had a great. I, I thought mm -hmm. Ninja had a great run, and the bracket kind of opened up for him. Mm -hmm. You know, when we saw those big names drop down, I thought Ninja had a great run. Exactly. Another exactly. upset, just upset after upset today. Oh, Ooh, it's great. I love well, it. I love it. I'm excited. You know, sir, they say all good things, you know, must come to an end. Oh no. And you know, for that reason, especially in a one v one tournament, sometimes even friendships. Oh no. Oh. And partnerships got to be put on yep. pause, sir. Yep. I'm not talking about our bromance. No, <laughs> I'm talking about a different one. Yep. And here v it comes. V2v2 legends, Akino oh, and Blaze, oh, former teammates, now facing off against each other in the 1v1. Now, Akino, we talked about this a little bit, PR1. Yep. Blaze PR8, so there's a little bit of a, a gap there. But, again, when we're looking at their lifetime score and <sighs> engagements, 7-2 towards Akino. How do you think that stacks up for Blaze today? Um, I think, I think Blaze can do it if Blaze commits to the cannon, because yes. cannon is something, especially in Europe, besides the Ninja 729, that you don't see a lot at a very competitive level. Right. So if Blaze can commit to the, because let's be real, I'm not saying that Blaze can't be Akno using sword. I'm just saying it is extremely hard. Yeah, we saw that with Simple exactly. too, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, Simple is yeah. one of the best yeah. in the world. It's the matchup, right? Yeah. I want to see more of that cannon. I yep. want to see more of that Sidra. He's been doing great on that Sidra with the cannon. Is it going to be locked in for now? It looks like it is. It is. So we are going to wow. get a little bit wow. of cannon action going into game one. It's cannon time. It's yep. cannon time. Man. Akino, sticking with that Koji. <laughs> Boys and girls, okay. everyone across the world, I hope you're ready for this. If you are, I don't even care if you're from Europe. It doesn't even matter. If you've no. ever watched the Brawlhalla esports scene that ever included Europe, this is you this are is you are watch. jumping up and down. Yeah. You are going crazy. You are so excited. And in, in your mind, you're like, can Blaze do it? Can Blaze take down Acto? I think so. I can think it's they? completely possible. 
Yeah. It's completely possible. I think so too. Heartbreaking though. Heartbreaking when you when you I don't see sad. when you see yeah. But you know what they say? Better to have loved and lost than to Ooh. never have loved at all, Rain. Oh. And I think that goes for these two as two. Are you a poet? Well. No. Not I at think all. you could be. Not at all. I'm, I'm about to cry <laughs> in front of thousands. You want me to cry? I'll do it. Let's just be happy for what they had as 2v2 partners. <laughs> All right, I'm feeling much better now. All right, sirs, here we go. Let's locked roll in. into this action right here, right now. Blaze going off against Akno. Blaze locked in on the Sidra in the attack stance. And the Koji Ooh, locked in for Akno on the defense, defense stance. Yeah. I like that. Probably the cannon. A little bit more survivability against that mm -hmm. cannon. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a smart play. So I'm going to want to see a lot more bow, right? Space oh, yeah. out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely against, against that Sidra cannon. But and Something that's crazy too, serious to think about. They have probably played so much, at least like two thousand games together, minimum. Yeah. I'd I say. mean, just sparring after sp everything, yeah. everything, oh. right? Like it's they know each other's play style so well, right? That it. I mean, this is like the ultimate chess match you could ever imagine. For right? A, yeah. A I mean, they have great general. synergy as a twos team. All right, right into game one. This is winner's side. Again, another winner's semifinal, the second one today. Blaze picks up that cannon yes. on Sidra. Agno with the Koji and the bow. Both players doing great right off the bat, keeping it pretty even. You know, I got to say, uh, me and you seem really smart right now because we predicted not only the cannon commitment, but then we also predicted the Agno bow commitment to mm -hmm. counter the cannon. Mm -hmm. I feel pretty smart right now. Yeah. I'm going to keep it real. <laughs> All right, here we go, though. Blaze is currently having a nice damage advantage over Agno. Agno oh, just not cannon. getting very comfortable. It was so hard. Blaze, and I love it. Blaze oh, is just, nice little punish wow, down there. Wow. He didn't even wait. No just space. Just went down. Dominant. Blaze is smart. Blaze is not letting Agno get comfortable. Yeah. And that's where Agno thrives. The moment Agno gets in that middle of the stage and gets sword, it's where everything starts to really change up. And this is what we were talking about. That PR difference doesn't mean anything when you know your opponent so well. You know the way they're going to move. You know what options they tend to favor. And Blaze is punishing Akno right now for it. But Akno can do the same. Do you do you think they're in a voice call right now together? Oh, man, that's I mean, hilarious. that is how close of friends they are. Yeah. That they literally, they might be, hey, man, uh, you want to just, uh, you know, maybe not get red here? Da -da 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 -da. All right, Blaze, though. Blaze is looking real, real good. Still in a very good situation. Almost an opportunity to get the two-stock lead. Oh! Whew. Wait, no, I think Blaze is going to do it right here. Two-stock lead. Oh, he's oh. able to make it back. Akno with a great reversal. That was dirt. Dude, how is Agno so good off the edge? I don't know. I mean, just don't go off stage. Just don't go That's off true. stage. That's true. Yeah, okay, there you go. Everyone that ever plays Agno, don't go off the stage. you got a pretty good chance. Right. And Blaze should know that. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Oh, no. Uh, no, Blaze, this massive damage oh, deficit. Oh, Agno just punishing him. Oh, that Blaze should be getting, enough. Oh, the weapon throw doesn't connect. No And he's able way. to make it back. Oh, Agno counter. punishes. What? The reversal. What? Blaze what? unable to make it back. He didn't no. even need to do that. Again, no, no, Akno no. with those insane. It was a full stock lead. I know, deleted entirely. Blaze, oh, stop man. it. Akno just, you cannot take him to the edge of Look the stage. At Look at this. Look at this. Man, I thought Blaze was in it. Akno just deleting <laughs> those leads. You know, that's that's how you earn PR number one. Yeah. That right there is, per oh my gosh. Akno's just so comfortable. Blaze with the ground pound. Now look, he is throwing away that cannon. Weapon starve to oh, victory man. right now. That's all Blaze can do, and don't yeah. go off stage. Akino just again with those like four or five second off stage encounters. Honestly, I don't even think he needed to do the last one. Absolutely. We saw the sweat droplets coming from Blaze, but Akino still did it just to confirm. Oh, Great oh, little oh, down sig oh. off stage. That was next. huge. That was yeah. huge. So still from a damage aspect right here, Blaze sets find a way to build up a little bit more without getting caught out with these strings that Akino keeps developing. Mm -hmm. Oh no. Oh. Okay, punish time. Yes, huge. Huge. Not as big as I would like, especially Ooh. when you're down this much. But you know what? The deficit has shortened right now. Yeah, at least if Blaze could just hit one more string to then set up maybe a D. Oh, no. Okay, okay. That is the last recovery. Ooh. Oh, it dropped. Oh, my gosh. No, that recovery the second into time we've seen Blaze oh, drop a recovery. That done it. Come on, Blaze. What do you got? What do you got? Oh, the oh. D-Sick doesn't connect. What a savage. I, you got you to respect the consistency I of going know, for it every know. time. I know. I'm, I want to keep a running tally. That's Dude. eight. One out of eight so what far. One out of eight? One out of eight. <laughs> uh, there it sense. is. Tidy little end. Akino picking up the bow, taking game one with a beautiful little <sighs> mare. Dude, Look I mean, at this offstage play. Why uh, are you taking Akino offstage at all? Barely makes it back. Punishes underneath the ground pound. The weapon throw. Gravity cancel is going to come out. <sighs> Dude, I mean, it's just, I mean, that's incredible. It hurts so much in slow And it's literally, too. what happened to was that Akno 
was Look at that. so far. Agno was almost two stocks behind. Yeah. And then Blaze. Blaze just kind of got a little bit on that, like a barbarian rampage. I mean, they're looking and going pretty off stage neck and, and neck. Just, damage oh, is even. Man. Average damage per engagement is even. Light attacks are even pretty much. Three, but two, the difference four, is coming when Akino ends yep. those stocks yep. earlier off stage. Yep. Blaze, I think if Blaze is go off stage, Blaze can win this. Yeah. Blaze can 100% win this if Blaze stays off stage. Right. You know, it's just so tempting, especially when you have cannon. Oh, You want to sure. take it off stage. You want to style a little. You want and to and a, little. a big thing is, too, is especially when your opponent's red. Yeah. It's like, oh, I just had to hit a, you know, a nice GCD light, do a mm -hmm. ground pound from the KO. Great. But no, that, that does not exist with Akno. Because Akno, I don't know what university Akno's studying at for, for Brawlhalla, you know, commitment <laughs> tactics here. Hey, early stock from Blaze right now. Cannon ground pound connects, sending Akno to his second stock. That's big. That's huge. That shows us right now. Oh, oh look oh. at that. Taking Agno off stage with those cannon strings. Ag Agno's mental is good. Agno's yeah. mental is good. It's back. Agno is definitely Ooh. in a position to do well here, but Blaze is finally starting to get that flow back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The He's confidence still more is pouring back in, and that's what we needed to see. Poof. Okay, so this is back into anyone's game. I mean, yep. great, great little reversal, but Agno's still down. He's already in orange. I would, I would not be surprised if this goes to a game five. Yeah. Honestly, oh, yeah. I mean, it's able to be, it'd honestly, be the perfect, like, thing just for us to talk Poetic. about Poetic. too you know <laughs> nice little nice little downsick doesn't connect from Akno, and he goes for the neutral now we have seen him connect that a couple times yeah but it's not enough for blaze nice hey, there is coming out probably d light nair yep Ooh. yep one of the best true ko confirm options in the entire game weapon throw Akno with a cheeky neutral sick gets punished That's with it. a weapon throw That's it. we're looking at a blaze Three stock? Okay, this is basically how it was last time, though. Like, oh, like yeah. this is literally like identical to what right, it was right. the time before this. Agno's got that eraser. He's just gonna delete. Well, I don't know. Blaze has not gone off stage. Yeah, and unless it's like he's very listening. He's safe. listening. And if Blaze does go off stage, Blaze just throws a weapon and then yeah. runs back, which is great. See that? Look, Blaze is not coming off stage, and now Blaze is about to have. A is this a three stock? Oh, beautiful reads there. I don't think he can make it back, can he? Uh, no, no, he can't no. because Akno is the one guarding the edge. It's always going to be tough every when time, you try and make every it time. back. Mm -hmm. But, man, I mean, look at this. Blaze is looking so much better now with a two-stock lead yeah. currently over Akno. Akno in red right now. And, uh, I mean, this one's pretty much all but over to about send it to a game three. I don't know. I think it's a little too early to call it. But this is the position you want to be in if you're Blaze, especially yeah. a game down right now. Give you good confidence, Absolutely. especially if you take this stock early. End it for Akno. You're yeah, back into Nairs. game three, and you've got your confidence back from losing yep. game one. Oh, no. Ooh, Blaze. Nice little Blaze was, why are you going off stage, Blaze? Yeah. Why? Okay. Okay. I think he's trying to find that line between playing cautiously okay. and playing aggressive. Like maybe build up a little more confidence to go off stage. Yeah. Ooh, punished okay. with the down sig. Blaze taking a two stock on that one. All right. I mean, that's the thing that's crazy is like that's, that's how the last game should have ended. Yeah. That's how it should have went last time. Yeah. But Akno just has that X factor. Right, right. Right. And that's what makes Akno, you know, arguably the number one player. Mm -hmm. Right? Because mm -hmm. it's that ability. But okay, here's something that's so interesting when we look back at these replays. Ooh. Akno is committing to a lot more six. Yeah. And not a single one connected at all whatsoever. So yeah. as we do see now, though, a switch. Suris, if you're Akno, why, two, after you one, did have success with Koji, right? Why are you moving to Mordex? I think he wants that Scythe. Yeah. I think he's going to do great on the Gauntlets. We've seen amazing things from his Gauntlets today. But I think that Scythe is going to look real good against the, the Cannon and uh, the Sidra in general. Okay. I want to see some I want to see some nice strings, some nice punishes. And you know what? Maybe that's what Akno needs. I feel like Blaze has got a lot more confidence from that second game. Oh. He's, you know, I take it back. He's been yeah. doing great taking him off stage, especially with the Cannon. So maybe Akno wants to shut that down right now. Yeah, and now, now that I'm really starting to think about it, sir, it's based off what you said, uh, oh, Mordex is like the offstage king, mm -hmm. right? And now right. we talked about Agno being the offstage king. And now Agno oh. has used Scythe, which has directional inputs. Force hey. Blaze, oh, Blaze touched. That was insane. Yeah, but Agno's garden. Oh. Agno's garden. Can he get back? The Blaze down has air. no oh, fear. Agno touches. Punished with the gauntlets. Wow. You don't win those. You don't offstage win king. those. Offstage king. We say it time and time again. Come on, Blaze. Okay, still it is 1-1. One, one. And right oh. now... This is still a huge opportunity for Blaze if Blaze oh, can no. just find Oh no, oh no, the punish! No! Oh no! no. Oh, no. deleted that stock! Go, got dunked! Offstage gauntlet, hey, it was he worth got it. Dunked. It was totally worth it. Akno still an entire stock ahead. But wow, what a gauntlet combo! The uh, read, uh, totally uh, worth. Hey, that's gotta take some emotional damage too. 
That was, I mean, I'm going to be real. That was, I think Agno is so mad that Agno basically almost got three stock last game. And Agno <laughs> said, look, we may be homies. We may be best friends. But I'm gonna I'm gonna disrespect you too, man. Yeah. I'm gonna throw you, I'm gonna overextend and throw you down deep into the end of the stage. But it looks like Blaze is starting to wake up a little bit. And here we go. Game three. I think friendship is off now. Yeah. They're yeah. they're they're fighting for blood. Hey, gloves are on even though the mm -hmm. gauntlets are off. Wait, gloves are off even though the gauntlets <laughs> are on. Akno came here to play, and I take it back. I uh -oh. think he's gonna stick with those gauntlets. Just absolute nasty punishes. Uh -oh. Great little sig from Akno taking another two-stock lead. Dude, that, I mean, that was dom that was domination. Looking yeah. back at these replays right here. Yes, oh, Blaze. Oh, man, take a look at got this. Got some great strings. But Beautiful Agno side air. Punish. What a read. The GC. Oh, downlight read again. Oh, no. Oh, oh this is no. just nasty. I mean, it's worth oh, losing a stock. No. Look at us. Oh. We're, we're just in pure disgust. We can't. We're like, no. Oh. <laughs> I mean, you're Akno. You're in red oh. on your third stock. What do you have to lose? Absolutely. Absolutely. Ooh. Hey, it's tied up. 1-1. Okay, one, one. so like... We're in game three now, right? Yeah. No, we're in game four. Wow, this yeah. is flying by. I cannot believe that. I don't even know what to expect. No, no. I all. mean, it's flip flopped so much. Blaze has been playing great with the cannon, and I still want to see that. But, you know, Ak Akno pulled out that gauntlets, and man, oh, man. What a juicy combo. Dude, it, it doesn't go to one stock right Oh, there it is. is he, oh, he tried hitting it again. He oh, tried. He tried. Dude. Yeah, Blaze knows. Blaze. Oh, Blaze, no. Blaze Come on. The edge. Ooh, what a spot that was, dodge. That was so big. That was so Blaze big. Blaze's dodge so big. coming out and the punishes. Can he can he stop her from getting back on stage? He's I, not I think Blaze just has to win one offstage engagement here just to like send a message to Agno and just somehow slow down that confidence. Dude, it works on your confidence. Yeah, it, that's exactly what mm -hmm. I was going to say. It just hits the mental a little bit, too. Yep. I mean, especially the way Akno does it off stage is just. <laughs> ooh, Sidesick does not connect. He gets punished for that. Big but Sare. it's still neck and neck. Big Sare. I want to see one of those. punish right here. No. Ooh, it Drop doesn't it. connect, oh, but the follow up. That was hey, huge. Akno losing the first time. Honestly, I was about to get really upset. I was like, Blaze, <laughs> Blaze, you gotta hit that. And Blaze finally did. That was such a good read to pick up that move right there. Uh, and Akno with the double uppercut. Do, do you think, Ak would you argue that Akno is one of the best players in the world for confirming KOs on arm? Oh, hands down. I mean, I mean it he's is, not PR1. I, I, think not being I think that's eight. Player. I think we've casted two games or yeah. two sets, and that is the eighth KO unarmed that Agno has confirmed. It's great. It's great. But I mean, I, that just shows. I mean, it's unarmed is like a whole different weapon. Yeah. Great prio as well. So, mm -hmm. you know, it is in your advantage to use it sometimes. All right, here we go. Agno is up currently 2 1 in the set. So, if Agno wins this, Agno will be moving on into winner's side finals, whereas Blaze. Oh will be moving down on the loser side, mm -hmm. which you don't want to be in. We talked about it over and over again. You do not want to be down there. Especially if Blaze is going to be down there, too. Mm -hmm. Oh, dude, what? If Blaze it's is just getting tougher and tougher. Yeah. Okay, it's this is huge for Blaze, though. Blaze is trying to bait out that weapon, Beautiful and the bait does recovery. come. Not enough, though. Not enough, though, sir. It's not enough. Whew. Hey, they're playing a, little, a lot more careful, I feel like, in this game. I think part of that is because Blaze cannot afford to drop this match at yeah. all. Yeah. Huge, huge. That slight was huge. Stock lead. That slight, was huge. Slight stock lead. He's gonna want to build it up. And this is this is where Blaze does really well because Blaze is able to build up damage very, very fast. Yeah. Right. And so if Blaze could just not get KO'd unarmed by a combo here. Blaze is gonna be just fine. And that's why I think he's sticking with the sword too, right? Yeah. He wants to build up that damage slowly and carefully mm -hmm. right now. He wants to just capitalize on this lead as much as possible. Akino playing uh -oh. great around uh -oh. him with those oh, 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 down to connect. It's oh. not enough to punish it. And the stock though, that would have been amazing. That's still oh, Ooh, my. nice little weapon though, but <laughs> Akino playing dodgeball. Takes both <laughs> weapons and just eats them off the map. Scythe does knock Blaze now down to their last stock here. Here we go. Blaze. What do you have left? Can what do you have left can. in the heart? Let's see it. Sirs, can Blaze do it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. If I you're mean, Blaze right now, what are you doing? Be careful, right? Don't overextend yourself. Don't get punished because Akno will just dominate you if you do. Uh -oh. Oh, the offstage, he hasn't been able away. to connect on that. But if he does, it's game over. For Blaze, he'll be sent down to losers. No, no, oh, no! I, you can't go down there, Blaze! Oh, oh wait, nice little reversal with the cannon! Oh my gosh, Blaze makes it back. I cannot believe Blaze made it back. Agno never makes a oh, mistake like that offstage. Oh, nice little read there, too. Oh, this is in a danger zone now. Right now, look at the damage advantage for Agno. Blaze is going to have to find a way to build up a ton of damage here without Agno hitting one of those infamous spot dodges into punishments. Nice, nice. Okay, there you go. That's a start. Oh, that was a one more. One more and it's over. Oh, one more and it's there over. There it no. is. No, no, no. The GC D-Light recovery sends him. Oh, what a game. What hey, a game. 3-1, but 
This was definitely a close though situation. Gosh, that was. I mean, both players played. That's probably amazing. one of the coolest sets I've ever seen. Yeah, yeah. Plays an act now, dude. Like the ability for just momentum to shift over so much, like between the two, is just it's stellar. And even if you watch this game here. It, you know, it does end up, you know, ending in Akno's favor, but this 3-1 this yeah. does not paint the picture no. for how this game ended. I mean, look how close they were. Average damage mm -hmm. per engagement, the same. Damage is pretty much neck and neck. Same thing with attack counts. I mean, they've been neck and neck the entire game series. What a series this was. Best of five, 3-1 to Akno. You know, we kind of expected it to go that mm -hmm. way, but I did not think it would be this close. You know, I love it. I am, I am absolutely... In love with that. You know what tells me? There was no taunting either, which I love taunting. Yeah. There was no mental <laughs> game aspect, right? But it was just pure, crazy outwittiness of someone that you've played thousands of thousands of hours with the game with, and it led to phenomenal reads, and ultimately, Akno just got the most of them. Absolutely. I felt like both players in that last match just went out on stage and then put it all out there. They got it all out on the line. They held nothing back, regardless of who their opponent was. And that's exactly what you want to see. You want to see top-tier gameplay, mm -hmm. and that was nothing less than that. Man, so I guess, sirs, before we end up rolling into our next break, I do got to ask you one thing for this, then, hit sirs. Me, hit me, hit me. Who do you have your eyes on right now that you feel could shake things up and win it all. That's not Agno. Godly. 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 Easy, easy answer right there. Okay. Yeah. All right. I mean, he's been playing amazing. That's true. Yeah. Not not saying Godly would be doing injustice to him. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. He's here. He's back. And he's saying put some respect on my name. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. You know what? I got to be kind of in the same boat along that as well. So wrapping it up here, simple Blaze. Uh, we did have Blaze win that. And if you look at all the other matchups too, yes, there were three O's and a 1-3. The Blue Agna was the, close. The, it was so close. Mm -hmm. Every match was actually yeah. way more close than it appears. And because of that reason, it's just, it's only going to get better. Yeah. I mean, this is EU. Mm -hmm. it's, it's been upset city. It's I been love upset it. nation. I'm mean, here for it. Book your tickets, sir, because we're going to the grand finals. It's probably seeing even another upset that's going to be <laughs> happening. But I before can't wait. we get to that one, brother, we are going to be moving on into a short break. My name is Rain Raps, and I've been joined with the one and only Sir. So make sure to not go anywhere, and we will be right back after this short break.
What's up, Brawlhalla? How's it going? Welcome to top Woo. eight of the European Winter Championship singles bracket. Man, there has been some intense matches here. Holy we were watching moly. in the green room, which is just that section right, of the room right there. over there. <laughs> and uh, my goodness, it was so intense, dude. Blaze, oh. man, even though he didn't win that one, he won my heart with that with that performance. Oh, yeah. That was awesome, dude. Woo, okay, this is exciting, right? right We're getting yeah. into top eight. Oh, I love this. This is no this, longer this a whole full screen now. Now it's down. over transparency. Boom, 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 Wait, boom. bring it back. No, oh, no, 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 that was good. That was good. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's exciting because the matches that we've got coming up here are yep. top eight, but they're all elimination matches. Oh, all man. All the next matches that we're going to be watching here that you're seeing on the Ooh. screen behind it. No, the tension. That, it, well, okay, you're not seeing – you're seeing me. You will momentarily. You'll Don't worry it about it. a second, but do, let, me, let me tell you, these are good matches coming up here. So, all right, we already know Godly and Akno are in uh, winner's final, chilling, yep. waiting. Okay, but – and oh my goodness, Godly. Okay, after we'll, talk, the hiatus? we'll talk more about him later. Guaranteed yeah, right? top three I mean, after the hiatus? Came back All right. Strong. Okay. Talk, okay. About, talk about coming back strong, hitting the ground running. Um, the matches we've got coming up next Machete versus Spectre, and then Swata versus Blue. Then Ooh. after these rounds, we've got Blaze waiting for the winner of the first, and Hazer Delta waiting for the winner of the second. By the way, Hazer Man. Delta, oh my goodness, coming into this tournament, seed 29, <laughs> absolutely dominating his way into top eight winner's side. Yes, so he fell cool. to Godly, who is apparently Godly at this game, <laughs> uh, but... I don't know, man. He this this could go any way. I mean, that's just amazing momentum. I'm really happy to see it because the last chance qualifier winner from last year, and then fast forward to just winter championship. Yeah. Just right after the postseason. It's only been and he's in top eight. <laughs> right. There was no tournament in between where he like bridged this gap. He went from yeah. being the last chance qualifier winner to like earning his spot in top eight winner side. So good. I don't know. Maybe that boosted him. And he's been training Yo, during the winter. A little shot uh, in the arm, yeah. I, I think so. I think he's. I think he's. He's. He's got that. He's. He's got the drive now. Uh, and who knows what else he's capable of? Uh, he's already sitting in top six of this tournament. That's, that's a guaranteed fifth place. That's insane. What? That's such a huge achievement already. Can he go further? Well, he'd have to get through the winner of Swata versus Blue. But oh, before man. that. Before that, and I believe the first match that we're going to have coming up here is Machete, Machete. versus Spectre. Uh, whoo, man. Okay, Machete performed so well in the doubles tournament last weekend yep. that I'm expecting really big things from him. Spectre, kind of a double player, doubles player himself, right? Yeah, he got a few top eights ooh, there. Nearly, was it top eight or just outside of top just eight? Just outside top eight last ninth weekend. Ninth place. Okay, hey, that's still big yep. time in the money, okay? All right, here we go. Machete versus Spectre happening on stream right now. And, oh, Machete's playing a Surrey? Wait a second. What? Okay. Well, okay. I know who you're rooting for. I mean, now. I remember uh, Machete was playing a lot of Ulgrim. So this is a, this is a real switch him up here. Because uh, Machete, well, he, he's been, he played a whole bunch of Ulgrim. Yeah, the head-to-head uh, -head graphic even had Spectre and Machete both on Ulgrim. Yeah. Because that's their, where their history lies. Now Machete defying expectations. He was not using the Asuri in the doubles tournament last weekend. Now he's been. Now he's rocking it in singles, and I love it. I mean, it's no, it's no secret to the fans out there that I am just, I am a, sur a Surrey main through and through. The Qatars, you know. The Qatars. <laughs> well, the Qatars are not working out so great for Machete right now. Is that it? I think he might not be able to make it back. No, Whoa. yeah, Dykin might have been able to do it, but Spectre just didn't give him the opportunity. Already down one stock here. Remember, these are elimination matches. That means Everything's whoever online. loses these next four matches that TWK and I are casting, they're out of the tournament. The stakes have never been higher. Top eight, and and you and you you're out if you lose. That's so intense. Yeah, I mean the adrenaline just has to absolutely be flowing. And right now, Machete is looking for the knockout. He needs to get it before this starts spiraling out of control. Because Spectre, right now, he's circling. Yeah, well, Machete's doing a good job not taking any damage while searching for the knockout here. Nice weapon throw. He's got to finish it off. The okay, talk about finishing it off. That works. That'll do it. He definitely, Spectre definitely had enough to make it back to the stage, so it was imperative that Machete just went out there and took the stock himself, and he certainly did. Spectre dodges out of the uh, neutral light recovery. It's always a hope when you're on guitars and you're doing neutral light recovery, 
Uh, if their dodge is up, you're just hoping they don't dodge. Like, maybe yeah. let me test them. Maybe oh. Woo, That's what, what it is. That he did slick. it as the conditioning for the next one. So that way you would guarantee, yeah, they're going to spend the dodge because they're expecting the recovery. Expecting, and then exactly, you get the extra exactly. follow -ups. Yeah, and when it works, it's because you have them conditioned on reacting, waiting for a reaction it's the long instead. Plays, man. Mm, man. That's some fighting game stuff right there. It all, it's all, it's all happening. Okay, stocks and damage extremely even here. Machete avoids the side light, punishes with his own side air. He could bring the pain right now, but now Spectre in the power position. Oh no, he uh -oh. lost his cat tars. He's, 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 oh, oh man. no, again. Again, Dodge might Machete just come back in time. Oh, no, just what? shy of the corner. I, I feel like if he had dodged diagonally, that might have worked. Just might have. He lost all his forward momentum with that one. I, yep. I mean, I didn't even I didn't even believe he could make it back at all. But after he got that dodge, it looked like maybe, maybe he could have made it back. But Spectre was there either way, so who knows. Man, so Machete managed to take the damage lead in those second stocks. But once again, Spectre just oh, shows that he, he had the clean it out. He closes it out perfectly, and here we are on the last stock. Oh, Damage man. pretty much even, and Machete's got the guitars locked and loaded. Let's see. I love me some good guitar gameplay. Oh man. Oh yeah. Oh, oh, hey, 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 let's go. We're back. We're back. We're back. <laughs> <laughs> and his guitars, oh, double guitars, dude, guitars into There were guitars. four guitars on stage right now. What Foda. a good combo. Throw your guitars. Grab more guitars. O <laughs> overpowered, honestly. Okay. Here we go. Spectre with the lance. Machete switched to the sword. Um, Sword, sword might be better at fighting the lance than the guitars are. It's got you a little know, bit just, more range. It depends on, yeah, if you're looking at the range, I don't know. It depends on who you are, right? It, yeah. it all comes down to movement. Any weapon can get in on any weapon. I think Machete just really likes cycling anytime there's an option. Doesn't want to give Spectre oh. the option for a large weapon toss. Machete's kind of in trouble now. Well, they're both in trouble. We're coming down to the final moments here. As both oh. players are extremely damaged, nearing the knockout range. And one big hit could do it. Machete steals. Uh oh. Nope. Okay. Yeah, now he was he guarding it. that now weapon. He got it. Again, Stealing the weapon star weapon continues it, well, beautiful. Yeah, and starving weapons out right now is a huge play. Uh oh, is that enough to knock out? No, but, but almost. Machete has to make it back to the stage. So he's got nothing left, but a nair protects him on his return oh! back to the stage. Spectre finishes him off with the recovery, taking game one. Spectre's up in the set. Man, he really went out there for that one, too. It yeah. was like, usually you expect, That's oh, they're going to try and catch my landing with a down light right. or a neutral light on the axe. Sure. But man, just jump straight up diagonally. Keep on going. Oh, I think reach. he could have made it back if he dodged diagonally. I think then. so, too. Man, dude. Well, that's been the story of this game is people just going out there and getting it. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, they are not waiting for their edge guards like we normally see. Oh, Machete switched back to the Ulgrim. Oh, no. He turned his back on, on Asuri. Well, you know, we like to see people play their mains. That's. No need <laughs> this to, no was need as advertised, you know? This Ulgrim was, versus yeah, Ulgrim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And so far, Machete kind of showing up. Spectre, he already he hit him so much that he already disarmed his lance. Jeez, now, that's Spectre a without ton a, of damage. Oh, Spectre's really going for style here. I guess that's. He needed it. He needed a little morale boost there. Nice uh, synchronized axe recoveries yeah, back it was, to stage. It was back beautiful. Oh, what's, Next what's Olympic Machete event? up to here? Oh, okay. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> He's like, if it, hey, if it's going to land, I'll let it go. And if it won't, I'll grab it on its way down. That's where you're toying with somebody in dodgeball, you know? <laughs> you toss it up, recatch whoa, it. You're like, whoa, oh, oh, Machete went too deep. No, he's fine. He's fine. Uh-oh. Split up wide. Swapped over to the lands. Caught the landing with the neutral light. Absolutely. Well, Machete started that game with an explosive lead. Spectre managed to hold on and keep it keep it tight, keep it close. But with Machete taking that first stock now, he's got the opportunity to push a damage lead, and he's already working on it. He's got him in yellow. Oh, every hit is big. Still alive. Ah. Machete coming back to the stage. Spectre tries to leap off stage and get the knockout himself. Yeah, he knows you've got to go after oh. the lance. Ooh, beautiful recovery, quick and snappy. Okay, Spectre equalizes before it's too late here. He's barely taking any damage. Machete armed with the lance. That seems to be his, his power weapon on this legend. I mean, he's great with the axe, of course, but my goodness, he just... Look at it! He just does so much. What was that, a celebratory side sig? There was no way he was going to land that. I think he just wanted to show Spectre what's up. Here he comes with the edge guard. Can Spectre make it back to the stand? No way! Oh my no. gosh! <laughs> oh man! Slick. Even up towards the top corner from that deep below stage. Man, he had such the read. That was a hefty yeah. slide charge. Yeah, yeah. He's slick on the sticks, that's for sure. 
and a full stock lead right now for Machete. Oh my god. All right, so this is the other thing. We saw it towards the tail end last game, and we've yeah. seen it woven throughout this entire thing. Machete, so good at the weapon star. Spectre had to go in real hard with that sidelight because there were like six weapons that just passed him by. <laughs> yeah. Oh, again, Spectre leaping up into the sky with his axe recoveries. It worked to take the to take the game last time. Maybe it'll work again. But Machete's got such a big lead, and he's pushing it further and further. Spectre's got to close out this Ooh. stock right now. Even that down sig's not enough to take out Machete, but he surely can't live through another one. Get ready for the next axe down sig. Here it comes. Here it comes. Wait, oh. no, no, I was wrong. Yeah, Machete was but trying to go for the dosi. It's dough. still coming. It's still coming. It's still coming. Oh, oh Whoa. man! You better watch out, Machete. <laughs> okay, here it goes. Okay, he's got the lance now. Now, at this point, it's weapon star Machete. It doesn't matter what weapons in his hands. Machete doesn't care. Manages to yep. grab an axe, yep. but makes quick work of him. Spectre taking Machete down to his final stock. But, but he's in here we orange. Go. This That's is tough. The thing. This it's is that, tough. That damage lead. Machete's got a lot of mileage to work with. <laughs> Almost got extra mileage on that charged recovery. Uh, Machete's one good hit away from... No, he chased on in the wrong direction. That was such a read. <laughs> was, yeah, he's, was he going for the hardest read ever? He was he like, you're going to come up over through. and dodge through. I'm going to hold this. It's like, no, you're going to hold this attack. That's what's happening. All right. Is it another slide charge down thing? I, I can see it coming from a mile in away. In your mind's eye, in Machete. Mind's eye, he's, he's sending you the signals. He sees a down sig finisher here with the axe. But you know what? While Machete's figuring all that out, Spectre's just catching up in damage. He might actually be able to steal the game away from Machete. No, Ooh. psych! Machete steals the game from Spectre, tying up the set one to one. That was close. That was closer than I expected with how big of a lead Machete got early on. Oh, yeah. He was having some trouble there, finishing off Spectre. Spectre was catching up. Oh, man, that's slide So both games down. have been incredibly close. Now we're tied up one-to-one -one in the set. Yeah. What's the play? Do you expect them to just keep running it back same map? I can imagine these players doing that. Uh, I, I wouldn't recommend it, but I, <laughs> I do expect it. And here we are at the same map. <laughs> Uh, no surprise, I guess. This, this, that's what these guys are going to do. Man, this is like anime protagonist and their rival just bashing heads against yeah. each other. So even though the set's tied up one to one, the, the Ogre oh. matchup is in favor of Machete right now. And, For and, sure. and even more so now as we begin this game. And Machete just has so much unanswered damage. My goodness. Oh, yeah. Switch to the axe, dude. The Lance Mirror was not working. Spectre's got to change it. <laughs> And it's working too. He's like, he's. I think he's like, you know what? I'm not. I'm not mirroring his 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 lance anymore. It's not working. And he's getting him. He's getting work done with the axe too. So this is clearly the play. Forget mirroring Machete on the lance. Yeah, he's managed to tie up most of the damage because Machete uses a lot of the aerial oh, movement on lance. Oh, like that, that ground ground. He totally was waiting for the axe recovery. Axe yep. recovery is one of the most punishable moves in the game. I mean, you, you, the movement is very expected. You can't drift it at all. You can't steer it at all. Uh, and it's got a lot of downtime. It yeah. tra the trade-off is that it has a huge hitbox and, right. oh, God, it gets kills. But but uh, Machete took perfect advantage of it. He saw the, the recovery happen, and he had the punish locked and loaded, and it worked perfectly. Um, now Machete with a stock lead is oh, taken out evaporated. immediately by Spectre, totally equalizing the stocks. And uh, man, damage Spectre isn't avoided. far off. Because yeah. look at that Spectre in the yellow. He was able to cut that one short before Machete could really get anything built. And Machete had a really big lead too. He had a huge opportunity to build up a damage lead while he had the stock advantage. But Spectre. Oh yeah. Oh no. Well, I love that. Does read. it matter when Machete just comes in and man, that platform ruined the combo breaker with that the lance yeah. on its way down. <laughs> Oh, that might be enough to knock out. Wow, Machete barely got touched on that stock. Yeah, he is spreading this lead wide open. It was tenuous before, but now it's got that strong foundation. Oh man, Spectre, he's 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 going a little ham here, unarmed. Uh, he looks desperate, man. I mean, he's a full stock behind. Machete seems to have total control of this match. But this might be the key. You know, the axe was performing better in the Lance matchup, but it seems like Machete just has the read on the movement now. Yeah, at this point, Machete is, uh, he's playing a game that allows Spectre to just run in. You know, he, he's letting Spectre make mistakes. Obviously, Spectre's desperate for a knockout right now. Machete's kind of just taking advantage of that. There's the punish. Oh That's the finish. Gosh. Machete takes another game now, up 2-1 in the set. He only needs one more game to knock Spectre out of this tournament for good. All right, so the, the Olgrim switch into the Olgrim mirror, Machete just showing pure dominance on that character. Yeah. Is this where Spectre swaps, or is this I, his I one true? Yeah, I wonder.
I would think think so. This is not the right game. This is these are not the stats we want. No, what we're looking at is this two one set right <laughs> now. <laughs> this is Machete this is, on set point. This is just get these stats oh. off the screen, guys. This is not this is not <laughs> All right, let's talk about the match that's happening behind the scenes here. Spectre switching it up to more decks. Okay, and so this is right. what we were talking about. You're right. And, the and I don't know if I answered your question, but I was totally going to say, yeah, switch it up. Because Machete switched to the mirror match, and he dominated the mirror match. He just scared Spectre off of his own main, uh, which is... Not surprising because Machete really is the OG Ulgrim main of Europe. Oh, yeah. I mean, seriously, before it was cool, Machete was rocking Ulgrim all day. He's got he the was, deed to the house. He you know, was sitting yeah, in the drawer right. back there. I mean, he, he played Ulgrim at a time where he was the only Ulgrim in the bracket. And I know that seems like obvious now, like, oh, yeah, Ulgrim gets played all the time. Machete, well, Machete paved the way for the other Ulgrims, I think. Absolutely. But Spectre, all right, so we've got Scythe and Gauntlets now, two completely oh, different weapons. Oh, that's a big punish! Spectre's oh, in no. trouble, disarmed off the side, here comes the finish! But whoa, he gets away just in time, and Machete decides, nope, nope, I'm not going to contest that anymore. Get out of here. Spectre doing a good job keeping it even right now. He might be able to take the first stock, which would just be a, a much-needed momentum shift, because I think he's lost the first stock every game here, even the game that he won. He, I think he lost that first stock on. Oh, so man, and it's it looking would do dire. Wonders for him to just have the momentum of taking the first stock and not playing from behind for once. He touches the wall just in time. Sniped. It doesn't matter. Machete had the perfect edge guard ready. Yeah, that's the thing. He forced him low so many times that the moment the changeup needed to happen, it was rock, paper, scissors, right? Are you going wide? Oh, well, land side air covers really wide. Yeah. All right, so what we're looking at here now, Spectre, he needs to get this knockout. Mordex has phenomenal signatures for it, and he's also setting up the edge guard. Is the Scythe going to be the one to get it done? No, Machete getting a little bit of that extra damage. Oh, couldn't get the gauntlets, Machete, from so far away. That's the thing. The Lance, it's got all that extra range, but especially if you dash it, that side light's so threatening. One uppercut. All right. I was wondering when that rainbow toss was going to come into play. But Spectre, he saw it coming. He knew to get out from under it. As much unarmed damage as you can muster. The down light into ground pound. But again, the side air. Machete. Man, that's like such a neat landing trick. He, Oh, yeah. He knew. So many options spent. You're not making it back. Not through the weapon toss, not through my neutral lights. So he's going to sit on the throne. Oh, Spectre's got a throne too? Okay, okay. Cutting him up. Here we go. Spectre went for the side light read. That's where you get a lot of your options. You can hit that side light and look for the dodge. If they don't go to either side, you get a gravity cancel side light immediately into a recovery. Tons of damage and potential knockout. The slide charge for the chainsaw just falling on down. That covers tons of area, but not against the wall. Spectre coming in with the Mornex. Of course, Scythe in hand. He's going to need this stock ASAP, but he's not going to have much of an opportunity to let Machete already throwing out emotes. Man, I mean, he can feel himself, right? He's up to one in stocks. He's up to one in the set. It all looks lined up and ready. Yeah, everything looking good for Machete as he's going to take it 3-1 over Spectre. And uh, he's, he's continuing on in his bracket, making me feel pretty all right about this. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, uh, he, he just seems so confident after the Legend switch. The, the Asuri that he opened the set with didn't really kind of do what it needed to be done. But then once that Olgrim popped out, it was back to his old tricks. Yeah, I mean, this is, uh, it's like you said, he's the comfort character for Machete. This is what he started off with, and this is what he's known for. So, of course, he's going to look more comfortable playing it. And then on the other side, once you force someone like Spectre, who is in a similar boat of being, like, known for playing a certain legend, when you force him off of it, then you're going to see them kind of falter, and you got to feel good, right? Like, you have that emotional victory over them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's just absolutely, absolutely huge, especially when you know you can bust that out in the lower bracket, because that's where you're not coming back. Yeah, I mean, it's do or die. Everything is so uh, intense down here, and uh, Machete gets to continue on. I think he's in the top six of things now at this point, if I'm not mistaken. That's right. Yeah, that's right. So he's going to be set up for his next opponent, but we've got another match before we get into that top six action, and we've got Swada versus Blue. Yeah, this is another big one. Like, today has just been a day of 
killers uh, doing what they do. It's Ooh. been intense. I mean, like, even to get to this spot, right, there was the matchup of Simple versus Swata to earn their yeah. spot here, and that was amazing. We were watching it on the uh, the side stream, and now we've got Swata going into blue, and this is this is another big one, another one of, like, the, the new kid versus something that's, like, been well-established in the scene. Yeah, Swata, that amazing rise throughout the last year. Uh, Blue, previously, you know, a couple years ago now, he was so incredibly dominant throughout the region, and he's still here in top eights, but, you know, he's used to consistent podiums. So you know he's scratching to try and get back there. Swata, he's been on podiums for a little while now. So new blood versus old. Where's your money? Uh, I, I think the recency uh, makes me feel in... I lean towards Swada. I, okay, I, was, okay. I was nervous about Swada at the beginning of the day. That early loss had me really concerned. Ah. But the fact that he's made the run this far, I think it, it gives a lot of reassurance. It gives a lot of confidence to the Swada fans out there. Yeah, so that's the very difficult thing. Um, and kind of the hallmark of when you actually consistently start breaking into these top eights is even if you take that early fall, the falter, you have that marathon that you need to run through the lower bracket. Not a lot of people can do it. It's exhausting. It's a ton of games. You know, your brain gets fried. But the fact that, you know, you can do that, you've been in those high pressure situations and you can maintain it for a very long period of time. That's why we find Swata here in top eight. Two, yeah, and then he's going to be going up against blue. I know we've seen some blue today, but I don't think we've seen him on the Jala unless I'm misremembering. Okay, so that's Axe and Sword. Again, low defense, but high in pretty much the other stats. So we got a lot of strength, a lot of dexterity. So there's gonna be a lot of powerful swings happening often. Yeah, she's a, a, she makes up for that low defense by being a great offensive tool. But the big thing is she's gotta win those offensive battles. And right now, SWAT is the one winning the battles. So that's recovery? just been a ton of damage and the stuffed recovery, the bonk, the sweat props. Oh do it again. God. Just keep on cycling. All right, you know what, Swata? He just had a little bit of warm up time. It's a little bit chillier out there uh, because it's winter. And now that he's warmed up throughout the day, he's looking so good. That hammer in particular, the offstage, the vertical from Swata, that's one of the things I love watching about his play. All right, so Blue has his work what? cut out for him, and Swata's looking to cut it out of him as well. What a call out there. Blue went for the standard, right? The side light and air into the jump ground pound and Swata had the perfect call out with the GC down light inside of it. Yeah, that's an interesting one just because like you have to delay your spot dodge a little bit just because of how long the startup on the ground pound is. If you do it too early, you're gonna get still caught out. And Unfortunately, he just seems to be getting caught out constantly. Swata with a two-stock lead. Man, Swata looking so good. Goes for the stomp sidelight. Didn't realize he already had that much damage built up on blue. Clearly, uh, that low defense of blue not doing him any favors. What? Oh, man, even what? turning it around. Why? <laughs> he identified the closer <laughs> corner. And he was just like, that's going to be the quickest way to an edge guard. I guess so. Yeah, it's it's so interesting. Normally, you just go for the straight forward, right? Like, it was relatively it was like centered. Such a small optimization. Yeah. <laughs> and just like that, the, he three stocks. He gets the little stock. optimizations are all he needs. Holy cow. Man, sitting up on that throne. Yeah, that's right. That's absolutely right. Swat is such a beast. Yeah, I mean, he is the European world champion for a reason. For a reason. And maybe now for a whole season. Ooh, maybe. Winter we'll see. to winter. Yeah. But for now, he's currently up over Blue 1-0, and uh, we're going back to the same map, and now Blue's like, all right, the Jala thing, that didn't really work. We need <laughs> we need a little more defense, one more defense. Like, all right, all right, everybody, I was just kidding. We'll, we'll keep the sword, the axe. You know, I got punished. That didn't feel great. So we're over on the bow. Well, for now, it's the sword game, but really, I don't know if that's the answer because we didn't get to watch a lot of blue sword play. It was pretty much the <laughs> Swata show for game number one. Man, everybody's tuning in for the Swata show. Yeah, it comes on at uh, whatever time it is, right? 4 p.m. Eastern? Did I time zone correctly? Oh, 5 p.m. Central. Yeah. yeah. Holy cow, already another stock. Well, I'm doing math in, in my head. 35 seconds in, Swata, and he's pretty healthy too. Like, he's just light orange. He's got a lot of time left on this stock. Yeah, I mean, he, he's just running away with this one. Bodvar, sure, he's got some movement speed, but this is the fastest Bodvar I've ever seen. Well, that's another thing. Swata just uses that dash movement Yo. so much. All right, hold on, hold on. <laughs> what the? He's. 
He's making it look so... It, that was two side airs, which, like, is a, a, a complete oversimplification of the fact that he was on his return back, did a turnaround to start that one, didn't care about getting the wall touch or anything like that. Like, it's SWAT like, is insane. That's the thing. If you, like, go online right now, just hit somebody with two side airs, I guarantee it's not going to knock out. They're not going to get knocked too far away. They have to be surgically placed in between the options, so that way you're starving out as many as possible. This is absurd. Is he going to three stock blue two games in a row? No, blue All having right. the consistency. Downlight recovering. Three stock denied, but there's this mountain ahead, and Swada just keeps on building on the top of it. The man who moves mountains, Swada. He's he's just making this mountain higher and higher. Right now, blue's just got to be thinking about, okay, what is, what's my game three swap? Because I think game two's already done. Oh, yeah, he knew it. He knew it, too. Dive kick away just to get back to character select. I think Swada was watching South America last night, and he was like, you know what? They went they went a little over time, and so to make up for it, we're going to speed run a little <laughs> bit of this EU bracket. Look at the double side airs. Like, again, Jeez. complete oversimplification of how cleanly he did that. Still had so many tools in the movement kit, and, and he just, he's running away with these. Yeah, I mean, these have been back-to-back hyper confident games a three stock and then basically a jv jv three stock right like that's effectively it's a it's a, a two stock with an asterisk all right here we go game number three blue back on the jolly he wants the axe again all right uh not quite sure what to make of that pick because you went from the legend that you got two stocked on to the legend you got three stocked on well I didn't get to see the the, uh, the damage numbers too much on like per weapon damage, mm. but emotionally, I feel like Blue was doing more with the axe. Okay, all right. You know, I'll subscribe to that, and it gives him a little bit of a range that can fight Swata's hammer, because Swata's hammer <laughs> oh is one of those, I absolutely love watching it, because, you know, there's usually a lot of players that play hammer kind of similarly, right? Mm -hmm. they, they figured out like the main game plan that they want to stick to. Swata, He's got a whole playbook, so he will be flipping pages from pages to game plan to game plan. Yeah, he's got his own style. Again, it, 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 I boil it down to the verticality, the way that he gets, like, D-Light, Dare Recovery so consistently. Ah. Weapon toss after weapon toss. Swada going to get another lead, but for what it's worth, Blue's done damage. Yeah, this is the closest it's been this entire set, because now he's got Swada into the red. He just needs a strong strike, which Jala has plenty of to score the knockout and tie up the stocks before things get too out of hand. You know, I, I don't think Blue remembers that Jala has some strong swipes because I haven't seen a SIG in three games from Blue. Oh, j just you wait, you know, we're gonna see a down SIG here, right? Right. I mean, that's, right? that's the quintessential Jala KO tool, right? Is that quick down SIG, unless you're Pugsy who goes in for that D-Light chase dodge down end SIG. But uh, for now, Blue needs to find any SIG. I think he's, you know, oh, that, oh no. no! Caught the movement. This One more. was oh. close. This was oh, the best that Blue was doing. And then Swata just completely ate up that stock while Blue was trying to find a way to sauce it out. Man, the way Swata takes stocks off of Blue, like, it makes me want to grab a blanket and, like, get comfortable because, like, <laughs> I just, oh, it, it hurts. It makes me feel icky. It's like, oh, man, when it rains, it pours. You just got to curl up by the fire. Yeah. Because right now, SWAT is burning up. Oh, my goodness. Blue, final stock oh. here. Tournament stock here, and it looks like it's going to go away soon. SWAT going for the style, went for the disco out in the open. Man, this is such an absolutely dominant performance from SWAT. Yeah, this is, I mean, this is showing why so many people have confidence in the SWAT, why so many people were willing to put SWAT in their top three predictions despite the early loss. Man, I don't know. D does he just absorb power? Is, is it like the longer that he's out on the field in those bracket matches, it just gets better and better? It, uh, it might be. You know, it's um, the first thing that jumped in my head is like Cell Saga, right? Like he's oh, got yeah. to absorb all of the competition <laughs> and then become super cell. That's how it goes. Yeah, yeah. I think I think that's it. Also, didn't Boo do that? Is that a common Dragon Ball Z villain thing? Of they just like take your power? Yeah, just like absorbing the character's powers and then like I guess, getting like stronger. the androids started off with that, right? Yeah. A little orb on their hand, so I got your power, and then Cell did it, and then Boo did it, and it's, yeah. I'm, s I'm starting to see a theme. All right. I well. guess when you get like <laughs> characters that are, you know, planet busting strength, it's just like, well, what if I 
took that. Yeah. And then I became the planet buster. Oh, and then I became a god. And whatever. Swato's else. just the bracket buster. Yeah, that's is, what happens. He, I mean, he, he's the god killer. Um, <laughs> Swata continuing on. So now we're getting into the top six of things. Again, we've still got the two in the top that are just chilling. Godly and Sim uh, Godly and Akno, excuse me, yep. are chilling. But still on the lower side, Hazer, Delta, and Simple are uh, now going to get to step up to the plate. Ooh, okay, so this is interesting. Hazer Delta, man, me and Photo were just talking about this. The last chance qualifier winner from last year. And then you just fast forward a couple months with no official tournaments in between. And here he is, guaranteed fifth place at least. Yeah, this is That's big. That's crazy trajectory. It, it's it's something that I was talking about uh, on my earlier block is just like, again, when you look at the PR numbers, that's a good estimate of how mm -hmm. we expect them to place, right? Sure. So coming in with a 33rd, we wouldn't have expected them to be on the top side of top 32, let alone the top side of top 16, let alone the top side of top eight. To come in with a guaranteed top six finish, Jeez. that is big for Hazer Delta. And uh, I, I suspect that if he can keep this up, he's not going to have to go through a last chance qualifier at the end of this year. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I'm just, I love the hunger. I love the drive that it shows just because it wasn't just a, oh, I win the last chance qualifier. And then similar to other folks, I take a little bit of a break in the off scene. It's clearly he's been on the grind. Yeah. I mean, he's definitely listening to the rock on repeat. It's about hunger. It's about drive. <laughs> and uh, clearly, it, it, it's about now that he performs against Blaze, his next opponent. Ooh, so this is going to be one of the toughest ones yet. You see that PR number eight, some medals on the board, lots of podiums. But uh, oh. <laughs> Sorry. that's that's the real trouble. I skipped ahead. It's Machete versus Blaze for this one. Oh, oh, we're hopping right in yeah. there. Okay, okay. I'm just excited for Hazerville. Yeah, me too. It'll be fun, and, and we'll get to catch up with that uh, later. But for right. now, Machete and Blaze. And I like this. I'm looking at the character select right now. They're doing the map banning. Mm -hmm. Machete starting out with the Olgrim. There's no Asuri experiment no. in game one. No, uh, this is uh, reminiscent to what we saw earlier. He started off with the Olgrim, and then he made the swap to the Mordex, and then he made the swap to the Asuri. So it'll be interesting to see how this one plays out. On the other side, we also saw Blaze kind of having some uh, character troubles, right? We've mm. seen him on the Sidra. Of course, we know him for the Brin. He's also played yep. around. He was starting off with the Mordex earlier today as well. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's always that theme of, well, if I have a character that can just get that one dodge read and delete a stock, because we saw that on the Sidra Cannon. It's basically, if you could take him off stage, you get that one dodge read, it was a 10 second knockout. Well, we'll see if he can get those dodge reads again as we're getting into it. Game number one, winner of this stays alive. Again, we're on the lower side of things. Setting it up, looking for the corner guard. And Machete, he just covers so much space, so oh, confident. Ho, ho, ho. 20 second knockout. Yeah, too far to make it back. Machete covering the corner with the neutral light, uh, just juggling with the neutral airs. There's no way that you're getting back on that stage against this Lance. There's just too much range. Yeah, the second Blaze went a little bit too far to the outside and started floating. Machete was like, all I need to do is hit this one ground pound. Lance ground pound's got so much force behind it. And that's the thing that we've seen in his previous sets that I really, really love is Machete. He will go for that Lance ground pound much more quickly than anybody else in the region. Yeah, he's because definitely willing to do that offstage. There's a lot of players, you know, they'll wait for the beat. They'll do the one, two, three wall touches. Okay, about now is when I should ground pound. Mm -hmm. Machete goes one, bam. Yeah, you got to be quick on that trigger. Uh, and of course, getting that early lead means that he can just maintain it. He just has to trade out against Blaze. But now we're seeing Blaze over to the cannon. This is the weapon that you were talking about. If he gets that one dodge, he could oh, get no. a stock, but he's over to the sword. Yeah, a little bit of that weapon toss trade, so he wasn't able to rearm up with it. But, you know, sword has a Ooh. lot of consistent knockout options. That ground pound, primary one of them. Yeah, I love just that kind of slip over the edge and then immediate ground pound. And Machete was not expecting it. It is enough to even up the stock, but still, Machete with the lead. Yeah, so that's something to focus on here. Oh, almost off the top, that neutral signature. But we've seen both first knockouts happening with ground pounds while somebody's on the wall. And that's the thing about this map. Crystal Temple, it's got oh. those short walls. You can cover it with so much. Yeah, really taking advantage of it on both sides. Manchete does clean it up with the X neutral light, but again, he's got all these tools for covering those edges. Like even that X down sig would be so scary because it's hard not to peek your head over those corners. Yeah, even just that little bit of slide, if you've got any upward momentum at all, you know, you're just gonna take, take a little yeah. look over and then bam, caught in the face. 
And now Blaze, a full stock behind. He's gonna need something big here, an edge guard, maybe some sort of a, oh, opportunity. Yeah, big chance. Ooh, save the dodge for just the right moment to get through that ground pound. And Machete, yes, that's right. Back to the Lance. This is where so much of the damage has come from. He's been so good with this Lance throughout today. Playing very grounded. Knows that Machete is trying to get some vertical play. You saw that recovery come in from Blaze. And oh, Ooh, he's getting oh. more. Oh! Yo, he's smooth with it. One more. One more. Get him with a three-peat. All right, he's Blaze, he is just not able to find any <laughs> safe landing. Machete's always there. He's Ooh. always there. There's soft platforms. Machete covers the ground and just knew that Blaze was going to be slipping. And Machete gets game number one in convincing Ooh. fashion. Yeah, and look at that. Not chasing. You don't, you don't chase dead people. No. Right? If somebody's not going to be able to make it back, don't give them the opportunity to get the hit into the chase dodge. Yeah, just very intelligently played. And we're going right on into game number two. Blaze on the Brin this time. Ooh, okay, running it right back to Crystal Temple. So we'll, we'll probably see a bunch more of those edge guards on the short walls. Yeah, Blaze doesn't have uh, the most edge guard tools. Like a, a good pogo can be really nice. But other than that, it's not like he's got a sig yeah. that peaks down or anything like that. Ooh. Okay, a little bit of guaranteed damage. So that's the thing about the spear on this map, though. Because those soft platforms are just about like that single jump height a little bit more, the spear downlight will actually hit somebody that's trying to land on them. Yeah, he's definitely got good coverage in terms of those soft platforms, but Machete does. Oh, look at Machete. Tonight. He's though. just chilling. He's showing his yeah. coverage. He's like, you can hit those platforms. I can too. Look at this little jump fast fall into the just Lance neutral. He's got a uh, telephone carrier uh, poles, right? He's just, he's got coverage coast to coast. <laughs> All right, looking for the extra hit. There's like that extra weapon on the side. Yeah, Blaze, quick to starve it out as soon as he got the hit. Ooh. Machete getting eaten by the ground pounds from Blaze. Stock count even up, and Blaze didn't take too much damage to get that. Yeah, he did a great job tying this up before things spiraled out of control. Last game, you know, Machete was able to really step on the accelerator and kind of push that gap. Oh. But here, Blaze is cutting it short. Yeah, Blaze found the NOS button because he is uh, speeding Oops. up. Machete is in trouble. Finally picks up a weapon, and uh, this definitely could go either direction. Oh, man. In this Axe versus Axe matchup, Blaze actually seems more comfortable. Yeah, I do think Machete leans a little bit more towards the Lance in terms of weapon preference. Oh, and Blaze. The turnaround. This is the momentum shift. He's Let's like, go. Akno did this to me like 15 times in our earlier match. I need to, I need to make sure <laughs> I know how to do this. All right, the weapon guard tried to catch Machete, but Machete so smart with the little bunny hop over. And just like that, just a little side air, and it's evened up again. But again, you got to give credit to Blaze. The swap over the Brin makes this a lot closer. Oh, yeah. I mean, last game, game one was kind of a little bit of a blowout at the end. But here we are, final stock for both players. And now he's got the spear in hand. Not finding much connection onto Machete. Yeah, even just the, the different aerial coverage that Blaze gets here, Machete was able to control so much more of the ground last game, and that hasn't seemed to be the case. Yeah, those, those nares in particular from Blaze have been working very well for him. Trying to get the dodge read. Didn't find the down light, though. Uh oh. Where's this air? Where's this air? Options dwindling. Trying to get up and over. Goes wide. No. Denied from the weapon toss. Had to get it, but took a little bit of a bonk. Set up back into the edge guard. I love those weapon tosses from Machete. Saw that he wasn't really in position, but oh, some Yo. big side airs from Blaze. One more hit. Beautiful. And Blaze. That's got to be it, right? Yeah. <laughs> Gave him a good pie present with it. It's like, you know, I, I said this before, but like the henchmen in action movies, right, where the hero's running away, driving away, whatever, and they just unload the clip with the pistol, and once it's out of ammo, they just throw the gun at them. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah, that'll that'll do it. You got to do something. You might have broke their uh, rear window, but you got to you gotta try to get something done. Just the... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you hire a QB as your, uh, your henchman. Oh, yeah, get the yeah. perfect spiral on it. Exactly. Flick the booger. All right, game three, Machete. Gonna make the swap over to the Sir Roland for game number three. 
Ooh. So that is a decent chunk, more defense. And we're swapping from that axe, where he did kind of lose the axe mirror match whenever Blaze would switch over to it. So now we've got the sword on deck instead. The one thing that will work out for Machate is he's retaining this lance. He's so good with the lance. So he should still be comfortable. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Blaze. All right. So Blaze is hanging out at this single jump height. And he's been using pogos, falling side airs, pretty much anything. Just so that way he doesn't have to be in the range of the neutral light, the down light, the side light. Pretty much any of Machete's grounded options. Yeah. I mean, that's the big thing, right? Is Machete coming in with a Sir Roland doesn't have nearly the same anti-air tool like that axe down light would have afforded him. And Ooh. the down sig, Blaze has done so many more down sigs this game. Yeah, and, you know, that is still a ton of damage. Gets the three-piece with a little fancy ender for the upward knockout. Yeah, smart decision there. You can go for the side or you can go for the recovery, and the recovery usually is done when you're more vertical than you are horizontal. Yeah, not close enough to the edge? Well, choose the other direction. All right, Machete needs to find his way back into this one. A side air would not be enough, especially oh. from this spot, and you could hear him trying to start up those side airs. Ground pound, and Machete's right back in it. That's the thing. Again, he never has that momentary pause, the wait before his ground pounds. So it's something that, you know, since a lot of other players in the region do have that, he's kind of the outlier. He beats the meta on that one. Yeah, that's going to be something that's just a raw player matchup thing, and Blaze has got to be ready for it. We've seen Blaze have his own oh, oh double ground pound. Machete backs up. Oh, the oh weapon stolen. Blaze he was just trying to sneaking deny. that one out from under him. Oh, no. Setting up the weapon starve of his own. Machete really going to be looking for that weapon. See it drop <laughs> right back there again. He wants to knock Blaze away before he goes for the weapon. He wants as much safety as possible. Yeah, trying to put him into hit stun. You saw him going for, like, down lights, nares, and end lights uh, before opting to go for the weapon pickup. And now that he's got it, he's feeling comfortable again. Goes for a recovery. Blaze with the punish. Yeah, so this is the lance. It always seems like as long as Machete's got a lance in his hand, he's winning. As I say, he just kind of tosses it away. <laughs> sure, why not, I guess. Well, to oh, be fair, he had him in that. KO percent. That's why. Go for the consistent yeah. knockout options. Because Lance, even off that side light, you know, the true combos that it has available aren't really going to knock out. Yeah, generally speaking, making that swap over to the KO tool has been the Machete play. Like, even when he had the axe, right, he was going for side light side air, uh, generally speaking. Oh. But he's just going to eat a raw side sig to the dome. Yeah. And Blaze evens it up just like that. That was, like, just enough damage to get the knockout. It looked like he was slowing down pretty considerably right before he exploded. Oh, the unarmed damage, yes. I think that's the most unarmed we've seen from Machete in a little bit. And I love the optimization with the DLI ground pound, but Blaze is chunking. He's got more optimal damage. Oh, my gosh. It's just the coverage. Neutral air, down air. He's just going to keep chopping away. How many half circles does it take to take a Machete stock? You know, phases of the moon going real fast. <laughs> Yo, Machete finds the opener, though. That unarmed side air will give him the lance. Doesn't hit oh. the recovery. Side air sets up the edge guard. Now Machete, another side air. Caught him right over the corner. Machete now going up 2-1. That looked so much like it was going to go the way of Blaze. The control, the damage he was building with the axe. But Machete found the comfort weapon. And like we've been saying, the second he's got a lance in his hand, everything is looking up for Machete. Oh, yeah. Absolutely beautiful. So Map Ban leaves open Small Enigma, Small Grey Hall, and Crystal Temple. What are you expecting? Uh, well, I, I, I admit I was not expecting the Ulgrim from Blaze. Oh. Well, then. It's like I forced you off of it, and now <laughs> I'm taking it. Now I'm it. taking it. <laughs> oh, there's a free, there's an is, open Ulgrim on is, the board? Is the seat taken? Yeah. <laughs> you left. I'm going to take it and keep it warm just for you. As we go into game number four, Blaze versus Machete. Machete, again, the comfort of the Lance. Does Blaze have a Lance in response, or is it predominantly for the Axe and the defense? So I do wonder, is that something about Blaze? Does, does he just win mirror matches? Because he forced Machete off of the Axe mirror match. Yo, is he going to force yo. him off the Lance mirror match, too? This is a whole different Lance. Machete, like, he's in the same way we're talking about the, the hammers in that earlier conversation. Like, Machete's kind of like he's he's got the classical Lance, whereas Blaze is coming in with some style, some swag with his Lance play. Woo. 
and scooping around. Punish on the signature, a little bit of extra damage. And even despite Roland's defense, Blaze has now tied up the damage. Going in for the Nair. Like you said, Blaze has gotten all this damage built up, but what it comes down to is who's going to get the KO when you see Machete. He's like, you know what? There's a sword over there. I could go for a D-Light recovery right now. Yeah, I, I guess that is like kind of the optimal way for Machete to play this character, what he's shown us. Damage build on the Lance, and then the sword for the consistent knockout options. And just like that, he's like, I get my opportunity to swap weapons back to the Lance. Ooh, he was trying to go for the deny, but again, Blaze is really good about not letting himself get weapon denied. Got the edge guard set up, tries to cover with the gravity cancel neutral light, but Machete smacking him back, setting up the reverse corner guard. And just the tiniest bits of extra credit right now for Machete. He needs to get a little bit more. Blaze playing a little safer there. You can see him kind of sitting back saying, Machete, you've got to make the approach. I know you want the Lance that's going to spawn over here. Ooh, Machete, this time mixing it Ooh. up. He went for that kind of dash through weapon pickup. I know Blaze was able to uh, just delete him immediately after, so unfortunately, Machete finds himself unarmed once again. There's the weapon spawn, has the sword in hand, getting some taps. He did get a little bit of extra credit on that second stock. Goes for the big swing, but Blaze just underneath it. Yeah, really expected Blaze to go for an aerial approach just because it's been a lot of these falling side airs, a lot of the neutral airs and down airs from last game that were setting things up for Blaze for the most part. Yeah, I mean, that's what we were talking about earlier, right, is that uh, with this um, Sir Roland, he doesn't have the most anti-air uh, tools. Yeah, that's why you kind of see him fishing with those uh, tapped recoveries. A little bit of charge on him sometimes just to change up the range, but that is, like, kind of the only real anti-air diagonal option that Machete's got. But it's working out. He's getting the damage. He's back to the Lance. Blaze has stage control. Ooh, if he had hit that side air, Machete was burning a lot of movement. Yeah, so that's the danger, you know. If he ends up fishing with those recoveries, you don't get that back even after you get hit. And if you spend it to spend one of your other jumps, okay. All right, he finds the side air. But to your point, yeah, it, it's still a burned recovery. Even if it's on stage, it, it might be a little safer, but if you never touch back down, you don't get that back. So now Machete, he's up 2-1 in stocks. He's up 2-1 in games. Poised to take the set, but Blaze is not going to make this easy. He's been dodging so incredibly well, weaving around these attacks, not giving up any extra damage. Yeah, but Machete also not making it easy. He was denying weapons for quite a while. Blaze could find the evener here. Doesn't Ooh. hit the recovery, but a side air might be enough to do it. Oh, man. Just stuffed the recovery. Blaze was trying to get cheeky with it with the, uh, the immediate dash jump into it. Machete trying to go for the safe approaches. You see those like dodge ins, those dash backs, trying to bait an action out of Blaze with the forward movement. And Blaze switches to the Ooh. axe. The down sig is oh. enough. I wouldn't have expected that, man. He was going so slow towards that top corner. And you know, diagonal knockouts, they always take the longest just because the knockout zones, they're a rectangle. Yeah, that's the, the farthest far. distance to travel and uh, had just enough force. Like you, I did not think that was going to quite KO. Now here we find Machete, he just needs those consistent knockout options. So whether he gets to set this up with the Lance, you see that signature actually trying to anti-air, no, identifying that he doesn't have that many options. Yeah, I mean, Machete with such a big lead could start fishing for some tricky stuff. Side light, side air, not gonna hit. Blaze with the down six, starting to throw out many signatures. And Machete, you know he's just looking to snipe out some of Blaze's aerial movement. Ooh. There it is! The tapped recovery, Machete with the 3-1 victory. Yeah, those quick tap recoveries, and Machete earns his spot in the top four. Love to see it. Absolutely love to see it. Bouncing around some of those legends. You know, the Holgrim was getting it done before, but this Roland was something else. Yeah, the Roland was looking good, and I'm glad he went with the Roland. Uh, I, I talked a little bit earlier about some of his character picks, where he started off with the Ulgrim, then he went over to the Mordex, then he went over to the Asuri, and there, there's like three very different mentalities with all of those. There's ah, not yes. really a shared theme. I'm glad he went with something like the Roland from the Ulgrim, where it's like, okay, I'm still going to retain this Lance. I'm not going for something completely different. And so now that sets him up. We've got more matches on deck. This is where we get to 
look at some of the Hazer Delta that <laughs> I was getting so excited for earlier. I mean, it's always fun to watch someone uh, that you weren't expecting, right? Some this, yeah. this up and comer who nobody's really seen before. Sure, again, he went into the last chance qualifier, and you'll love to see that. But at the end of the day, he was not expected to make it this far. So you love to see that underdog story. Yeah, I mean, that is just a rocket boost up to the top because, you know, uh, he didn't place exceptionally well in the world championship. Coming in as that bottom seed, the last chance qualifier, you know, kind of expected. It's a really tough bracket path. But in just a couple short months to be here, you know, guaranteed at least fifth place and definitely going to be vying for more. Uh, I don't know. What, what do you make? What do you expect from him? As much as I want to talk up Hazer Delta, we talked about the world championship it's and one person hard. walked away with the gold medal. It's going to be real hard. <laughs> He's going into Swata. <laughs> Like, this is like <laughs> as tough as it gets. I I can't believe this is lower bracket here. Yeah, this is, I mean, this is a, a very rough match for Hazer Delta. But the good news is, in yep. theory, if Hazer Delta wins this, he should be pretty comfortable for the rest of the tournament, right? He's Oh, he's, that'll be a huge confidence In theory, confidence he's taking boost. out the top seed of the tournament. So this is going to be a very tough match. But if he walks away from it victorious, that is massive. Oh, yeah. But the question is, will he be able to absorb that power or will this DBZ villain of Swata <laughs> claim yet another victim and his horde grows? Maybe he can be the Krillin, right? To just power up someone else. In the oh tournament. my God. <laughs> Give him some Senzu beans. Um, this is going to be an interesting one also because like, especially in, in, in comparison to the match we just watched where we see these yep. players who like to swap up characters and whatnot. In this one, I don't think we're going to see much, if at all, right? Swat is pretty yeah. much locked in on the Bode Var. Hazer Delta's pretty much locked in on the Taros. Yeah, that's the thing. Uh, Swat is Bode Var. That's just the hallmark. It's been tried and true. His sword is incredibly solid, but his hammer is so innovative that I, I can't see him swapping off. Yeah, this is going to be an interesting one as we get into it. It's going to be game number one, Hazer Delta versus Swata to find out who's going into the top four. We'll see. Ooh, okay, okay, loading in. Game number one, loser's quarterfinals. This is lower bracket action. Somebody is getting knocked out of here. And we're starting off in Mammoth Fortress. All right. Weapon spawn goes in favor of Swata. Hazer Delta with the hammer. When I watched him earlier, had a little bit of a uh, lead up time for him to start really finding that momentum with the hammer. Okay, nice two piece. Goes for the weapon toss there. Oh, tries to set up a little bit uh, cheeky there with that jump into immediate, you know, dodge down. I love, okay, that, that spot dodge was a very interesting decision, but I, I almost completely understand why. It's because he's the underdog, and he knows most people are going to disrespect him. They're going to go for more wake-up options ah, yes. because they think that they'll win. So that's what he was expecting. He spot dodges immediately, expecting Swata to disrespect him and go for the immediate sidelight. Yeah, good little bit of information, grabbing that as soon as possible. Definitely going to pave the way for extra conditioning options later on in the set. Swata able to score the first knockout, but Hazer Delta not far behind. He managed to push Swata into that solid, solid orange. Yeah, one thing that works well for him is he's coming in with the Taro, swings hard and heavy. It's going to take maybe a couple more hits to get this stock, but Swata Ooh. doesn't have the movement, hit the Sair hide enough, and uh, Hazer Delta's evened it up. Man, oh man. So this is absolutely neck and neck. Hazer Delta and Swata, two of the, uh, I don't know, strangest, I will say, hammer players available <laughs> in the meta because they both play, you know, not that usual style. We talk about Swata just being so innovative, but Hazer Delta, you know, he was able to crack through the low last chance qualifier and up to this point because, again, he kind of has that different style. Mm. Oh, but no. that weapon toss. Man, the chase, the follow-up from Swata, that weapon toss is showing who's the better hammer, whose style is going to win it out. My story. <laughs> All right, weapon pickup though goes in favor of Hazer Delta. Side light, side air. He's a full stock behind. He's gonna need a big play. I hope he doesn't lean too hard into the Taro's mentality of just going for N Sigs off stage. Yeah, that's that's always kind of a little bit of a mental trap, right? Because sure, yeah, it's a fantastic option, oh. and you really oh. want to hit it. You might have had an opportunity there. Yeah. But your opponent also knows that that's exactly the thing you want to go oh, for. Oh snap! Oh, tried to get the slide kick, was just shy. 
Yeah, that's again, Hazer Delta's expecting the immediate reaction from Swada and just didn't quite find it. Swada being really smart about it. Downsig was charged up and Swada had the hit. Nice weapon toss, keeps himself alive. Yeah, there's been a lot of these just, uh-oh, oh, oh, and the Mafia off the top. Absolutely crazy. That, that was an airborne start. Yeah, gravity cancels the downlight into the chase dodge recovery. Swada going up big again. Jeez, this was absolutely crazy. Just caught him right before he was able to tap and renew his options and follow through all the way. Yeah, that, that one weapon toss just set the pace for the rest of the game. Oh. And One, two. Hey. <laughs> you can see our real-time reactions to that. Just faces, jaws <laughs> Just, dropped. Oh my like, god. Uh, Gasp. Okay. Uh, again, no character swaps on these. Very clearly, Hazer okay. Delta is going to be sticking with his Taros. All right. You know, the, the start of the game was actually pretty good for him. Managed to get a serious chunk of damage. This I actually really do like. There are some absolutely terrifying options for Taros to get <laughs> to get those reverse edge guards, especially when you have such small walls here on Demon Island. Yeah, but at the same time, Swada, he's got sword down Sigon Bodvar, and again, peeking over those corners can be fatal. Yeah, that's one of Sparky's favorites. Yeah. He'll be cheering in the background, I'm sure, every single time that that sword down Sig appears. If it appears. <laughs> We've yet to see it from Swana. It's been predominantly the Hammer show, and I can't blame him. The Hammer's been looking so good. Oh, man. Again, these gravity cancel stomps. He does it at that perfect height, where it's still going to catch somebody that's standing on the ground, but it will also catch somebody as they are jumping up just a little bit higher. Yeah, that half jump height for Swana works so well, especially in, like, the Hammer and Mirror match, where, like, woo, Hazer's generally looking for the stomp. Swana gets the side air, though, but Hazer's generally looking for, like, the stomp, and being just above it means he gets a clean punish. Yeah, he has the high ground. And, uh... I think Anakin learned that lesson the hard way. It, it's a very harsh one, you yeah. know. Ooh, doesn't get the weapon toss. Oh my oh, gosh. Oh, yo, no. the continuation. Are you crazy? Oh, no. Hazer Delta's gone. Last stock here, game number two. Swada's looking to put more three stocks on the board. Bro, that. I can't believe it. That was just continuation. Okay. Yeah, Hazer Delta, okay, good job. Good job, you're getting that stock, but something's got to give. You need some major shift because Swada, not only does he have, like, these massive leads on you, but he's styling to boot. Yeah, I mean, just those quick bursts oh, in the just offstage never ends. are so brutal. He gets the wall touch. No yep, weapons for the weapon. Okay. Stomp. Oh, offstage. Couldn't go for the down air. Went for the weapon toss. Expected uh, Hazer Delta to try and recover wide on that one. Okay, the scoop up. Oh. Getting some vert. Oh, the recovery drops. Bounce off the ground again. These diagonal weapon tosses looking for the wide recoveries, but they're both opting to stick tight in on the walls. Just a sidelight. Wants the weapon spawn. Is it a D-Sig? Is it an oh. N-Sig? Goes for the ground pound. The weapon toss still has movement. Gets low enough. Geez, Swada has just been threading the needle, just getting right by each of Hazer Delta's attacks. Hazer, oh, okay. great option. I love the reaction on that. Generally, you'll see people go for a read, but he went raw reaction with the gravity cancel downlight. Oh, going for it. swindling, yeah. You knew those final options. It's like, all right, this is your last one. You need to get back now. So your path is kind of determined at this point. Yeah, when you, when you dip that low, it's like, okay, you now are forced to go straight up and Swada caught it. But really, it's Look off the this. back of these this second stocks. This was amazing. Yeah. Didn't even get to see the completion of it because they're already getting ready to go into the next one. But oh, like, man. <laughs> if I have any advice for Hazer Delta, it's uh, watch mm -hmm. the second stock. That's two games in a row where that second stock gets deleted uh, and all the momentum mm. is lost. When when they're going even in stocks, it's looking doable for Hazer Delta, but uh, once he loses it, it, it's rough. Yeah, so that that's kind of the thing. You need to be able to stand your ground, really dig your heels in, so that way, you know, Swada, he'll run you over the moment you give him a little bit of leeway. And I guess Hazer Delta has been giving him a wide berth, expecting those wake-up options, and it's kind of let Swada just always push his own game plan forward. Yeah, it gives him a lot more breathing room, and unfortunately for Hazer Delta, Miami Dome is not a good map if you're having trouble in the offstage. The fact that you can't rotate under, the fact that uh, it's it's got not the longest walls can make it so dangerous. 
And his Delta is just struggling to find a hit. And Swada, that's a 30 second knockout. He's looking clean. Yeah, Swada looking to put this one away and go into the top four. Stomp into the falling neutral air, knew how to line that up absolutely perfectly. There's the punish on the signature. Ooh. Tries to go for something real cheeky with the corner dash. Good job from Hazer Delta to survive that. You saw again the corner dash, the chase down. Swada really wanted to go up even bigger on that second stock of Hazer Delta. All right, so now we've got that sword on deck. This is where that second oh, stock snap. got deleted. It's Swada's sword every time. Hazer Delta's. All of his second stocks combined have lasted less time than like any other stock that oh, they have man. played. Yeah, it it really is. I don't I don't know. Swada, he just has that factor. That's where he identifies, hey, this is what you're going for. This is your option. I fully adapted. And then Hazer Delta tries to adapt against that for the later time. But <laughs> oh my what? God. what? What? He survived. Oh, he went back in. He had lived. He could have escaped, but he went back in. And you know what? Swada gets the W. He is going to get the 3 0 and My continue God. on. My God. Look at that. It's just so smooth. All right, so there's a lot of folks that go for the off stage and they end up. You know, uh, you spend your jumps in between because you want to not go too far away from the stage. You feel like you got to line it up. Not Swada. He just keeps on falling. He will follow with you. And then he has all those options stored up for later. It's a little bit high risk, high reward because sure, if you get caught out down below, you'll get knocked out with just a little bit of a tap. But Swada's accuracy is so incredible. 46%. He's going to tag you. That's so insane, man. What a quick match. 475 damage put out from Swada, 211 from Hazer Delta. Again, just the, the short amount of time that Hazer Delta got to experience that second and third stock. Jeez. Yeah, I mean, look, look, just the acceleration. You see it in each of those red graphs. Just they look exactly the same, except shorter and narrower, shorter and narrower, shorter and narrower. And that's the game. I wish... Okay, so that, that time bar at the bottom, it's relative to that game. But if we yeah. could compare that to like game two and game one, like oh, those man. those red bars are, they're tiny. They're, those were yeah. like 10 second stocks. Yeah, it's it's those gas pedal moments where Swada just kind of identifies, hey, you're giving me a little bit too much respect so I can push forward like crazy. I, I just absolutely love that. So Swada's going to be moving on. He's looking incredibly strong. He's got a lot of momentum behind him. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's insane. How quickly Swat is just like burned through this lower bracket. Man, yeah, so that now sets up what we've got waiting up for the next matches. See Machete taking it over Spectre. Swata 3 0 over Blue. Jeez, Machete again. Machete with three, two three ones in a row, man, that's crazy. Swata with two three O's in a row. There's a lot of momentum in that lower bracket. So there's going to be some crazy matches ahead of us, especially as we boil down this, you know, top six, top four now. Everybody's really just bite, chomping at the bit for the top. You don't want to miss it. We're going to be right back, and the action is on fire.
And we are back from that break. We are moving on into the top four of things here for the EU 1v1. We had a lightning bracket today with many lightning strikes, sometimes in the same place that science says really shouldn't happen, but it actually does. Some incredible things happened in the bracket earlier today, but we're now focused on the top four. Joining me here on the desk is Tazaraki. Lovely to be here with you today, sir. Yes, Sparky. It's been a while since we've had a block together and for grands. We are not actually in grands yet, but top four for, for Europe. This is going to be so exciting. We've got some, for for how crazy the bracket started out at the beginning of today, It's a, it, it, has, it has willed down to kind of what I was expecting. It has normalized. It has normalized, but the, oh man, the variance at the very beginning of today and the fact that SWAT and Simple had to happen, with, hold on, I gotta double check. Did that happen before top eight? Did what? SWAT and Simple? Yeah. yeah I'm, it, I'm was, just, it was I'm a top eight I'm, qualifier match on the loser side. Simple loss, therefore not making wow. top eight, which is going to be rough for the PR. It's going to be even That's rougher true. for the seed. Yeah, but that is great for SWAT because that was like his bracket enemy for all of the previous year where he was finally able to get that win of BCX. So SWAT is in the lower bracket against Machete. And then Akno versus Godly in the top side of the bracket. These are going to be some crazy matchups. Um, I know that there's a little bit of uh, hesitation around giving Akno that top three place or even predicting that he's going to be winning the event after his performance here at BCX. But he's been looking pretty phenomenal on the Koji. He hasn't changed the legend. He's just... Being Akno and doing it better than, well, we've seen him in recent times. Definitely. Akno today started off with that sort of question mark on everybody's mind. Still coming mm -hmm. into this PR number one, but also coming in at seed number three. That means he's going to have a little bit tougher part of the bracket. Mm -hmm. That means normally the way the seeding works is like you have a top chunk of the bracket, you have a bottom chunk of the bracket. The number one seed is on the top chunk. The number two seed is on the bottom chunk because they're not supposed to face each other for a really long time. Yeah, but when you're like seed right. three, you're going to be on one of the sides of the brackets with the one and two person. Yes. It, you'll run into him a little bit later, but still, you're going to be sort of on the side with the big man on campus. We're getting mm. into this game ready to go. It is Akno versus Godly. We're going to have a Koji showdown. Oh, this is exciting. All right, Godly versus Akno. For game number one on Mammoth Fortress, the weapon goes over to Godly. Akno gets the first hit, and it's Bow versus Bow here at the beginning. Let's see. Oh, man. I'm... All right, this is a great start for Godly, but I really don't know what to expect. Okay, oh, okay. oh no way. When Godly hits you with a combo and Akno returns the same thing and adds one extra hit there at the beginning, that is exciting. Recovery on the way back up, and Akno's taking the lead here in game one. Akno's playing with some swag here, and I'm going to do my best TWK impression here. It's yeah. Bows at Dawn. <laughs> Nine out of ten. That was a great. Thank that was you. I, I honestly feel like I'm casting with TWK. That's probably going to be an upgrade for you. So I won't be, I won't <laughs> okay, be able right. to keep that up for that much that. longer. All right. But Akno might be able to keep up this pressure onto Godly, continuing Ooh. as he picks up the sword, gets Beautiful the D light dodge. side air, looking for the KO. You see him chasing pretty deep. Yeah, but that platform gave some great uh, coverage for Godly's recovery until that D light recovery comes through, and Akno takes that first stock, juggles the weapon a bit, delays the next spawn, and gets a side light D light. Oh, Ooh. the big. Mid gravity cancel neutral light like, catches Godly off guard, and that is Akno just popping off with the bow here on the second stock. Godly misses his neutral stick, and Akno's really styling here. He's playing uh, with so much swag on this. It was a beautiful change up with that gravity cancel neutral light that he pivoted instead of the neutral signature that we mm. saw from the beginning of the game. Still has the bow in hand. There isn't yet oh. another weapon spawn in case he wants to go sword v sword, but I bet he just wants to stick with this bow. Yeah, Akno has done a a crazy amount of gravity cancel light attacks in neutral where he's been catching godly off guard and then turning it into a combo the neutral light punishes him from being on the platform backs off waits for godly to come back down and oh he went for a weapon throw pickup he doesn't get the weapon but done okay no all right misses the ground pound that time oh, he does it oh he picked him up with that i was wondering if the ground pound was going to be able to hit if he was going to pick that one up he clinched it got the stock now he has a two oh, stock Akno. lead godly what? unable to take out Akno's first stock all right Akno. All right, the Eli recovery comes through. Akno has just been phenomenal. His movement's fantastic, and he's doing these, like, uh, hit-and-run tactics with the bow neutral light, where he's just hitting Godly in a moment where he knows that he's in the air, but he doesn't go too far for it. And now Godly trying to equalize off right side of the stage. It's sword versus sword. Akno has been doing a really good job matching oh, the weapons nice. from Godly, but he gets the dodge down, another that ground nice. pound. I think Akno touched. He does dodge that D light, and he makes it back, but Godly is so far making this comeback look possible as he has just been unstoppable here on his final stock. 
Agno's recovery back to the stage was so good there in multiple situations, like one right after the other. Yeah. He saved his dodge for the absolute perfect time. He used his recoveries, his jumps, everywhere exactly when he should so that he had a dodge when he needed to. It was perfect execution on that. I can't. Agno's the only person that would fast fall gravity against a neutral light with like one jump left and not get punished for it. We've got Sword versus Bo here at the end, and Agno does get by the weapon throw. Godly. Getting that recovery gets the knockout. And I, I want to remind you that we're two minutes in the game and Godly was on this stock, this much damage versus three of Akno's stocks. And now it's equalized here. So this is pretty great from Godly. And Akno seems to be having trouble now that he's been stuck to the sword. Godly has a lot of momentum on his side here as he's getting it ever closer. It's not going to take too much more before they are dead. Even that hit did send Godly deeper into the orange. Akno is still Ooh. in the yellow. That sidelight. I think one more hit and Godly's going to be in the red, which means Akno is going to start looking Ooh, for that nice KO. Dodge. Nice dodge there. Yeah. The weapon spawn was available. It's a sword for Godly. All right, Daylight Recovery comes through. Akno sticking to the sword. Weapon spawn could come in. We'll see who goes for it first. Akno has been opting to stick to the weapon. He goes for the downline afterwards, and Godly catches the landing, but the weapon throw misses. Akno also misses. Weapon spawn in favor of Godly, and now Godly could look for a down to nice. Oh, the neutral six snipes. Oh, it's anybody's game. Daylight Ground Pound oh. whiffs, but the neutral light hits through as Godly's ground pound doesn't hit, and Akno, does he want to go for that weapon? I don't know. All right. Who's it going to be? I think Daylight Recovery does it with Bo. It, okay, I don't know if it, it does, just because of that 45 degree angle. He Ooh. does have the sword now, so a delay oh, recovery on the up. sword, I believe, will definitely, if he picks it up on the soft platform, oh, weapon toss for that sure. does hit. Look how far he got sent. Tazza, Godly, over on the edge. Oh, Godly could come back oh, to the stage. Oh, that was so close. Bow down sig here, I think, would do it, because of the weapon throw instead, and no dodge after the weapon throw, expecting that to hit. Godly gets caught off guard. Recovery from the sword takes him off the top. Really close game one. After what I, I I'm glad I didn't say the words, because it would have been Caster Curse, and now it's just actually a really good match where I was going to be like, oh, Akno's on the verge of three-stocking him because that's not what happened towards the end. Godly really came online there. And uh, yeah, we're going to be going to a game number two where the damage differential is 15. It was, that was so close. Very close between those two. That includes the sword as well. If you just, actually the bow as well, if you just look at mm -hmm. that weapon specifically, it's going to be 312 coming out from Godly to 319 from Akno. Look at the damage graph so there at the both end. of them had kind of the, the same wave. idea, but yeah, look at that. Over half of the last game was spent on Godly's final stock. Yeah, that was that was an incredible, incredible tenacity. And now we're going back to Mammoth Fortress with the same legends, and I'm a little worried. Let's see how this plays out here. Akno had such a crazy performance opening up the bow. When he went over to the sword, it felt like Godly was just dismantling him. And now that the sword's been opened up with this game instead of the bow, it could be a very different opening, as Godly has just been winning. Ooh. All right, Akno finally gets through. And that's the thing is, you can really never count on one or the other here. Like, obviously, we saw the comeback last game. It didn't actually lead in the victory, but we did see a massive comeback coming out from Godly last game. But the first of it started kind of good for Godly, mm -hmm. but then all of a sudden, everything turned, and Akno had these amazing strings, these three hits, these four hits, beautiful signature usage in it as well to get the first stock. Recovery coming out. Godly still has the lead here as he's doing the juggle in air strings with that sword still maintains the sword in his hand as Agno swaps over to the bow that was the weapon that both of these players relied on more this game but at least so far Godly's going for the sword Ooh, neutral light hits okay we're trying a better reaction from Agno with the ground pound okay, that, that is that was some stellar weapon guard again then Agno was just like wait a second I can pick this up he knows how far <laughs> he, he, he reaches his far. hand over the edge he picks it up swords picked up dodge in place okay Godly went for the recovery there doesn't hit all oh, that that dodge was Pretty well timed. Okay, how is Akno still alive? Dodge is right arm through. Recovery. Here comes the bow. Oh, that downlight. You know Godly wanted that. You know he wanted that one too. Oh. He's searching for those downlights so we can get the oh, true combo follow-up. <gasps> I can't believe he went for the ground pound over a recovery that might have KO'd because they picked up so high. Wow, okay. Finally, Godly finishes off that stock. Akno went, he went for the diagonal chase dodge. Unarmed Nair too. He thought that the ground pound was going to bounce him off the stage that high. It just it was a little bit off, but the daylight recovery from there will pay off as Akno got so much extra damage towards the end of that stock as Godly just could not close it out. Damage numbers have to already be so incredibly high after that one. And Akno with that first neutral light. This is where I feel like he's going to have a little bit more comfortable of a time against Godly. Akno's bow has definitely looked the best in this matchup so far today.
Seen backing up just a little bit. Few whiffs here and there. Not too much punishment coming out from Godly. That weapon toss isn't really going to do anything because there's no immediate follow-up afterwards. So it's just a little bit of damage, a little bit of like a hiccup getting in the way of some of your major momentum. But still, Akno is definitely getting the better of all of these trades. It's one hit at a time that he's building up, pushing Godly deeper and deeper into the orange. And they're trading one hit for one hit, or it's like two hits to three hits of Agno. Oh, oh Godly no, actually pulled it. out of it. Still yeah. going to confirm the edge guard. Godly has the lead. I wonder if Agno wanted to get a little bit more height before that down air input came out, because he like stopped his jump momentum. And then I was just say, Godly, look out a free edge guard over the edge there. But uh, Akno now back over to the sword, trying to get this edge guard. Gravity cancel sidelight. Okay. Oh, he kind of burned that GCD like really early. Almost like he was using it for a bait, but I'm not quite sure why he would be That's doing sorry. that. There's a GCD sick picking it up perfectly as Godly came right through him, turned it around, grabbed it. That's the KO. Akno still a little bit behind. Oh. He is in the yellow, is at weapon advantage, but now Godly has the sword in his hand. Every hit Godly makes is going to do just a little bit more damage than when he was on armed already with the lead nice neutral light there Akno will be in the orange pretty soon there's the neutral light that does it oh delayed gravity cancel side light there weapon throw down d light cider puts him off the side of the stage sides like punished by a down air godly gets hit by the recovery on the way back up neutral light connects Akno for some reason i thought he was going to koji down sig for sure that would have been not the play but <laughs> but it felt like the follow-up to do after neutral light at that amount of damage golly now guarding that Ooh, new weapon that there's a both close. primed for Akno, but Akno favored the sword oh. oh ouch that was that was a series of unfortunate decisions for Akno on the left side of the stage there the jump the dodge down everything that was one time where he burned that dodge really, yeah. really early compared to what we saw in the first game with him using them perfectly. We're gonna see we'll it see here. It here towards the end. Yeah, I think he dodges. There's that dodge. He dodges towards the stage, which yeah. really lines him up perfectly for Godly's ground pound. There was twice th twice in that game where I really felt like Ekno gave, like, gift wrapped a, a, a free edge guard to yep. Godly there. I, there. There's more to it than than it sounds like in, in, uh, in Brawlhalla, obviously, but for for Godly versus Akno, I, 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 the most I can say is that Akno's offstage felt a little, little weak, a little strange. Because both of those times, I think it was off of the bow down air on the right side of the stage, used it too early, canceled his jump momentum. Godly just hits him with a down air. That's the stock. That time, he dodges super early towards the stage. There's no way you're missing a sword. Ground pound there. Two, Godly now takes one, the lead. Uh, and we are going into game uh, number three with Godly and Akno on both of these Kojis here. Wow, they're just going at it. And Akno starting off real strong with Ooh. double recoveries. Okay, <laughs> Akno did not want to touch the ground. Now they are tied 1-1 in this set. Oh, are we having a little Godly lag moment? Akno being very nice, giving him a moment to catch his breath there. You saw the taunt coming out signaling that the lag was over and they can resume normal play, but it seemed like some of the life was out of Akno's play last game, and not just because he lost. Yeah. You saw the confidence still there. He was throwing some gravity cancel signatures, going for a few kind of wild, flashy things, but really none of them hit. And I wonder if that took some of the wind out of his sails. We'll see going into this one. I mean, obviously, yeah. you called it in the very beginning. He did not want to touch the ground, so he was still burning those dodges for a gravity cancel really high up in the air. Akno is still in the lead here. Godly's bow is out on the table. Akno's sword was just disarmed from him. That Ooh. is going to be a free punish for Godly. He didn't want to go for the signature. Hit. I don't think he was confident in actually getting the KO. He needed to build up a little bit more damage so he could then pick up the sword, get the KO off the top with the recovery. Yeah, there's some classic Akno maneuvers, um, in particular, bow neutral air, into a gravity cancel neutral sig, where he tries to read the direction that an opponent will try to fastball through, as it's the left or the right. Great job with that edge guard there. But you're right, Akno's gone for a lot of those maneuvers and none of them have paid off yet. And I think you are correct in saying that that's taken the window of his sales in here. And Godly getting that first stock after being at a deficit with the that recovery was a great catch. And now Akno and Godly are tied set, tied stocks, tied in damage. Godly having the advantage here with that ground pound, double ground pound, oh, no recovery, Godly. that's oh. it. Oh, he dodges through. I didn't know if he was going to have frames. I didn't know if he was going to come back off of cooldown quick Godly's enough, still but going. he did for Akno's sake. Oh. Godly is building up so much damage here. I don't think he was really ready to pick up that when he went for the Nair rather than going for like a recovery or anything like that. And it's interesting that we're seeing both of them all of a sudden make the departure from the bow onto the sword. First game mm -hmm. was bow dominated for both players, but 
now we're seeing the swap. 428 damage from oh, Godly's sword. 225 from Akno's sword. That You're seeing the swag coming out from Akno as he's now evened up this game. Yeah, and that we were talking about the, the gravity cancel neutral sig follow-ups. That time Akno finally got one. It didn't lead to a stock in the down. Six not going to either, but he could take the lead here almost off the back of the bow. It's interesting. Um, when 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 casting Brawlhalla games, I, I tend to look to see if a character, uh, if a player is favoring one weapon or another on a character. But I actually think that in this match between these two players, they're just worried about weapon damage. I've noticed this a lot, like when Akna was juggling the weapon. So every time that I can trace, it's like, okay, he actually kept the weapon that was the healthiest. It was like the most recent. He had taken the least amount of damage on it. The delight recovery evens up the game one to one. So See I think that's juggling. interesting. He I, has the choice. Goes for the bow. He goes swaps back to the bow. Yeah. Yeah, because the sword was the oldest weapon on the stage, which is cool because I have in the past criticized players for when juggling weapons, sticking with the one that had like a bajillion damage on it, and they get hit by like a side arrow that's just gone out of their hands. That is an interesting another level to look at when you're yeah. talking about weapons more than just like, ooh, I would like to play sword here, or ooh, I would like to play bow yeah. here. Yeah. And we see that coming into play a lot when it's like, oh, I'm going to juggle two bows mm -hmm. and pick the healthier one. But now we're seeing an additional layer on top of that when you have two different weapons. Yeah. Oh man, this is so close. This, this, it's not even a game five situation. I can feel the, the, the intensity here because it is last stock and whoever takes this brings it to match point. And that's so much more comfortable in a position to be in than the one that's at a deficit. Godly with the bow picked up. Dashes forward, tries to bait something and Akno actually punishes nice him for Two side lights, neutral light. Oh, I thought he was neutral sticking here for sure. Oh, oh. Akno. His momentum it. at the end of this game, it's bow v bow. It kind of started out that way, and Akno came out on top. Godly going in at the Ooh, weapon disadvantage. That was such Akno a fast swipes delight. that one. He picked it up, and the animation of the weapon spawning didn't even finish before the gravity cancel down that came out. He was that quick about it. Neutral air, one more of those in the bow at that length, that's it. It's because they were both so focused on the weapon advantage and getting yeah. that weapon. Akno knew when he was going for it that Godly was also just completely sprinting to pick up that weapon to give himself the weapon advantage. So coming out with that downlight immediately, waking up that once he grabbed that weapon spawn, that was a great idea from him. Akno able to take it. Like you said, it's match point for Akno. It's 2-1 in favor. Now let's see if we get a change of scenery here. We've been on Mammoth Fortress all the time. I don't Although think I, we will. I am seeing a change in Legend though. And Godly is locking in something that he played earlier on in the day. It's going to be the Rayman for game Three, number four. Two, so this is with Godly's back against the wall. Doesn't want to go into the lower finals and he believes that Akno has now, he's he's, he's claimed the the the, uh, the title of Koji Mirror Match Champion, right? Yeah, like, Godly okay. has relinquished that. Yeah. He recognized that the better Koji is Akno. Oh, and Akno, I think he's taking that and he's running with it, but we have to think about that axe that's in Godly's hands. Yeah. He hits two, three hits, compare that to like the six or five that Akno throws out, and they're still basically even. Yep. And every side light and air that Godly goes after there is going to be great. Oh, Akno's okay. been getting a lot of The mileage. swag is back. The swag oh, is back, baby. Off the gravity cancel the side light, and then the follow-ups afterwards gets the recovery and hits him on the way back to the stage. Dodges in place, but Godly doesn't get the punish down air, but the down air returns with his own neutral light hits. He's going for the down stick here. And it's crazy because if you look at their health, they're pretty Ooh. similar. Even though we've seen a lot of styling from Akno, we've seen a lot of lengthened strings mm -hmm. coming out from Akno as well. But again, look how far that side air sent him. That oh. would have been a KO if it was the other <gasps> way. Godly what? dips oh. out of the way, the clash no out of the stage, and Akno's going to fall. That is crazy. What unfortunate knockback on the clash there for Akno. When they went in the opposite directions, Godly was sent in the direction that was closer to the stage. He uses that dodge at the last second to touch. And they both almost go down, but godly, no, he comes out on top. And now in that edge guard scenario, Akno trying to equalize the stocks here. Nair hits, recovery misses, and godly just needs one silent Nair to make the stock advantage worth it. And that neutral, it's a great start. Oh, there it is. Oh, he's getting way more than that, Taz. That down air is going to bounce off the stage, cut a little bit of the momentum. Nice. I was wondering if Akno was going to be a little bit too deep in the push off column to pick up that ground pound while godly was right on the wall. He was still able to pick it up, put it in like that perfect spot to where if godly was on the wall, he gets hit. If he fades off just a little bit to avoid it, he gets hit. Yeah, it was a uh, it was pretty perfect timing too as well at the spot because if Akno did the ground pound any sooner, absolutely you got hit by the axe recovery there. You had the time that pretty well, and Akno gets it down here comes through from Godly, neutral light hits, and Akno waiting for that weapon spawn, guarding it with the bow, doesn't decide to switch over to a new weapon, and Godly whiffs that neutral light. Still in the lead though, that nair comes out pretty far off the stage, and that ground pound, oh, that could be huge. He's gonna go under, completely get away nice. from that. Doesn't want to take a second one, because you know, getting hit by two bow ground pounds, even when you're in yellow, that's all but a death Whoa. sentence. He's gonna Whoa. burn that dodge. It was a what? bait. He baited it so well, not even for like a massive punish wow. of any major move. He just tossed his weapon up 
saying, I know what you're going to do. Yeah, I, for a second there, I thought that Akno beat it with the Nair. Oh. oh, he spot dodges the weapon throw from Godly and doesn't have enough drift to make it back to the stage. And now Godly is on the verge of bringing it to game number five on the Rayman. Ooh, doesn't pivot the side stick. That's an easy punish for Godly. Gets a side light Nair after the neutral light. Oh, Godly, That's, Godly oh. has got so many of these on fresh stocks, too. Neutral light, side light Nair. So great. Now, Agno's still definitely in this, but right now we're on the way towards a game five. I think we can still swerve the car and take the exit, giving Agno the 3-1. But as of now, our uh, Google Maps app is taking us to a game five. Yeah, we're definitely not getting lost in the way there either at this rate. Godly, uh, with that D-Light recovery, waiting for the weapon to spawn. Gauntlet's picked up. We haven't seen I was, too much of his gauntlet. I was going to say, all. is this like literally the first time we've seen it? Yeah. I, I, I know for sure we haven't seen any gauntlet signatures. He tosses those up. Maybe he can go in for a side sig or neutral sig here. Uh, Rayman, neutral sig on gauntlets is basically exactly the same in function as, as the Koji Absolutely. neutral sig. The difference being that uh, you change the reach. Uh, I guess it's a little wider, but there goes. Akno gets the recovery, takes him off the top, and now it's one-to-one -one where I feel like these two players have been consistent enough that I'm comfortable saying Golly's at a huge lead. Akno would have to get a crazy series of reads to make this happen. Now, I think based on what we've seen so far, lucky for Akno is Godly has gauntlets in his hands, and we're seeing Akno completely control everything here. Godly now in the orange. He's still in the lead against Akno. All he's thrown out is the weapon toss so far. I haven't seen too much damage oh, just is... yet. So many whiffs coming out. Uh -oh. Neither player able to capitalize until that side air from Akno's bow. He's, he's going to continue to have weapon control that takes away the axe that godly could have picked up just now here it comes and now is where i'm worried now yeah. is where i'm going back to i think godly probably has this i feel like Akno. if anything i don't know how you do this you bait godly to go for a weapon throw because oh, oh that's oh, that all right banks all right him. And we are not turning around the car. We're going to be heading straight towards that game five. Yeah. No stops along the way. Ooh. You know, when I said bait the weapon throw, I did. I guess I implied. This is so crazy. I implied dodge it. That was sick. That 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 was so cool. And I oh, he was, was actually so, so close. close to getting the nair yep. to get the chase dodge afterwards. I didn't realize that. Wow. Oh, yeah, that's spot dodge. I wonder. I think Akno was thinking. Because if you dodge into the wall, you lose iframes. Yes. But the second that you touch it, and I think he was worried about that happening, which is why he went for the spot dodge. He just didn't quite expect himself not to have the drift to make it back. Yeah, and there now, definitely was uh, overall a slight mistake on his part where he believed yeah. one thing that happened to be incorrect. He also, I think, could have dodged like up and diagonally or even just like a straight up, maybe tossed his weapon and gone for the unarmed down air to get you closer to the wall. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of ifs, ands, or buts, but these kids got guts, and they're going to keep going into that game five to see who is going to take it? This one's definitely yep. a nail biter, and it's a very lovely set that we are getting to watch firsthand here in the winners' finals. Yeah, yeah, it's a set that we really just haven't watched before. This kind no, of they set, literally right? have like zero zero against one yeah. another in both official and community tournaments. So it was interesting to see. I, I what, what one of the most exciting things game for me at least when I came to the set was watching Godly uh, uh, concede the Koji yeah. mirror matchup, and Two, now going over the Rayman one, and really doing a great job on it. And it was it was almost entirely on the axe. I know that you and I were both very surprised to see that Rayman had Gauntlets as a weapon. Because <laughs> that, that, that was like, you could have fooled me after game number four. And now it is game five match point. Winner of this goes into the winner's side of grand finals. And Godly staying with the Rayman against Akno on the Koji. As we open up with a slight lead for Godly here on the Gauntlets. And Akno just takes it right back with two recoveries and oh. there's a side light. He's been so good with that this set so i wonder if there is a weapon spot on the field now i expect to see godly swap over that axe but there is the possibility that we'll see what he did with the koji where game one was bow dominated and then both players actually swapped yeah. onto the sword i don't know if we're going to see that from godly's rayman here he is getting absolutely mixed by Akno oh, here but, but the axe game recovery. changing opportunities that axe has is going to yep. give him the stock the dodge was still on cooldown didn't get it back in time axe recovery is very good and when he caught him in that position there, getting that spike on the back and oh, that was just it for Akno. He was in complete control up until that moment. And now Godly has an opportunity to do what he does best. And that's hit neutral light and a side light in air. That is like, that is what he's done every time he's had a stock advantage here on the Rayman. And he's looking for it, but Akno is trying to stop him from getting it started. Weapon throw comes through, Gauntlet's picked up. That's the stock for sure. D-Light recovery off the top. Akno equalizes without taking too much damage and primes another bow this time around. Uh, oh, but that weapon spot was so perfect. And if you're godly, that's going to be an axe. So even though he did die there, he died with gauntlets in his hands. So it's yeah. sort of like a Koslik situation that's where he'll pick up that hammer on Scarlet, 
die with it, and that means his next weapon, when he's fresh, is going to be his more comfortable weapon, his stronger weapon. In this case, for Godly, it's the axe compared to Kostelix's lance. Ooh, weapon tossed downwards from Godly, trying to face something from Akno. There's the neutral light, but Akno fades away. Oh, okay. two of those, dude. That's like Runs right 38 back damage it. almost. Okay, that's three. Weapon throw comes through, falls to the nair, picks up the gauntlets. Oh, but the D-Light -like ground pound. Akno doesn't try to go for anything else. Oh no, okay, when you're unarmed versus gauntlets, I know it it, it, look, <laughs> it looks like a fair matchup, oh, it's not. Oh, he absolutely mixed him, bro. He Oof. sliced and diced him, sent him to his death. Just a little bit over two minutes into this game, Godly with the axe is so scary. It seems like he was uh, definitely happy <laughs> to concede the Koji Whoa. battle. We saw Akno, I believe, hit with that exact same thing earlier. I can't remember which opponent that was. so it was. scary. And Godly like did the like, second jump, and then the yeah, fastest he, possible he, he knew that fell. move. He, he was 100 like, percent knew that move because I think Godly hit that as well earlier yeah. today. That was scary. Akno's trying to equalize. He's been doing so good, but when he's at these stock deficits of not taking too much extra damage, but Godly is getting Akno with that. He dashes forward, he goes into the weapon throw charged animation, tosses it straight down, immediately picks it up and gets the neutral light afterwards. And Akno's gotten hit by so many of those. And that sort of recovery is not going to do it, but a Nair does. Takes him off the top. All right. Match point, last stock situation. Akno severely damaged. And he's going to need a few more hits than just three on the bow to be able to bring this back as Godly picks up the gauntlets and looks for that Nair, pummels him down to the ground with the down air, but Akno with that sidelight pickup neutral light gets something on the board. Oh, nice jump over that weapon toss. Yeah, he also huge. gets the weapon spawn and it's the axe. It is yeah. going to be very tough for Akno to bring this one back. Godly should be very confident in these shoes right now, even though his feet are not attached to his body on that Rayman. <laughs> oh, dive kick gets the jump back. Weapon, Akno. He's his weapon choice. There were two spawns right there, Taza. Yeah, yeah. That was, that was perfect for Godly. And he's going to... Will he juggle this weapon spawn? No, he's looking for the neutral light. I think axe neutral light, if he catches him here, catches him. Oh, there's no way. Okay, that's it. Godly just took out Akno. Game five situation. The rumblings in EU in the offseason have been that Godly is quite possibly the best EU player. And despite zero tournaments for the past year, or really in his entire career almost, mm -hmm. He's taken the first steps. I don't even want to say the first steps. He took a nice big old leap into proving that they that may yes. be the case between these two players. I mean, when you take down Akno in winners finals in an official tournament, that's a pretty that's good big. That's a, that's pretty that's good big. proof, right? That's that, that's that's enough to convince me. I mean, at the very least, he's top two in EU right now. If we're just looking at this tournament alone for 2022, so wow, what a performance from Kali on the Rayman there against Akno. He wins it three to two, and it's pretty confident. He didn't yeah. have a lot of damage on that final stock. I don't know if you caught the graph. Those at home, I don't know if you caught the graph, but the final stock of damage taken for Godly was not very tall. Mm -hmm. He still had some room to go. So I think if these two meet again, possibly in the grand finals, then... Yeah. If I'm Akno, I am scared of this Rayman. Despite all of the times or the few times that we've seen Akno get knocked down into the loser's bracket to then come back up and win, I would still be very scared of that Rayman. Yeah, absolutely. And I didn't feel like uh, in the previous matchup when it was Koji versus Koji, I was leaning towards like, okay, when Akno has bow, he has advantage against both Definitely. of the weapons that Godly was playing with. But when Godly switched over to the Rayman, I never really felt like that momentum was shifting. It was like Akno's losing stocks, barely clawing it back to even, and he's losing stocks, and he just ran with that lead the entire time. And not a, there wasn't a single moment on the Rayman that I felt like Godly was vulnerable. And that's the crazy thing is right away, yeah, right out of the gate, he swapped to Rayman straight away. The second he got that ax in his hand, he was getting to chop, and he was doing that damage. He was finding those three hits, like you were talking about, the mm -hmm. end light into the side light nair. He was just lot. completely destroying Akno with that, yeah. and that is very scary. No warm-up period whatsoever. He was ready to go. Yeah, so now... Matchup coming up. The player who wins this uh, this match is going to be fighting against Akno in the lower bracket for lower finals, right? To get that potential rematch against Godly. I know Godly's taken out a lot of the players that, are, are, that have been remaining in this bracket. We have Machete versus Swada that's coming up. Now, Swada already getting through simple. I think it was like you said it was for ninth, right? So that, yeah. that, that was a matchup that I was expecting to see in top four. But now we have Machete, who... Uh, Machete is an interesting story. I was talking about this with Foda yesterday in South America, where I feel like, at least for me... Uh, in, in South America, Fiend is like somebody I always expect to get top three, not really getting past third. Machete is also one of those names where I expect to be in top four in every EU tournament, but never take the entire event. And I'm excited to see how he's going to be playing here against Swatter because Machete's path has been a, an interesting one. And he has made it this far now. Might as well keep going. And being up against Swata is probably not who's expecting to fight at this point in the tournament. 
after Swada going down so early in the bracket, Duke made the swap to take Swada out of the top three, put oh, Machete yeah. into his top three. Ooh. And I don't know why, but I didn't even think about Machete at that point. But hmm. then when Duke said that, I was like, yeah, that's a really good pick. Yeah. Like, that's not a bad pick whatsoever. If you're going to put replace Swada with someone, definitely after that first early loss in pools, Machete is not a bad choice whatsoever. He is definitely one of those players that are always in the conversation for a top four, if not maybe a possible top three given the right day. And here he is opening up on the Olgrim going against Swada, who is, of course, on the Bodvar. Now, Machete does have, right? that reported Roland that he, he brought out uh, against Blaze. That'd be interesting to see if he brings up against Swata because so far Swata hasn't been nearly untouched on this first stock. Lance picked up for Machete and Swata chased him all the way off stage. Gets hit by that side air. Down light whiffs, neutral light whiffs, and Machete gets a good two hit punish onto Swata as he starts evening up this game. But D-Light down here chasing along the platform. Swata is just trying to get this first stock as soon as possible. So we're seeing Swada come into this. He definitely has the lead early on in this game. Now, this is not the Swada I would have expected given the early loss in pools to my man, baby boy, Daniel. But then Swada has really gone down into the loser's bracket and absolutely leveled up 100%. He had some close games down there as well. If you're looking at his progress, there was like, he was 3-1 against 720 Polyshot. He went 3-2 against TM and then 3-1 against Simple. Now that he's top eight losers, it's 3 O's baby he's cruising he's bruising and he has his eyes set on grand finals and if he makes it there i think that turns swada's lower bracket run into the most impressive of you today i think he actually yes. beats blues it, it would be yeah and i will i will tell you the exact thing so swada makes it to grants he beats blues record of 13 losers bracket wins at 14 and Ooh. if he wins he sets the record higher at 15. that would be insanity machete trying to end his first stock of Dude, this, I'm telling you, oh, ever man. since we started seeing Swada on stream in the loser's bracket, looking up at the top right of your screen and seeing 3-1, sometimes ending in a three stock, it's that is common. not a surprise anymore. Yeah. That is just a regular. It's just routine for Swada at this point. He has just been on fire since knocking the lower bracket. Uh, and Machete has yet to figure out how to end the stock. Okay, down air, even bouncing off the stage had enough knockback to take him down off the bottom blast zone. That is a... Uh, that is an impressive amount of damage that Swada racked up on himself here. Now that first, uh, that weapon spawn comes in, hammer picked up. That's exactly what Swada wants to see. And Machete with the lance gets two hits through, three in. All right, this is looking really nice for Machete now after those double nares. Side oh, lights down it air. Okay, it has just been untouched in there. Finally, Swada breaks the pressure. And Machete has to be loving those lance changes that give some more consistency to the, the where the light. setup is off of that sideline. Yeah. To have some more follow-ups that you can feel safer going for absolutely side air hits side air return oh, with the bounce almost got the stock oh does he go for the ground pound here no he was for a side air hoping that swatter was going to come up above the platform lance picked up could go for a neutral signature here but instead just satters him off weapon throw all the way up and that ground pound whiffs. Oh, Machete doesn't even want to risk going against Swada unarmed there. And that could cost him. Yo, that was a bold choice. Yeah, he went huge. in onto Machete there, who was still in the yellow. So, like, you saw that ground pound hit. He didn't go that far. He wasn't no. close to being off screen when he would there uh, have to start queuing up that recovery, anything like that. He was happy to just wait and throw out the side air to take out Swada. Nice there. Let's see. Machete has been really on it this last stock. And this is this is similar to the situation that we saw between Akno and Godly, where Akno opened up in 3-1 three, three, in game one. The Machete just goes on touch for the rest of the game. Dude, he's coming back. I this, think he might have the three, Oh, oh no. he's dead. He is so dead after eating that ground pound in orange, completely halting all of the confidence and momentum that Swata had in the beginning of that Machete game. Machete didn't even let me finish my narrative there. I was going to be like, okay, wait, this is looking great, but could he do better? Could he, he get was, the reverse three he stock? He was straight up like, show, awesome. don't tell. He was, he was, <laughs> Look at that. He was your wow. junior high literature teacher saying, we show, don't tell. So I, I swear, I'm not going crazy here. You were telling me that it wasn't unusual to see three ones and three O's yep. in the stock count for Swata yep. in those matches. Machete won that three, game. Two, so one, that, that, that's pretty crazy. Machete, that's game one. Machete in game number one, that is a tough loss to swallow. And definitely Swata's game to lose. I mean, when, when it's three stocks to one, there's there's... 
There's no question there. Machete just played phenomenally on the Lance. And I think that that's, where, that's the weapon that he's going to be wanting to focus on here. I mean, he has the axe picked up so far. So far, so good. Down air, neutral air hitting. And SWAT has been pretty clueless ever since that last game uh, on what to do with the sword here. Let's see if he can change things up. He has some momentum here. He's found several unanswered hits. But, like, that side air comes out. That's a big chunk. The Lance is now in Machete's hands. Is he going to go for those side light into the neutral air, side light into the down air, into those neutral air juggles that he was doing so well? Oh, let's see. D-Light Slider puts him off the side of the stage. Ground Pound could come through. The, the few times that Swada has tried to challenge Machete beneath the stage, he has gotten punished for it. Oh, he's done? Recovery? Yes, yeah, he's it. done. That's okay. going to be choice of weapons for Swada. He'll probably stick with the sword, but I don't know. Yeah, he is going to stick with the sword. He even let the hammer despawn on the ground. Going to start this one with the weapon advantage. Spawn comes in, immediately swaps Primed it out, it. has yeah. another sword in hand. Sidelight and the recovery was a good catch there. Machete has been really, really punished on the side of the stage. Gravity cancel, D-Light, Sider. Swada relentless with the pressure. Uh, very similar to what we saw in game oh. number one. Ground pound comes through. Oh. Double ground pound, triple. Do it. Do it. It's oh, so close. Oh, I can't believe he wasn't there. The oh, D-Sync! The D-Sync! We love the D-Sync! That is literally why I put I Swata in me. my top three. I've told Taza already <laughs> today, but I looked on the stat that tool, is... and Swata's most favorite use yeah. signature is the Bodvar Sword Down And for sync. what it's worth, that was a super precise Absolutely. Down sync. I mean, that's the very edge of the spiking hitbox. I catch Machete peeking over the edge off of two dash to ground pounds, too. Swata, phenomenal the edge guards, and we're here again. So don't say it this time, Sparky. Don't tell me that, that, we're, that we're used to seeing this game state. Well, we are. The last, last time we that you are. said that, but they won the game. Swana is really not okay. He's used a D6. D6 no throw. shot. D6 again. He tried this. it again. He tried it again. Oh, it was so close. Weapon throw comes through, Machete covers his own head, recovery comes through, and Swada can't punish the edge, but Swada is just on. Hey, he is on Oh, He's no. He's still living. He's still living. Does he live through this? Oh, Machete absolutely swagful <laughs> on that one. Letting the weapon toss get the KO. Dude, He's a very generous I, I, player. I did not think the axe was going to knock him back. <laughs> <laughs> so that, was, that was way too much knockback for me. OK. Oh, no. Uh -oh. oh, it's, it's uh -oh. happening against Sparky. Uh -oh. So I was like, all right, I did all the cool things. And Machete is like, now it's time for me to win. <laughs> and there it is. Oh, now I will use my all kill side air hits. It's great. Pound? Okay, no. The platform stops him from having any kind of offstage edge guard. Weapons coming through and SWAT. I'm feeling the panic. I'm feeling it a little bit. He's not being as intentional with those weapon starves. It comes through. He side airs through Machete with the axe. He pivots the wrong way. And now, stop side air means that SWAT can get this edge guard and bring it to a 1 1. D light recovery. Oh, oh but he drops, drops it. it that time. Not that one, though. Okay. So the reason scary. I knew that Swada was not going to lose that game, even okay. though we saw some similar instances to before, sure. is he now became the Chad D-Sig enjoyer. Ah. You don't lose games when you know That's how true. to place the D-Sig so well. Bingo. Absolutely beautiful. Placed it so well. Even went for more of it and didn't get ultimately punished for it. Swada is coming alive here. The longer yep. this goes on, you expect a player to be ground oh, down yeah. after set, after set, after set that is not happening for swata now look at we're here on a, on a stage that favors both players in different ways if you're a down to enjoyer which you said Swata is, that is I, dude I i'm a chad d sig enjoyer I, I, brother same time though this is like if we if we were in a different region we were watching lance mains i feel like every time a lance player favors demon island like this, this, this is the stage that they want to be we've seen costly stick to it all the time and now machete oh. is bringing swata here in game oh, number man. three swata with so much confidence so much flash so oh. much flair Cider comes through. Uh, and, and oh, okay. Now, this would be, it's going to be hard to call this game, and Machete actually takes a stock uh, before he goes down to one because this is a lot closer than we're used to between these two players. Dealer recovery comes up. Nair whiffs. Machete gets the downer on the way down, but that was a great dodge. And edge guard, down sig. Oh, no. There it is. He did it. He did it. Yes. That is is what we love to see from a Bodvar player. That's what Bodvar players started yeah. doing, but kind of stopped doing. Simple wasn't really doing it today. Kinda wasn't really doing it yesterday in South America, but yeah. Swata is, and he's showing how valuable that move is to the kit. Yeah, and he's used it in a different way every single time, because last time it was just catching him peeking over the edge with the down stick. That time it was off of the D light. Machete just using a ground pound just to get back to the stage faster. Oh, he went for the double neutral stick and Swata just gets right through with the ground pound, bounces him off the ground. Machete goes in for that haymaker, doesn't quite hit. That pivot in there was crazy, and Swata thinks so too because he he took that stock right off of it. Maybe maybe Machete meant to go for like a 
pick up the weapon on the spawn and nair on the way down. Yeah. Lance, and he just missed it. Because uh, that delight uh, recovery was pretty huge. Swat has had a 3 to 1 oh, lead. Oh, that's a burn dodge. Swat has had a 3 to 1 lead in every single game. It is going to follow a 2 to 1 lead, but he's in a really good spot. Has the damage lead as well as Machete's in the yellow. See where the next weapon spawn comes in. It's right on top of Machete. He's able to grab that. We didn't see a Nair come out trying to hit Swata away. Yeah. It was a grounded lateral approach. Ooh, Swata goes all the way back. Weapon pick up. Tries to go for the jump read. Doesn't hit it. No dodge. Means Machete gets a good three hits of the lance. He goes all the way out there with the cider. Swata recoveries to get out of the way of what would have been certain doom for that stock. And Edge Guard Scenario with the ground pound goes for the weapon throw. Tries to bait something out. Down. It could work pretty well here, but a little too soon. Doesn't matter. Swata takes the bait afterwards. Falls victim to the Sair. And it's now one to one. Machete looking just like game number one. I don't know if it was was intended as a bait with that down signature, but it certainly worked as a bait. I mean, it was, a, it was able a, to capitalize It was a pretty it. reckless Sair to the stage yeah. from Swata there. That was like, that's a Lance player's dream. Oh, oh. the down stick played around. Oh, no. That's, Swata uh, still has a massive lead here. It's tied 1-1 in this set. What a great set here for the country of France. I'm a big fan of France now, Ooh. for real. I love everybody in France. What? I see light side air. He's living. He used the dodge right away, too, so he'll be back. Makes it back to the stage. He just barely fades away from that D-Light. And Swata, he dashed that down light too, so it went a little beneath the ledge. So if Machete was just holding on the wall there, he could have still gotten picked up. Oh, he punches him straight in the face. Lance picked up the weapon throw, comes through Machete. Oh, oh. that's it, baby. That is a 2-1 now in favor of Swata. Even still, it was close. Huge. It was like 500... 63 damage to 526 damage. Yeah. So it's so close between these two players. I love the oh, D-Light DC recovery. because if you condition your opponent to expect the D-Light side or the D-Light recovery, a true option, yeah. they're not ready to mash that dodge button in between the two moves, That's which right. gives you that very tight window. Even though it is a dodge window, it still gives you that tight window where they're not expecting Three, to need to two, input a dodge. DC comes out and it's a game changer. All right, so Machete doesn't feel the need to bring out the rolling that we saw against this matchup with Blaze. He's sticking to the old room all the way through. Match point. Machete, nice three great start. Doesn't pick up the weapon, though. Trying to dash forward. He, he, Machete's been playing really delicately around these weapon spawns where he's trying to trying to pick them up without getting punished. And he just ends up being a few frames away from getting it, and Swata gets advantage. But so far, so good. Machete really saw a lead here. Can he, for once, stop Swata going up 3-1? Every single game, Swata's been up 3-1. If he's able to keep Swata off of the sword, like Swata starting out with the hammer was definitely good for Machete. Mm -hmm. His axe came in, played really well against Swata's hammer, but now Swata has the sword. Machete does have the lance. He might be able to capitalize, hit a Sair here or there, and find the stock before Swata's really able to add up that full KO damage onto Machete. Oh, Machete. Now with the lance, trying to get those recovery kills off the top. Weapon spawns on the exact Don't opposite side of the stage. Hammer's in hand, and let, let's see. Well, down Throws stick on hammer is a, is a lot different than being a down stick enjoyer on sword. It is, uh, it is definitely not a safe move, but it no. is a hard hitting move. But yeah. brother, you oh. better, oh my, again, he got bonked on the head by the That's massive weapon a, toss uh, from oh, Machete. Oh, that is going to seal the deal. And Machete has a lead. You called it early on. We are not yeah. going to see that 3-1 lead from Swat in this game. You said I called game. it, but it's like, honestly, it's really unusual to see three yeah. three ones in a row at this level of play. Machete uh, taking the lead for the first time in the set early game, and he's really pushing it there. Side air hits, Swat evens up the stocks, but already it's like, Relatively a huge deficit for Swata compared to the, how he lost game number one. So let's see if Machete can keep this up. Oh, that's... Swata that's was hurt. able to cycle weapons to guarantee himself the sword. He's going to toss away the, the hammer and pick up that sword again, keeping that and denying the weapon from Machete. That is a very important part of this game. And he grabs that one as well, oh. right out from underneath Machete. Cued that one up just a little bit too early. Didn't take much of a punishment. Even that side air is not going to do too much because Ooh. it's the unarmed kit, the neutral light. Machete starting to add up the damage. The neutral light on the axe actually nice turns throw. Swata red so machete will be looking for the ko soon it is going to possibly be with the sidelight recovery oh. coming out from machete's lance that's it that'll do it Swata sure. slow. even if swata survived the knockback he did not touch he had no jumps to make that back maybe a dodge and a recovery and that's if it. he had enough to physically get back there was going to be a weapon toss yeah, coming from machete that and was machete's get been the free cleaner. fantastic with the weapon throws all game swata fighting him back on arm sword picked up but machete is not quite at the range where i'd say the elite recovery would do it to an ogrim yet, oh he's done he done that is like yeah. five Maybe four at least, but I think maybe five ground pounds that Swata has picked yep. up. We don't 
statistically see Sword Ground Pound being that prominently used of a move. It's tough to land, and, and, and not to mention that it's pretty reactable, but also exactly. because uh, the direction that you use it in can determine whether it's going to hit somebody against the wall or against the other side of the wall. If you don't pivot it correctly, you'll just slide right past somebody. The sword is the only part of your of your legend that's active there. And Swada has hit it many times. And, and, and the, the one where he got the biggest count of it was when he did the double Ground Pound D-Sig on, on the right side of the stage that uh, he popped off for. So now Machete. In the lead, could bring it to a game five. This oh, is pretty huge. Happened to be the wrong way as Machete drifted over to the right side, but Swada's D-Light came out to the left. Swada is in KO damage. He's red. Nice double down air, picking up off the bounce. He's looking to add up at least a little bit more damage. Oh. That would have been huge. That would have put him in a massive power position to that. possibly clean up. He's almost going to fall into that. Placed it perfectly. What a neutral oh, air to save win the himself game from off the ground pound. He might have. And if he did, gosh oh, darn it, he platform? deserves it. Oh, weapon spawn perfect for Machete. A, a, just Two a, heavy a, weapons. A fading side air. That's all either player needs here at this point, right? Side air on Swata almost definitely gets it. Neutral air puts him all the way up the side of the stage. There's no way he goes for the weapon throw here. Okay, okay. He goes for it. Swata dodges right through. Ready for it. Lance picked up. It's too risky to go for a side air here. Like, a Hammer punishes that oh! so well. It's too risky. You called it out. Is there going to be a free weapon toss here? He blows it so early. Over I think Swata made a critical mistake throwing oh, it away so early. Through. He's in the power position as Machete is over on the edge. Oh, he man. doesn't have a heavy weapon. That's it. The side air is enough. Swada takes it. The games were 3 1 a lot of the times, and mm -hmm. then the set ended up 3 1 in the end. But that yeah. was so close. The damage Ooh. tells the story 6 14 to 6 0 6. What a comeback run for Swada. That was crazy. That makes you think, man, what was baby boy Daniel on? Was that on? That took out Swada too Was that on Pro Brawlhalla? No, I'm it really, was literally it was, too early. It was too Tesla. early into the tournament. It was too early. Oh, wow. That is a matchup. Incredible. I wonder if we could ask Swada for the replays for that. <laughs> I don't, they, I don't they, know they if can, he'll relinquish that. He'll probably be <laughs> too embarrassed, so. bro. I don't think so. It'll be a bonus of eSports dev stream content to be like, how did Swada go down here? And he, he's, like, he's, he's not going to show you the body like, You guys don't need that. That could go away. That doesn't need to be in those two books. <laughs> he's probably deleted that <laughs> he's, right he's, away. It's for the opportunity to break Blue's record. That's what it was for. That's okay? true. Uh, he, he's, he's doing this for content. Yeah. Well, I think because he breaks it if he beats Akno, which is the matchup that's coming up next, right? Yeah. If he can do it. He beats Akno. That's a That's a tough tale. It's tough, but it is not undoable, especially after BCX, right? Swatted, the reigning champion here, is going to be going up against Akno after this incredible lower bracket run. So right now tied in EU for the most lower bracket matches that he had to win yep. in a row to make it this far. 13, I think, was the number. That's now, right. we talked about this yeah. being a tall order for Swata to come out on top, but if okay. we look at the overall history of it, yeah. it may not be as tall as you think. It okay. is 2-2 two, two overall in sets between that these two. That looks relatively even. And it is. It's actually it's, literally it, exactly. even. It's literally <laughs> even. I said you relatively. Had, you had to bring up your magnifying glass to Dude, sort this, of get on the microscope I mean, and be know. like, oh, interesting. Two does we equal could, two. We could have have rounded up for the sake of making it look nice in production, okay? It could be like... <laughs> yeah, we could have rounded up and lied, <laughs> but one that we won't have to round up and one that will not be even yeah. is the actual game count between these two. Okay. And that is 6-8. Uh, I was going to say 4-8, but it's 6-8 between these two okay. in favor of everybody's favorite D-Sig enjoyer, Swata. Swata, okay. Interesting. So, Agno's got a tough matchup coming up against him. He definitely uh, does. So, this will be interesting to watch. Uh, Swata... Is I don't know if I can take what just happened with Machete and, and say that the same thing's going to happen in the oh, next no, game. Oh, no, you cannot copy where, paste where, that. Where I'm going to be like, it felt like Swato was having difficulty closing out games. And Akno doesn't have that same problem. I mean, we've seen Akno be at a deficit and, and, and come back with with one or two stock deficits or whatever. But we'll, we'll have to see how this plays here because both of these players are going to be going up against each other best of five. It's top three. Winner of this is going to be hiding against Godly, of all players, that's sitting in grand finals, right? First tournament and God knows when. And he's sitting there undefeated. I have to... So it, it, I guess it was a really close matchup against Nakno, but before that, it was a 3-0 against Hazer Delta. Godly has just been destroying. And even before own. that, it was a 3-1 against Machete. Then yeah. it was a 3-0 against Cressu. I think the rest of the games that Godly played today were probably a 2-0 a or a 3-0 as well, wow. if we extrapolated the data. But now we're on into this game. We don't got to worry about Godly just yet. It's all That's about right. Swata versus Akno. And I think this might be an unforgettable one, because we can't even say, a lot of times when we get to Losers Finals, we can be like, oh, Akno actually knocked down Swata. This is the salty run back or the other way around. That's not the case here because of our friend, baby boy Daniel. 
Are you gonna put, are you gonna put Baby Boy Daniel in your top three? I might have to, bro. I think <laughs> Baby Boy Daniel takes Springs, bro. Yeah. I think he does. Honorable and mention. Swata is gonna easily take that first stock as he totally demolishes Akno early on. So get actually, we may see the three-one. We might. We might. Which means that there's a high possibility that Akno reverse 3 yes. Swata because that has just been happening a little too much. But Swata so good at the beginning of these sets of just completely surprising his opponent, taking them off guard and taking that first stock in under 30 seconds. Weapon comes through. That was a great dodge from Akno. Swata gets that on a lot of players. Well, he'll do a dash jump. He'll dodge in place. And at the very end of the dodge, where it's uh, accessible, there's the gravity cancel delight in the other direction. But Akno dodges that in reaction, evens the stocks. And this is the difference between Machete and Akno that I was talking about, where if Akno's at a deficit, that that stock gets evened up so quickly. It doesn't matter how it happens. Even if we get to that three stocks to one situation, I put so much more confidence. Not that I have a lack of confidence in Machete, it's that I have that much more in Akno as a player who has achieved so many things. Almost every award you could possibly achieve in this game, except the actual LAN world champion, that I put more confidence in Akno. What a beautiful Ooh. weapon toss that was to bounce it off the wall after avoiding the ground pound. Ooh. Oh, no way. Oh, yo. Swata turns one of Akno's favorite unarmed punishes into an opportunity, getting the D-Light down to recovery, almost taking him off the top, but Akno, nice job, dodges the side light, goes to the edge guard side air, catches Swat off guard, and Swat knows he can't make it back, Akno takes the lead. He is very deep in the red. We know that Akno was able to even up the stocks very quickly when he was at a deficit. We'll see what Swat is able to do. He goes off stage unarmed, even though a weapon spawn came on the stage, has the weapon spawn, it is a hammer, picks it up, picks up Akno and throws him off the top. Didn't even need the god property there. <laughs> you know, you know, I was watching. Okay, or I got a tangent here. I was, I was watching Boomy's stream, and yep. Sansa and Boomy had a bet. They were like, "Who's gonna be the first caster that uses the God Look, the stream?" Flambo, you know what they said? Flambo isn't here. I had to be the one to say it. I know Flambo wanted to. I he, can't he believe it. To you could have at least waited to North America. I can't wait. I, no, okay. of course not. It's one to one. You know me. I'm, I'm impatient. <laughs> I had to do that one. That one's for you, Flambo. We miss you, brother. Can't wait to have you on the desk. Oh my goodness, they were so right. Okay, Akno hits the recovery. <laughs> that toss goes down, and Swata gets hit by the side on the way to the right. Akno could take this game number one off. Swata takes the lead. That was a great sider after the down light. D light ground pound. Ooh. Swata couldn't be in a position to punish that one. And Akno with the pickup has been denied. Oh, that was Swata a nice pickup. The D light recovery doesn't need the extra damage to take him off the top because it was off the gravity cancel. 200 damage lead by like minus seven, I think. I don't know. I didn't get the numbers directly, but Akno, great job in game number one. The takedown Swata there, and now he is up 1-0 in the sets. The overall damage dealt by Akno and Swata respectively was 557 to 364. Swata didn't even deal a number of damage for each day in a year, much less a leap year. He's going to have to step it up just a little wow. bit more. Akno was doing some great whiff punishes on Swata when he was like throwing out side lights. He was spot dodging through them and then hitting the wake up D-Light. Taza is is inaudibly laughing right now. <laughs> no, 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 he even no. stepped on the panic button so that no one at home could uh, hear him laughing for my joke. I, this is how selfish ooh, of a commentator on the desk about? Taza is. He will not give me the whole oh, W. Oh my goodness. Not even enough damage for every day of the year. Swata, let's see if he can make up for that going in the air. <laughs> he's gonna have to. He, he's absolutely gonna have to. I'm not even making a little W anymore. I'm not even, I'm not even farming those in chat. Oh, oh no, he's not gonna act come. No, he hits that ground pound oh. so low. Let's he may not have to do that much damage after that I one. I mean, let's hope that Swata can cover a month at this rate, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's true. He's been shut down so Agno far. Agno with that ground pound, super early on into the game. Akno now has the sword picked up. D-Light down air comes through, neutral light connects, and Akno gets the recovery, Swata! Let's see what he can do here with the hammer. It's so interesting to me because I really was praising Swata's Ooh. hammer all throughout previous oh. years. And I feel like today when Swata picks up the hammer, it's been, it's been his most vulnerable moment. Absolutely, that was it, just, it is it almost was... a detriment to him at, at this point. I hope we get to see the down air of that uh, super slow-mo as the replay mm -hmm. of the game, because he even drifted a little bit to the side, so he would hit the edge of the cone on the down air rather than being straight above Swata. So he knew the weapon that he was edge guarding, and he tailored his response specifically to that, because you know what type of threat the hammer recovery is. We know about that god property, Taza. We now we do. Uh, we're not really seeing it too much here. This game's Akno now with the uh, sword going up against Swata. Sword versus sword. We don't see Swata forced onto the hammer just yet. Akno dodging to the right with the sidelight almost as like a, a 
movement tool. And Swata finally gets something started. D-Light recovery to double Nair. Akna returns his own Nair, but the neutral state goes punished. And Swata now on the sword is trying to even up these stocks. He's been doing so good so far, but Akna finally gets some hits in. Uh-oh, it's a bow ground pound time. I'm scared. Swata, no, he makes it back with that jumping side air. And we're back to neutral. Agno's spacing is really strong here. You see him putting himself at like D light length, sort of maybe conditioning Swata to be like, I'm going to initiate with a D light or punish with a D light. Then you see him dash in throughout the side light, something Swata might not be ready for. He's been highly successful with that. Ooh, doesn't get the side light, but he gets the Nair afterwards, keeping the weapons denied from Swata. Sider puts him off the side of the stage. It doesn't matter how good your weapon spawns are now, Akno will be able to cover it. D-Light, side air, goes in for the down air afterwards. Swata uses his dodge and recovery to make it all the way back over. And Akno, instead of going for the weapon uh, starve, tries to get the edge guard, doesn't get it, but Swata is so damaged here. He's got to take a stock and then do a perfect stock afterwards at this rate. I don't know if he has it in him. He's going to try and at least start it off with the sword neutral light. That recovery almost KOing off the top. Akno, thirsty for another one. Now Swata. Whoa, he Swata. That was to crazy. Grab. That would have been the KO. That would have been the start of what he needed. Almost picks up the down air. Akno was just That's a little it. bit too low. The juggling game comes out from Akno. He does not drop one of the bean bags. He gets the KO off the top. 362. <laughs> Did he really? He did. 362. He did. Still not Still not enough. there. Still not, not able. That's a bummer. Is that, is that like down one? Actually, he's got. He, he was like. It was like one less damage. Uh, than the previous game. It's two less. I think it was 364. 364. Wow. 364. It was that final day of the year, man. It was New Year's Eve. That's a tough <laughs> New one. New Year's Eve. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Swat has got really. I mean, overall, as far as like average damage in Brawlhalla games go. Which I'm actually kind of curious what that is now. If we like took like a ton of competitive matchups and looked at what the average damage is in a one v one, I'm just gonna say gut feeling. This is a low damage average game. For, oh, for, for sure, for, absolutely. For, and, and overall in the set, um, both players not really doing as much as we would see with some of the heavier legends, where sometimes the numbers were getting up as high as 670, and and we have not really gotten much past 500 between these two players. They're taking the stocks and they're taking them fast. The damage that Agno just did was 462, so yeah. let's divide that into three. That is 150. 54, I believe that's correct. So that's like right when your enemy turns red. Now, yeah. a lot of that is based off of the back that he got that ground pound mm -hmm. when Swata was in It was pretty orange. orange. Yeah. And, and, and then he just ran with the lead the entire time. Yeah, Swata definitely. had a really great last stock trying to equalize things, and he didn't close off Akno's second stock. And now Akno has got Swata in a position where, okay, interesting choice. He's taking the godly approach, right? And having Koji versus Koji, he's kind of like, well, okay, I, I, I just watched godly not be able to beat Akno in the Koji Mirror match, but check this out, <laughs> right? Because, because <laughs> I mean, his, let's be real, his, his hammer has been a non-factor. Yeah. It just might as well not have existed. So if you're going to be going forward with a sword in this matchup, maybe pick a legend whose stats better fit what you're trying to do. And now Swata with the Koji is going to be going up against Akno in game number three. Match point. Akno wins this. It's a 3-0, and he gets that rematch against Godly. Oh, yo, he started it off really strong. Godly ended his set saying nobody can beat Akno in the Koji Mirror match. And Swata came in and said, hold my mammoth juice. And then just started that one off without even Hardly getting hit whatsoever. Oh, and now Swada restocks to two at the opening of this matchup. Oh man, he's getting that cider and it's looking great so far. Starting off with the Nair. Oh, Swada has already used two major signatures here. Picking that one up a second time in rapid succession. Swada might be one of the gnarliest Kojis on the planet here. Definitely an EU if he's able to take this game. And again, Swata starting this one out very strong right away. No warm-up time on the Koji whatsoever. He's gonna burn that dodge out there. Akno is gonna completely wait, give him some time to get over to that corner before responding. He's gonna end up taking the stock. We are in the orange for Akno. Yeah, we are. Oh, and Akno going in for the side lights, neutral sig hits, and Swata Oh, tries to go in for something, but Agno starting off the Nair, goes with the neutral signature. Swata ends up getting, okay, side light misses. Goes through, Agno does get the Nair. Side light down air, could get this edge guard here and bring this game up into his favor. Yes, Swata, nothing to be able to make it back. Now Swata, not only on match point, but also on his last stock. Akno has all of a sudden wrestled this back in his favor. He has the weapon advantage. It is the bow in his hand. That neutral light from Swat, he's going to attempt to extend that past. Now he has the sword in his hand. D-Light Recovery going to take off the top. 
and we are back to a tied, dead even game. There's like one hit on Swada, but it is nothing he can't overcome with even a single hit, and he's already even up the damage. It is sword v sword here. D-Light recovery into the air. Tried to find the next follow-up. It's going to be a one hit for one hit game, I think, Taza. Ooh, and the D-Light Cider comes through, and Ak no is now in orange. Deficit comes through, recovery hits as well. Side light over there, and now Swada with the swords versus sword. Swada could bring this set, not to be a 3-0 at this rate. Oh, this is so scary. Akno makes it nice back. Nice down touches, air, he's gonna go, go under. under. Oh, does he make it back? No way, ground pound comes through, and Swada with the picture-perfect finish. Yet another sword ground pound from Swata. He's yes. used it so well. Pulled it out at the exact perfect time, showing at least in the first game, man, that early on gravity cancel side signature from Swata. And then he juggled further with two different neutral signatures on stage. Yep. Using the same character as Akno, doing things that we've seen Akno do to so many other players. Still an overall low damaging game. Nothing above 500 there, just taking their stocks out super fast. Now, Demon Island is here for game number four. No 3 0 in favor of Akno. As Swada picking the Koji for the mirror matchup has worked out in his favor. Super solid openings, and Swada's bow is looking absolutely natural, despite us being so used to seeing Swada only on the Bodvar for so long. Over here on the Demon Island, Akno was not afraid of those tiny walls. He went over there pretty quickly. He's now going to go for the offstage engagement, continuing this pressure. D Light Dare tried to hit the turnaround down air. Weapon toss is going to give Swada the power position. He punishes Akno, going just a little bit too high with the down signature. They're now oh. going back into the footsies game. Akno in the lead, but just a little bit. Weapon throw down, Akno, D like ground pounded, but he doesn't get that offstage knockback. And somehow the strong hit from the sword recovery does connect. Swada now hits the neutral light, puts him over to the right, and a down sig. Whiffs. Bo picked up, tried to go. I thought he was going to go for the ground pound there for sure. Oh, no way. Okay, you saw Swada, no dude. Way. He straight up booked it because he, he knew that Akno was going to hold that until he was really deep. So if he stayed down there, he would get hit by it. That's why he made that immediate move to get as high as he possibly could. Swada with the absolute wonderful movement and reactions there. Swan not picking up the bow, tries to go for the weapon star, but he does get it. Akno gets the punish on the Nair. Now let's see, weapon spawn. That couldn't have been better for Akno, honestly. d Insider comes through. He's he's on the edge guard, unarmed. He's like, well, what am I gonna do when Swada decides to attack me? Oh, a sword? Great. d gets him, and then the Sider right afterwards evens up the stock to the two. He's gonna do the textbook edge guard of waiting for the peek over the corner of the hurt box to pick up the d -like, go for the side air since yeah. you're all the way on the edge of the stage, instead of going up for a recovery off top, because the left or the right blast zone is the absolute closest one to you. Literally textbook there. Both players really struggling to get something started. Cider hits, but that's not really the momentum that Akno's looking for. Neutralite tags him on as well. Swada goes to the downer. Oh, and Akno. he jumps away from that wow. neutral line. Wow. I think that was absolutely the right choice from Akno. He didn't jump into the downer. He thought Swada was going to fast fall afterwards, but no. Swada jumps away, like you said. Recovery comes through. Akno takes the lead, but Swada returns to the zone there. It's so close. It is literally one hit for one hit. Neither player can really get any momentum going, even get their combo starters going. There aren't any huge D-Light Sayers coming out. That's sort of the first, oh. like, back-to-back -back move, and then he ends it with a neutral signature going all the way off the top. Swada with a nice lead here. Since we're on Demon Island, those blast zones so far away, yeah. I don't know how quickly Akno's going to be able to KO here oh. unless he hits something like that that's way up and has a ton of force That's the on thing. It. I was ready to say Akno took the lead off that neutral sig because that's what I thought Akno yeah. was doing. Doing, but no, Swada really doing well with a page out of Akno's book. And Akno trying to even up the stocks here. Akno's so good at this, though. He just oh, doesn't. That KO'd. He just doesn't take damage at a deficit. When the stock's down, and he's like, it's one to two. All right. He, he cleans it up, no questions asked. Doesn't matter who he's fighting against. And now it's back to a dead even game. Uh, Akno takes this. It's 3 1, but Swada really is really fighting for that game five scenario. Swada found two hits, now three hits. Has Akno in the yellow, definitely a lead for Swada. That's like the first hit that Akno has found on Swada. Now two hits going Swada's favor. He's starting to increase the lead. He's at the weapon advantage. He has the sword in hand. Akno picking up a sword as well. It's sword v sword, Koji v Koji here. Looking for a game five from Swada's POV. Looking for the three one from Akno's. Oh, and Akno taking so many si sword siders. He's low on jumps. He has to use the dodge recovery oh, here. Swada, and Swada goes to the D-Lights. Weapon picked up. Bow in hand. Akno gets the side light. Does he go for the ground pound afterwards? He gets the nair. He goes for the neutral sig. Oh, he gets the side light. He goes for the chase. That's recovery. You're crazy, Oh, Akno. that KO'd? Are oh. you kidding me? That KO'd? 
I didn't think it was going to, but Swata felt good about it. He went for it and he got it. We're going to a game five. Akno did the one possible thing that I think he could have gotten a knockout from that play. We're going to yeah. see that here. It was so crazy. You, he had nothing left. They, he was sweating with the gravity cancel sidelight there. And when he went for the recovery afterwards, he was just hoping that Swata was going to panic jump. Swata doesn't give it to him, hits the recovery in the same way, and then surprises both of us with that knock it off the top. And look, the, the damage just gets closer look and closer. Look at those numbers, 531 to 534. Look at the average damage per engagement. Wow. Only two separating those two. Look at the light attacks, 83 to 85. The signatures, three to four. Wow. No more than three separating any of those numbers whatsoever. Look at that grab. Yeah. Look how quickly that stock even the was weapon taken throws. in the end. The weapon throws 14 too. To 17. These no two players are so evenly what? matched, and that is not something we could really say in the Whoa. past year. Okay, Akno may have forced Godly off the Koji, but Swata just forced Akno off the Koji. It's Petra for game five, lower finals. Winner of this goes in the grands to fight against Godly, who has been undefeated in sets today. And now Swata has forced Akno off the legend that he has had the most success with uh, in recent memory. So now Swata uh, forcing Akno to the Petra. This is so interesting. Akno's coming in with a very edgy looking Petra too. That's I, true. I think the <laughs> anger is boiling inside of him. He wants to take this. Doesn't this expect to go out at third place here. Yeah. He thinks his place belongs in grand finals here in the winter championship. Oh, he dash jumps forward, trying to bait something out of Swata. Swata definitely not prepared for this pick just yet, but he is adapting. Oh, what a pickup. Down light into recovery. Not going to do it just yet. Petra has high force, but not quite that high. Gauntlets are going to be needed to get this knockout off the top. And Swata, wow, okay. Un unarmed neutralized doing a lot here. Over to the orb from Akno. We know he's got one. He's been played. He's played the uh, Thor before. Side air hits, and there he goes. Off the left side of the stage. Swata, two stocks left in the tournament, potentially. And Agno has a beautiful lead going into this one. Just in the orange, Swata is going to pick up a weapon very quickly as Agno was recovering back onto the stage. Starts off with the down air. Is going to need quite a bit more than that. At least gets Agno into the red very quickly. Goes for the other side air to force Agno over to the edge. Recovery not quite enough. I think a delight recovery from virtually anywhere on the main stage will be the KO option. Now, Agno doesn't want to play that game. He wants to sort of taunt Swata over to the mm -hmm. edge, saying, come on, I'm playing Ooh. gauntlets on the side. I want you over here, baby. Nair into grab. We cancel neutral light, gets the pummel onto him. Side oh, light gets the Nair, just go for it again. No, Swata with the wake up deal at recovery catches. Akno off guard. Akno was prepared to react to anything except for an attack. And uh, Swata was definitely ready there, gets the stock, but Akno got a good amount of damage on the gauntlets before he goes to two to two. Oh, now he gets kicked to the side. Let's see what Weapon spawn happen. coming in. Swat is going to control it. Akno was at least far away enough for that weapon toss to hit him, and then Swat not to pick up that same weapon again. He got that prioritization of the new weapon spawn. Akno trying to go through these down airs, bouncing off the stage, get that extra range. Swada on the verge of getting knocked out here. Ooh, satellite slider. Not enough just yet, but it's getting close. Switches over to the gauntlets. Oh, he switches over to the orb. Okay, he's got a new orb primed as well. That's interesting. Akno deciding to stick with that weapon. Okay. Well, if you're going to stick with the weapon, just throw it. Orb is probably the, not the best yeah, choice for that. Yeah, uh, that's probably one of the worst weapons to throw just because how small that hitbox is. But a nice GC sidelight into yep. the side air. Didn't even need the weapon toss to hit. Akno with an even bigger lead than he had before. Ooh, and now with the Nair hitting, tax on some extra damage. He really went for the, the weapon to punish there, and he gets it. Side light, Nair into the neutral light off the bottom. Oh, and gravity cancel, neutral light, and a Nair after the chase dodge. Akno's orb is crazy, and he is just destroying Swata with it. Nice, nice dodge. spot dodge there. He's going to maintain the weapon control. There is a spawn. Hits was... Swata away. Picks up the gauntlets. Even comes out with a neutral signature. Yeah. Hoping to end this one quickly. It's going to take a little bit more than that. Swata still in the orange. But Akno still in the orange. A full stock up as well. That neutral air. Not going to be the KO movie needs just yet. Mm -hmm. That desig is going to just barely do it. Akno on this Petra does have some oh, defense. Man. Oh, this is this is, uh, this is pretty close. Okay, Cider hits. And Akno, okay. No way he orbed down six here. No, there's no way. Oh. <laughs> I don't know why. There, I, there's I, one I, way. I, I, I felt, I was like, you know, it's, it's last stock situation. I know that it feels like it makes the most sense, but that's also probably the last move that you're ever going to be hitting in this scenario. But here he is. So he goes for it again? No, no, there's no, no, no. Absolutely. Oh, he's just backing like, up like side for real side this air. time? There's for real no way for this time. Well, oh, unless. No, 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 no the, the platform there is just trolling him. 
Oh, he gets kicked away. There's no way. Swada gets hit by the Sarah. Okay, Sarah at any point on the stage now is enough. Like, Swada cannot get hit. If he gets hit by the side light, that's done for. Akno just waiting for that. Goes in for one Sarah. Swada gets some damage in. Oh, there that's it, is. it. That's it. That is the game. Akno is going to take it. He's going to leave Swada tying Blue's record for most sets in loser's bracket. Doesn't oh. give him the glory of beating that going on to 14. Still a tremendous effort from Swada today. The way he leveled up throughout the tournament, we saw him get better and better and better. The way he went in the Koji mirror match against Akno, forcing Akno off the Koji onto the Petra. But you can't mess with one of the baddest men in EU. So you, you're an experienced world record holder, right? That tell, is, that is true. Tell I am, me, I'm one of the world's fastest gamers. Tell me, tell me how this works. If somebody holds the record for the lower bracket run and somebody ties the record, does the original record holder still have that record? Well, is that, is that how that works? I actually don't know. In my case, in terms of speed running world records, there's virtually no chance to be a tie because you can at least count frames. No one is going to be dead even down to the frames. Oh. Where in this case is you tie at 13 losers bracket runs. Yeah. 13 literally does equal 13 here. That's there right. is no yeah. extra little bit here and there. Now, one thing you could mm. do is see if the tie is broken by games. By games. But I think that might be flawed methodology because there are more uh, games played. I think there are more sets now. Yeah. in lowers that are best of five than there were when Blue did his run. I think most of them were probably best of three. So I think that might be a flawed methodology. I'll have to look back at the rules for that. Much more in -depth I'm sure, I well, I am one of the world's fastest course, gamers, objectively proven and held for over four years never to be broken. We'll see what Left Stick and Production has on that because I am very curious if yeah. we actually can compare them one for one in terms of games as opposed to sets. Yeah. Too bad that he couldn't definitively break it, but still amazing sick. lower bracket Dude, the, run. the tie is still yeah. so sick. Well, because Blue held that for yeah. years. Yeah, he did. And uh, and now we have Acton versus Godly in grand finals. And I'm not sure if Acton is going to be leading with the Koji this time. Does he carry over the momentum that he has with the Petra that he just brought out against Swada in the lower bracket? Or does he stick with the Koji now that he's back in that rematch against Godly? It went to game five, and it was close the entire time. And maybe he just needed a little bit of extra time to adapt to Godly's Rayman uh, going into this. It's going to be very interesting to see because we've got that rematch where these two players have only fought in winners and grand finals. This is the second ever set between these two players in official tournament play. Very impressive here at the Winter Championship. And also, I think Blue's record came from the Winter Championship as well. So kings are made, thrones are taken over, yep. and thrones are sort of like squished into between two different people sitting on one throne, which has <laughs> yeah, to be uncomfortable. Right yeah, it's not great. Uh, we got to get that sorted out. <laughs> <laughs> we need to at least get another throne. Can we, we get one more throne yeah, we need, we need a in few here, more. please? Yeah, We're going into this next game, though. And it is Godly leading in with the Rayman, mm -hmm. and it is Akno leading in straight away with the Petra. Oh, he okay. feels confident in the ability to beat the Axe with this Petra pick. All right, that's great, yeah. And this is something that we've seen uh, in all levels of play in every region, where sometimes it's just a matter of you felt good on that legend in your last set. We don't, you don't care who you're against. You're just carrying that legend over. You're like, oh, the Petra was the answer the entire time. Get off that Koji. This is going to be my character of choice. And Godly opening up strong with the Axe so far, looking similar to the last set that we watched between these two players. But now acting with the Orb, let's see if he can get the lead back. Now, there was a time in Brawlhalla's meta concerning Orb and Axe that Orb was thought of as just a better Axe. Akno is going to be able to get back here. We'll see if that's maybe sort of the case. I mean, Axe is still an incredibly strong weapon, so yeah. maybe a little bit of a nerf, but that seems to not deter too many players from playing an Axe Legend. We've seen a lot of Olgrims today. We really haven't seen too many Brins, at least in 1v1, but we mm -hmm. did see some 2v2 Brins. It's definitely not keeping Godly off of an Axe character because he's bringing this Rayman. Might get the KO oh. here. That's absolutely going to do it. Built up so much damage. Had that neutral light for the KO option. I think he's in okay shape. Yeah. Unless he gets hit by... Oh, he's actually still in orange. Excuse me. Correct me. I'm completely wrong. He's in pretty good shape here. Yeah, and what Golly's been able to do to Acno that nobody else has really been able to do is usually hit a, a, a neutral light side light nair before Acno equalizes the stock. He almost he just, got a reset yeah. there too. He hit the side light nair. I was expecting a neutral light. Oh no! Oh, he almost got to the bottom of that side that too. Was brutal. Uh, knocking out with gauntlets is is 
exceptionally difficult compared to a lot of other weapons here. Uh, just getting the Scylite's not good enough. You have to be able to get that read afterwards, but the recovery, punishing Axe's recovery, gives Acno that knockout, and he did only get hit by one Scylite in there uh, before that stock gets uh, taken down. So Godly now trying to get some unarmed hits in through here, and he's just whipping every single one of them. Axe picked up. That's better. Godly gets oh, two good hits. Oh, whips the in. neutral light in the other direction this time. But again, side light and air. Chunk a lunk, and that's a lot of damage. Yeah. D-Light's going to send Akno flying. No major chase for the juggle opportunity coming out from Godly. He just wants to maintain that ground authority, because look at the main moves he's throwing out. In light, grounded move. Side light, grounded move. Neutral air, a move that you use off of the side light. Oh, Godly waiting out the wall slip there. And he sees oh. it. He saw the first exclamation point, and he was like, that's it. He goes right off. He doesn't jump too high. He does that run off ground pound. And there, there's a little bit of uh, there's a little bit of skill expression there in the sense that if you put in that down heavy too early, you accidentally slide charge or use a signature. So just being able to get that right away, you get that ground pound, spike acting off the bottom of the stage and take the lead is huge for Godly. Nair comes through. That down light was so close to punishing that dodge. Oh, side light Nair hits again at Acno in orange already. Whoa. Down air almost connects too. Oh, that. Oh, 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 oh he waited. Oh, no way. He waited. He wanted to hit a juicer magooser there. Oh. He didn't actually get a major follow up, but he waited for that dodge to come Dude, out. Dude, my out brain the spot imploded. Dodge. When I saw Sidelight <laughs> in the way, I was like, this has never been done before. This, <laughs> like, this new what? axe technology that has just been developed, never before I, seen. The EU innovation what? coming out of jolly old England. What? No, I thought he was going to stare him off of the neutral light. He doesn't do it. The weapon throw comes down. The bounce isn't active. Acno makes it back to the stage. That unarmed Nair is almost enough to take him off the top. And Godly is trying to return the oh. favor. There it is. Recovery gets him with the two stock. And Acno might be returning to Koji pretty quickly. Acno really struggled to close out stocks that game. You're going to see a yeah. very long graph on that second stock. Just some really solid textbook axe play coming out from Godly. You saw him just run off and do the ground pound there. Nothing super fancy, nothing like that mechanically difficult that if you looked at like APMs, he doesn't look like some nasty StarCraft player on the sticks there. There you see the first half of the game was on the first stock. The second half of the game was on the second stock. Look at the damage build, how steady. It was almost linear. Straight Great yeah. linear at a diagonal line on that final almost stock. Had a, almost had a perfectly centered lost stock there on the graph, too. But it wasn't. It was a little earlier on in the match. And we're having a, 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 a little bit of a lull here because I, I do think that Akno's seriously considering what legend he has to bring out against I Godly. would be. Uh, the Koji looked the best in the sense that it brought to a game five, but I don't think any of Akno's games looked quite as rough against Godly as that Petra game just did. That and was so, definitely a tough and, one. And so it's like when you have sword and you have bow, and now you have gauntlets and you have orb, and nothing really feels like it's hitting the right uh, spot against uh, Godly's axe. I'm wondering what Akno brings out here to combat it because he has potentially two games left in the entire tournament, and Godly just, just takes it. Well, I think whoever he brings out, it is likely not going to share a weapon with the Petra because mm -hmm. neither weapon looks strong. He did 436 damage. Compared to like, All what, of like that went into two stocks. Ooh. 218 when you put it that average way, per stock is rough. Yeah, that Ray, means Rayman's not exactly a, a, a tanky legend, right? He does actually have, like, he has some pretty decent defense. He has some yeah. middling defense. Of course, uh, Godly's going to go into the movement speed stance to give him a little bit of juice on that one. Get, yeah. him, get, him, get him moving and grooving and even dare I say, schmoovin' all the way through to be able to rotate in, rotate out, get away, get in, giving him a little bit of more movement speed when he goes for the runoff ground pound to get uh -huh. the KO, maybe make it a little bit less reactable. Well, let's see here. We've got, okay, this is not, this is the last thing that I was expecting, but it does have none of the weapons that he's that used today. <laughs> the, the My Sentinel, assertion was correct. Sentinel's being locked in, so that means that Akno's now rotated through six different weapons against Godly in this one tournament alone to be able to combat this Rayman. It's now going to be Sentinel, Katars, and Hammer dipping out of the defense stance to actually get that uh, really well-rounded five force, five decks. I'm gonna you, need, you look very puzzled. I, it's I don't I don't know why you would do that. I'm sure there is absolutely a reason why you. Yeah. I don't know if there's like a specific acute event point where you can say I can get this by going into this rather I than do just know. like it's a nice little break here or there. I do or know it that makes um, like dare D light or whatever. Yeah, I do. I'm gonna need my guitar guys out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and what I was mentioning is in. that like in the past, I, I remember specifically tweets like from Wrenched 
uh, that was like, he feels like the higher dexterity on the Surrey makes him better at guitars. Like, it just feels better. He can't explain it. He doesn't have, like, any, like, logical reason for it other than yeah. it just feels nicer. And maybe that's what Akno's looking for here with the Sentinel. But we're on Crystal Temple for game number two. As Akno's two games away from being knocked out and Godly going undefeated in the European Winter Championship 2022. Godly with the gauntlets gets stopped, stared away to the edge. And Akno on the Sentinel is trying to take a lead here and bring it to a, a even game. I opened up a tab specifically for Twitter, at WhoIsSparky. If you know why Akno goes into the deck stance, please hit me up. I am very curious. Oh, and Godly off the left side of the stage gets the side air, and Akno goes down to two stocks in game number two. And Godly's Rayman's crazy. Now we're here on Crystal Temple. This would definitely favor virtually any Axe character that you want to pull out. I think it's a good choice. Yeah. For Godly, we haven't really seen this so far between these two players. I wonder how Akno's hammer is going to fare here because you can do like a short jump and go for those neutral airs, those side airs. I think the signature, like the side signature on hammer might cover a little bit of that platform. Stomp Sayer, not going to be enough. That weapon toss might clean this one up. Oh, it was enough. He did the exact right thing. Yep. I was going to question it for a second, yep. but I am in the wrong here. He delighted that direction. A little surprised that Godly's neutral air didn't hit him. A little. Yeah. But the D-Light has that bonus property of the momentum, right? And he slides right out of the way. And because of that, Godly just doesn't get the chase out to make it back. Oh, Akno, double end light read. Gets the Nair on the way back down too. Godly returning with his own neutral light, but Akno's brought this back pretty quick. New guitar is picked up. Godly being very careful. He seemed just running away. He was jumping around, then he ran away, waited for Akno to throw out a move, punished it. There is a spawn on the field. Godly not able to get over to it. He just kind of played around it. Hit the sidelight neutral air. Knew he couldn't pick up the Sayer true, so he didn't go for it. Now he picks up the Sayer. That is two Sayer kills. Of all the moves that I think Godly has been taking stocks with, I don't think Sayer is one of the main ones. It's been a lot of neutral lights. Right. We saw the ground pound over the edge. We saw a down signature at one point. I don't think Sayer is definitely the most used one. Now he's picked up two this game. Akno gets the landing neutral light there, but he has not gotten the follow-ups that we're used to seeing guitar players get with those. That disarms Godly. Hammer picked up, waiting for him to touch the stage. Goes with the stomp, but Godly waits it out, picks up neutral light. There's the stomp slider. Akno evens up the game, but that's all he's been doing. I think I've said that sentence like maybe 18 times against Godly at this point because he's always at a slight stock deficit. He evens up the game pretty quickly, and then Godly just takes him down once again. And if that happens here, Godly goes up 2-0. Now, Godly is stuck on these gauntlets until another spawn comes in. We'll see how aggressively Akno plays around it, where it comes out, when it comes out. It's been a little while since it's dropped. It's got to be coming in soon. Disarmed Akno immediately is not in the right spot to get over to it. Godly grabs it as it comes in on the right soft platform. It's the Axe. Akno sort of, he's straight up oh, running away. Oh, man. Agno gets an air. He runs, runs from that down line, but the down air down line from Godly hits, and he uses that chain dodge to go super high up. Oh, he dodges that neutral light. Akno's just been getting fleeting nares in, in neutral lights. Like, he gets the nair, he gets the neutral light, he goes back. He's just trying to get the damage as slowly as possible. Nice follow up. He's there, to build finally it. gets the recovery after the neutral light. And now, Godly, Axe picked up. He's by the... really building it now. Yeah, this looks great. Oh, and he ran into the weapon. Insult to injury. And it's Godly on the gauntlets. This is Akno's side best chance finish? to take uh -oh. this game. That side air, that uh -oh. weapon toss. Ground, ground pound hits, he touches the stage, he has the dodge to make it back, and he uses oh! the neutral thing, and he gets the knockout on the recovery. What, Akno? What a crazy comeback. I mean, I guarantee you, he was just thinking about touching the stage, but it also covered any unarmed opportunity. Was Godly on? Okay, we need to see if Godly had a weapon there. That was crazy. He, he, he tossed it down. That's where the spot yeah. dodge came out from Akno that then led so to the So he spot dodges off. the weapon throw, yeah, and he weapon. gets the neutral signal, the ground pound. That was the perfect That was sick. Card. Wow. That was nasty. That was absolutely disgusting. Putrid. Three, two, one. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> all the, all those were, I mean, I, I was looking at the cast and replay there with me. I'm like, I'm like going like, what? I was like in disbelief. I was like, how is that possible? Akno, how did he think about doing that? Oh, it's side light in light. Thank you, everybody on Twitter. Oh, sweet. Sidelight in light on the guitars. And we have seen Akno use that. Yes. And it led into a recovery twice. So I didn't know that that was really Dex Limited. Yeah. Just because I'm used to seeing it on, like, in a Surrey yeah. or a character that already we're, we're, has, like, has yeah, most the five Dex built guitar, Or I haven't noticed Guitar it. legends tend to be pretty dexterous. Yep. Um, Sentinel is kind of one of those few cases. 
coming out that, that at least gets play in tournament. Yeah, and he is uh, he's dipping out of that that tankiness to get that dexterity. So now getting hit by that slider afterwards, that could be the second slider knockout that we see today. No, weapon throw comes through, not enough knockback, and Akno slips his way back onto the stage. Godly gets that extra damaging D like ground pound. That's the first time that we've seen Godly really try to put out a Rayman side stick with Gauntlets, trying to catch Akno off guard, doesn't hit him. No recovery afterwards. Akno goes for a weapon throw down to cover himself, and okay, Gauntlet neutralite almost takes him off the right side of the stage, and the weapon throw will do it. Now he does clean that up with the weapon toss down, but when he first hit that neutral light, I was thinking, Godly wishes he had an axe in his hand right yeah. now, because that neutral light definitely would oh, that kill. Done he had the follow-up, though, has a little bit of a lead here. The next weapon he grabs will be an axe. Starting oh, to go with stop. these gauntlets here. He didn't actually go for the stomp there. The neutral air, that Whoa, one doesn't take out. Good. That's some of that little bit higher defense coming yeah. in. Definitely not the highest in the game whatsoever, but not low by any means. Helping him survive that one nair, but then he got hit by the next one. Golly picks up a fresh axe. That means the gauntlets are prepared. Akno with the guitars. Oh, he dodges down, tries to get the recovery, but Godly hits him with the backswing of his own recovery. He's doing it for his sidelight down air that time. Godly really going for the mix-ups off of the sidelight, and Akno with the guitars goes in for the neutral light. Nair hits. Let's see if he can get that sidelight uh, side opener. Akno really just waiting for Godly, especially when he has the axe in his hands, to throw out a weapon, and then Akno can whiff punish. Not quite the same case, but even just there, you saw him run all the way to the left side of the stage. Godly got impatient, threw out a move, then in came the sidelight from Akno. Godly gets the sidelight, goes for this double sidelight on the platform, which could have led to a triple, but he doesn't get it. Akno still has a slight deficit. Hammer picked up, weapon throw gets re picked up. Sidelight dodge, Godly, no nair punish. Okay, Gauntlet recovery could take Akno off the top pretty quickly. And Akno will be in the last time situation. Picks up in a weird spot. Wasn't Whoa. even close to getting the recovery off of the down light. Stomp side air. Still only has Godly in the orange. So that didn't really send him far, but that did no. put him over on the edge. I'm a little bit surprised we didn't see Godly come yeah. in with like a side air there. That, that felt like certain doom for Agno, but uh, he respects it. Okay. Oh, was he waiting for the insig? I wonder if he was waiting for a dodge to then go for the insig. Possible. Recovery hits. Another one of those would take him out. Hammer picked up. Maybe looking for the stomp side air, but the unarmed recovery from Godly will send Agno even higher throws that axe away immediately. That shows that Godly might be panicking just a little bit, maybe leaning on those weapon tosses a little oh. bit more than he used to. What a weapon toss Speaking there. Speaking about leaning on him. Just a yeah. nice little dainty bonk on the head from the gloves of Rayman to get that KO. That's the second weapon toss KO this game, right? Yep, yep. Godly has been absolutely relying on them, both with the Axe and the Gauntlet, to take Akno down. Akno has been trying to put the game at his own pace, and Godly has been responding very well, uh, matching the way that Akno is playing and hitting him more often than not. Uh, and now Neutral Light and Anair comes through. The extra credit's been done. Akno has been equalizing these pretty quickly, but both players have like gotten to the point where the, the intensity is so high, they're going for that weapon throw to open up Neutral. If it doesn't work, they both just wait for the next weapon spawn and try again. Godly going over for the attempted edge guard. The spot dodge gets through the ground pound, finds the unarmed recovery for the punish. Sidelights coming in from Godly. He's extending this lead. Akno has a hammer. Godly is going to be very careful, putting a lot of distance between the two. Has the axe in hand. He's going to look for those neutral lights, those sidelight nares. Even just jumping oh. up for those nares, weapon easily comes to Akno. Oh, the down light stops the down air. Weapon throw down. Gauntlet's picked up. Goes to the side of weapon throw. It's going to be three weapon throw knockouts this game. Okay, no. Gets him off the top. Didn't realize Godly was that damaged, but now it's one to one. And Akno Ooh. almost just evaporated to that axe recovery. Oh, oh the stomp. that side air might have done it. That stomp could have just saved Akno. Neutral light from the middle of the stage recovery. doesn't quite do it. Didn't Godly even send him, him off screen. Chance. I don't even think one more neutral light will do it. I here. think it's just the ground pound here. Uh, if Akno's all slip activates again. It's kind of tough with the Mammoth Fortress platform there. It, I, gi it gives Akno so yeah. much advantage. I think you just oh, got to be careful. He's fully charging that weapon throw, and Akno just smacks him for it. Akno is really like, okay, how on earth do I do this? This platform is being so kind to him. That's it. That secures that it. it. We are going to a game four. Godly is up 2-1, and since we have a character on match point, we got to do this every time. It is literally in our contracts, Taza. The way grand finals works is the person who yeah. is in winner's bracket only has to win one right. best of five game. That is That's the uh, blessing afforded to them for not losing it. It's a double elimination yeah. tournament. You get to lose once, go down into loser's bracket, and then possibly fight for the way to come back up.
up. Right. Now, if you're Akno, you want to win the first best of five. That grants you the bracket reset, thereby pulling Godly down into the loser's bracket, and then you have one more final best of five. That's right. Now, for Akno fans, they're sweating right now because Godly, the one who's in the winner's bracket, that's why there's a big old W next to his name. He has two games under his belt compared to Akno's one. Yeah, and Akno now has to win not only two games in a row, but then three more games against Godly in the bracket reset, which you just perfectly outlined. You summed it up in a lot less words, so that's probably for the best. So thank you, Taza, <laughs> for taking the ball. I needed I needed yeah. to hand off the ball to you because uh, Twitch chat was coming after me saying, like, why is this guy saying so many words when so few words are oh, You good? put it quite eloquently. Oh, thank you, Taz. I appreciate and, that. And now we've got Akno once again on a different legend. He liked how the guitars were working. Uh, but we were talking about how, like, when we see guitar legends, we're used to seeing a Suri. Well, there we go. We have a Suri on the screen. And the sword's making a comeback from that Koji pick that Akno had in winner's finals when he had played it against Godly. Godly has just been destroying everybody with the Rayman so far. Neutral and the recovery comes through, and Akno's picking up the pace a little bit here in game number four. Now that he's on a Surrey here on Demon Islands. This is sort of one of the final forms of Agno's character picks. Because, I mean, I'm sure he has, yo, he gets the KO there, chasing really high into the sky. But in terms of he probably has more under his belt, but at least this is the final culmination of those Katars from the Sentinel, of the sword that we saw him start mm -hmm. off with the Koji. It's all of that coming together into this Asuri pick that got the first stock when he is on possible tournament point against Godly, who could take the win and take the entire tournament here. Falling Cider doesn't quite work, and the neutral light hits. Weapon spawn comes through. Golly doesn't even go for He's it. He's just going to punish the oh, landing. Oh, he went for the neutral light, and Akno was ready for that. Dodges away from that landing. Doesn't uh, risk landing on top of Godly. Guitar is picked up. Akno up a stock. Down light. Oh, okay. Well, okay. All oh, right. <laughs> that one did it. He needed to be just a I little bit I was just getting ready higher. to be like, that's not going to work on Demon Island. <laughs> <laughs> he goes up, and he gravity cancels it. And he, he makes it work. Godly was like, okay. There we go, down lights connect, and now Godly has evened up the damage quite well here with the axe. Ak I think no. when he has this in hand, he's gonna play extremely safe. Mm -hmm. He knows that he can win neutral just by finding one hit at a time, yep. where Akno will have to find two. He'll have to go for these strings when Godly has true combo answers. Ooh, and Akno goes from the side light. D-Light Sider does disarm him. Could go for the neutral stick here. The edge guard neutral lights are coming through. Gravity cancel down light doesn't get him as Godly just jumps right over his head. Godly with the axe. Tries to fall off the cider, and D-Light Cider will get him off the left side of the stage. Is he going to go down? He'll be sweating pretty soon. Guitar is picked up. Weapon throw. D-Light recovery. Akno with the true combo off of the weapon throw down. Takes Godly off the top. Is on the verge of bringing this to game five. Gauntlet's in hand for Godly. He did find a neutral light. Akno keeping him out, though. Nice two hits in a row. Weapons disarmed from Godly. He threw them away, but he picks the axe up. Akno is at a massive lead here. He has been playing Sword very well. He's been playing Katars very well. Godly just doesn't have a handle on really how to take this stock away from Akno yet. Tried to go for the D-Sync. He's taken stocks with that before. Not going to work on Akno here, even though he was in those sweat beats. Recovery hits. Second recovery misses. Akno on the verge of a two stock with that Nair coming through. Sidelight Nair from Godly goes for the recovery or gone from. No, Akno gets hit by the dash jump fastball side air. Godly evens up the stocks. And all right, get ready, Sparky. Th th this could be it for Akno here. He has got such a great lead, but when Godly's got the gauntlets and he's just winning every single neutral interaction with Akno, gets that recovery. The Nair doesn't follow, but Akno is on the back foot. There we go. Down and recovery hits, and now Akno has a much better chance. If Godly plays the best Brawlhalla of his entire life, right here, we could have a brand new EU 1v1 champion in more ways than one. Akno is not going to let that happen. He's going to delay it at least a little bit longer. Delight right. recovery. We're going to a game five situation. Godly is still on tournament point here. Akno is on bracket reset point. Looking at the damage between the two, 592 from Akno. So still getting close to 200 damage per stock, but we're on Demon Island. You're playing a lower strength legend against a pretty solid defense legend. So that's not bad whatsoever. Yeah, uh, we, oh, Godly has actually swapped off the Rayman. So this is interesting. Akno finally found the the missing piece of the puzzle on how to deal with the Rayman, and Godly's like, okay, time to completely mix it up on you now. Is the tie along epic crossover for Mordex is coming out. Axe tossed aside for Scythe.
a much string heavier weapon coming out from this where he had all that guaranteed stuff. This is this is interesting. Okay, so really leaning into the gauntlet. Has the scythe over here. Has a much uh, much different signature kit that's a lot more adept to getting knockouts on stage, whether you're tossing them off the spike or off the top. And now Goldie with the scythe picked up is really starting to respond to the fact that Akno has found some success on this Asuri. Now I can't remember what actual scythe that simple was using earlier today when he oh, was playing is that it? the Tai Long. Oh, he grabbed him. Gets the neutral stick. You could have just like tossed a weapon or something or just kind of backed away yeah, from it. Yeah, that was it. so cool. He, it worked with the Sentinel neutral stick too. That's true. Agno's actually just popping off the neutral sticks that give that momentum. And now it looks like he's stolen the momentum from Godly. I thought that was going to be a stock in under 30 seconds. And instead, Agno might take the lead after that one. Sword Ground Pound could come through. Downer hits. Gets the downer, doesn't bounce him to the recovery. Sider whiffs, and Godly gets his own Sider, which is deceptively strong. Oh, he was so close to hitting that ground pound. I don't know if that would immediately lead to a kill, but that would have been power position for Godly to clean that one up. Coming back over to the gauntlets. Whoa. Had those on nice the Rain Man earlier. Oh, Side sit goes yes. through. Misses. Akno immediately punishes. Goes for the big one, hoping for the KO. Didn't quite get it. Needs just a little bit more damage. If he tried it right now, he gets the KO. Weapon spawn comes in. Oh. His unarmed may be the only option here as godly could continue to control these weapons there's a weapon spawn there's two weapon spawns Ooh, we go to the delight neutral stick he gets it that's the second time he hit it this game and Akno, on on the verge of getting knocked down the left side of the stage 30 seconds of the game has brought it back to a lead sideline sure comes through but acno has got to be pretty happy about that result after that neutral stick hit we were just completely caught off guard by that, that maneuver you saw Godly kind of scared of the unarmed, but also felt like he could go in just unarmed against unarmed. Yeah. You saw those two weapon spawns. He didn't really go for those until a bit later. Then Akno was able to pick that one up. Another beautiful D-Light gravity cancel. Neutral heavy. They are oh. dead even. Akno picking that oh. up high. Even gets the second recovery. All right. Two recoveries come through. That brings Godly in the orange. Godly with the scythe. Tries to get the downlight to catch him off guard. No. Weapon throw comes through. And Akno just juggling weapons. It bounces him off of his opponent, gets hit by the side light. D light recovery comes through, and Golly sent towards the top of the stage. Another recovery hits. Oh, can Godly get something started here with the Scythe? It's been rough. He's been getting these like weapon throws. They bounce off Akno. He picks the Scythe back up, and then it's like a down air, and that's it. It's been a lot of weapon throw holla coming out from Godly. He doesn't have any major strength on either weapon right now, at least when it comes to fighting Akno's sword. That sword has been so yeah. good for Akno after this swap Ooh. to Asuri. Oh, the downlight almost catches the landing, but Godly lands right behind him. Akno looking for another downlight landing punish here. And Akno has been really waiting for Godly to take the first move in this scenario with the sword. Not even putting out too many dashes himself. And Godly has been bringing the damage back up into his favor. That side air hitting from the scythe is pretty huge. Weapon throw comes through and Akno's now on the hunt. He wants to get this edge card, but oh, the recovery. Would have been great if it hit the first time. Let him pick up the weapon, but now Godly down to one stock and Akno. One stock takes it, and that's the bracket reset. The beautiful lethal punish from Akno that came out onto Godly's untrue combo. But here we go. Last stock here in the game five situation from both of these players. That quick signature from Godly even that one up. We saw the side stick come earlier that Akno punished. This time he hit the neutral signature, and that was the KO. Godly's still just a little bit behind. Akno's finding one hit at a time, but so is Godly. On average, he is going to have a little bit more damage per hit. So if it's one for one, oh, edge guard situation that oh, interrupted no the recovery. recovery. He's going to have to dodge. Air. He was still caught really high in the air. That's is it. he going to get caught? That is the end of the tournament in almost a mild edge guard situation that kept going godly comes out on top we have a brand new eu 1v1 champion that is incredible and it was in response to the asuri pick from akno and to get it with that edge guard at the end we're going to be seeing yeah we gotta watch that that you was not, such my that is like that is like screen. what scythe is every every scythe player hopes to get an edge guard that is that crazy in tournament play and to do it for the win look how long this goes where's the on. stuffed recovery he is it on the side here? look at that there it is and then they're just kind of around the nair, one another, turns catches, around the Nair. The Nair catches him right before he hits the stage, too. And then the recovery doesn't even need, need to hit. Akno's got nothing. I, uh, Akno goes down with that dodge, and that I is just, it. I can't believe we didn't see a move come out from, but, Akno, from Akno after with the that recovery yeah. came in. There's that moment. It's so easy for us to say in that slow oh, motion. Yeah, absolutely. But like, there was like a moment, like I'm wondering, could Akno have Nair there to stop the recovery? But no, Akno goes down, and that edge guard from Godly was wow. godly.
not only did Akno not come out on top in mm. the world championship at the end of last year when we all thought he would, he was not able to come back in the winter championship either. We yeah. had a new world champion. Now we have a new winter champion of all the volatile things that happen in EU. It kind of normalized a little bit towards the end, but there was that still, that final pop, that final climax of the bracket with Godly coming out on top. Everybody said he was one of the best, if not the best EU player. Wasn't quite able to prove it in 2v2s alongside Simple last week, but in 1v1s, absolutely no it. reset necessary. Yeah, and it's been a long time since I've seen, I've seen Akno in a position where he had to swap legends that many times. Yeah. That was four legends Normally swaps to be able to answer that. Normally, he's the one doing four that. Four yeah, absolutely. And, and Godly responded in kind. Everything was like Koji to Rayman to Mordek. So it was just an intense matchup where they were counter-picking each other's weapons. It was that close between both of them. But at the very end, Godly gets it and is now, as you said, the 2022 European Winter Champion. I look forward to the tug of war that is going to happen between at least these two players, mm -hmm. if not more who are introduced into the fold. When we really get simple, when he is on absolute prime, when yeah. Swata is in his absolute prime. Hey, Blaze spot. was in a 1v1 yeah. contention where I was like, where that did was this crazy. happen? I, it, it's, it was, it's been so easy in the past to just be like, okay, Blaze is twos only, and we yeah. expect him to get like 17th. But here he is making crazy plays himself, getting into the top eight. I think it was fifth to Machete. So yeah, there, there's just so many players in Europe that are ready to contest the spot that has belonged to Akno for so long. It is incredible to see. This is set to be a really good year for Brawlhalla Esports in virtually every region, but we're not done yet. We're not sending you packing quite yet. We do have North America tomorrow mm -hmm. starting at production 2 p.m. Eastern time. Eastern if you don't time. know how to convert that to your time, go to brawlhalla.com forward slash schedule. That will normalize it into your time zone so you don't even have to worry about it. That'll be the beginning of the stream. Make sure to tune in for that. You can get those viewership rewards and then in, your eyes will already be on the screen for the pre-show of North America hosted by me and Duke tomorrow morning or really afternoon but it could be the morning depending on where you are if you want to see what's going on with Brawlhalla Esports smash.gg forward slash Brawlhalla that'll give you a list of events for the year that'll be the brackets that you want to see to see who is playing and when if you want to know what's going on on Twitter twitter.com forward slash Brawlhalla the Twitter account for the Brawlhalla Esports account is Twitter dot com forward slash pro brawlhalla speaking of pro brawlhalla there is also a side stream going on tomorrow twitch.tv forward slash pro brawlhalla i've been sparky this is taza follow me on twitter at who is sparky taza doesn't do social media anymore because he's a it's still a, there he's a mentally healthy individual oh, oh thanks sparky yes <laughs> you can still follow me taza LOL, okay. LOL, that's what it is. There you Twitter. go, You've Taza LOL, thank you yes. so much for tuning in for EU. Sparky we'll see makes you me tweet something funny for once a year. North America. We still got more this weekend. Don't miss a thing.
Just a dream of a dream zone, now my reality. I feel it, I'm bleeding, I'm needing for all eternity. My soul is on fire, this burning desire is heavenly. Then you're moving closer, but 